I think we're live. We're almost live. We're officially live. All right, everybody. Well, welcome back. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed yesterday. We had so much fun hanging out with you guys, and uh, it, was, it was really, really cool. I didn't think we'd get even half that many people showing up, so thank you for that first off. In fact, um, before we get started uh, filming day number two, um, we were going through the numbers, and they're still pulling the YouTube numbers between YouTube and Facebook. I emailed out saying we had 15,000 viewers. Um, I actually was wrong. It was 27,000 views. Is that, was that just in Facebook? Just Facebook. So just Facebook alone, we had 27,000 people watch the video. Um, uh, 221 shares, 904 comments, and that's not counting uh, YouTube. So if you had both those in, who knows, we are probably 40, 50, 60,000 people watching. So I just want to thank you guys. That was fun. So today is going to be the same kind of thing. Um, I've got two sessions we're going through. Um, I'll get started up here in a few minutes, but I just want to first off, thank you guys for hanging out yesterday. And thank you for coming back and hanging out today. I'm so excited. Um, and so for today's uh, same thing, if you like this, please comment down below. We're gathering questions and stuff. And uh, if you like this, please share it. The more people see this, the happier it makes me and the more excited I will do to do these things in the future. So if you enjoy this, maybe we could do this like a weekly thing. I don't know. Just kidding. Everyone here is all stressed out. There's so much stuff happening. A lot of people asking if this is live. Yes, it's live. We've got like these guys running cameras and like switching and all sorts of stuff. So it's kind of cool. It's our first time doing this and uh, I think it's turned out pretty amazing. So thank you guys all behind the scenes who helped me. So. All right, so with that said, you guys ready to get started today? Okay, I'm going to jump on the stage here in a minute, and then we'll start on module number three. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Expert Secrets Masterclass. This is module number three. I'm so excited to have you guys here today. And today... Um, we're going to dive into some really, really cool things. And I kind of want to give you an agenda of what's going to be happening. So uh, this first session I'm going to be talking about today is called The Big Domino. And if you've read the Expert Secrets book, uh, you know a little bit about this. But we're going to start diving deeper based on uh, the questions and the feedback and the things that a lot of you guys were kind of asking about how this all works. So I'm going to go into that today. This session will probably be a little bit longer because there's like five or six really cool concepts I need to go deep into. And I want to make sure you guys have all the foundation and the understanding. So there's going to be kind of a lot that goes into it, but it'll be cool. And then uh, when that's done, we're going to be taking, uh, this time we're going to take actually a 20-minute break because uh, we have to get things set up. And when we come back, I'm actually going to be doing a webinar live in front of you guys um, based on the stuff we're talking about. Okay, so when I'm building a presentation, a sales presentation, um, I'm looking at all these things I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. So this is all the foundation. So for the next hour and a half or so, I'm going to show you guys the foundation of all the pieces that are essential for you to know and to understand. If you understand these pieces, it makes this whole thing so much fun and so easy. It makes it so you're not feeling like a slick salesman. It makes it so you can actually uh, get people to buy. Like all, all the cool things that you want um, come from understanding the foundation of what we're talking about today. And so I'm going to show you guys the whole foundation. And um, it'll be kind of like, it'll be thoughts. And so you'll, you'll see it and you'll be like, okay, cool. That's, I understand how that works. Then the next question is like, well, I need to see this in, in practical application. So then during, after the break, we'll come back and I'm actually going to do a webinar. This is a new webinar I've never done before. So the first time I've ever done it, I'm excited for it. Uh, I was mapping it all out yesterday and I think it's going to be really, really fun. I'm going to do it. Uh, it's for a real product. It's a real thing. So if you're interested and you should be, then you should definitely sign up at the end of it. But I'm going to be doing it so you guys can see the whole process. And, uh, and as you are watching that, I want you to pay attention. All, this, all the foundational stuff that you're learning today, like, like watch and see what I'm doing, okay? I did a podcast a little while ago called like Watch the Magician's Hands, right? So part of it is like the magicians are trying to do tricks and they're trying to, they're trying to like divert your attention places so their hand can like do stuff, right? And so in our business, like what we're doing seems like magic, right? But it's, it's very plain. I don't hide anything ever. Like I'm pretty, I don't know anybody who's more transparent than me, right? I wrote a whole book teaching this process. It's funny, like at Funnel Hacking Live, I got on stage and I did a perfect webinar. And I see like everybody out there who's been studying it, like here comes secret number one, here comes number two, and here's the whole, and they, they're seeing it, here comes the stack, and they understand it, yet they still buy because it still works, right? And so um, I'm always showing everything. So um, the reason I'm doing this is I want to, again, Right now, you're going to understand all the foundational pieces. Then you will see me do it. And then tomorrow morning, we come back, same time, same place. Um, then we're going to walk through the entire presentation bit by bit. Like, okay, this is why I did, this is my big domino for this statement. This is the internal fear belief I was trying to break here. This is the external belief I was trying to break here. This is, um, uh, this is and I'll walk you through all the different pieces. I'll talk about the Epiphany Bridge stories, what we used, why we used it, um, the kind of like bridges, like all, all the stuff you're going to talk about right now. He has a, I'll, I'll walk you through it tomorrow, but um, I want you guys paying attention during that session uh, because I want you guys taking notes and seeing how many things you can pick out, okay? So that's kind of game plan. So right now, I'm giving you, here's the foundation. Here's all the pieces you need to understand and master. Then I'm going to do it, and then tomorrow I'm going to show you what I did, okay? Does that make sense? So is that the way you're learning? Like, talk about it, do it, and then talk about it again. So 
Um, when I'm doing that session tonight, make sure you're watching, get a pad of paper, pen, notes, and listen to what I'm saying and why I'm saying it and see what things you can sync up and it'll make the process a lot more fun. Does that sound cool? Oh, I'm excited. The only time I've done something similar to this, um, three years ago, uh, two and a half, three years ago, we had a, uh, an inner circle event and I had about 100 people here in Boise and it's because I've been talking about webinars and the right way to do them and all the stuff that we're talking about today with this group. And people were doing it and they were like, they were doing it, but they weren't having the success I wanted. So I was like, okay, everyone, fly to Boise. Like, drop what you're doing, fly to Boise. We've got everyone in a room. I said, okay, you guys are going to watch me actually do a webinar. So, like, it was awesome. I had it, I had it on the stage, I had the, the laptop and I opened it up. We put on this webinar. I had, I don't know, five or 600 people who were on the webinar and I did it live. And they had a chance to just see me, right? Because sometimes we think that the webinar is just the words and so we're focusing on the words, but like, there's so much about like, how you speak and, and the interaction and all those kind of things that are tied to it. So I actually did the webinar live with a hundred people watching. It was kind of nerve wracking to say the least. I'm doing the webinar, going through the whole pitch and we ended up selling, I think 36, about $36,000 if I remember the number right, uh, live on that webinar in front of this room of hundred people. And they were all, as soon as it ended and I closed the webinar, they went crazy and it was exciting. It was so much fun, but then they saw how to do it, right? And after they saw how to do it, then they went back and they were able to model it. Okay? And if you look at anything I've ever taught or I talk about, like it's all about modeling, right? Uh, Tony Robbins taught me this initially, like, uh, if you want to be successful in life, find people who are already successful in that thing you want to do and then model them. And so I'm trying to give you guys a perfect model that you can use for your stuff. Okay? Um, and so that's kind of the game plan. So have fun with it. I'm going to have fun with it. It'll be, it'll be really, really cool. Um, and that's kind of the game plan. So with that said, uh, I'm going to jump into the framework for today's presentation. Um, once again, if you listened yesterday, we talked about creating your system and teachings all by, based on framework. So here's the framework I built out. We're going to build on the board, and I'll be walking you guys through it. All right, so the concept and the core of this entire session is based on one thing. That's what we call the big domino. All right, so what is the big domino? Well, if you guys have ever played domino, you know what they kind of look like, right? There is a domino. All right. So some of the foundational s stuff so you guys understand this. So um, the first time I started thinking about this, I was, God, it's probably five or six years ago now. I was at uh, an event. And uh, at the event, they had a panel of speakers on the stage. And one of the guys on the stage was Tim Ferriss. And Tim was sitting there. And uh, people are asking all the, the different panels questions. And then somebody asked Tim, they're like, hey, so what's your, what's your day look like? which is kind of a cool question, right? So what's your, what's your typical day look like? And uh, he kind of smiled. He's like, you know what? He's like, I've had tons of people who have asked me if they can film a day in the life of Tim Ferriss. He's like, I always tell him no. And you want to know why? And I was like, yeah, I want to know why. He's like, the reason why is like, if you actually saw what a day in my life was like, like it's, it's actually kind of boring. He's like, you know, mostly wake up in the morning, I have a huge to-do list and I try to check off thing, 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 thing. He's like, for me, it's like, I wake up, I meditate, I drink some tea or some coffee, I think. I go on a walk, then I read, and then I do a bunch of stuff. And he's like, and I might do that for five or six weeks until I figure out like the one thing I need to attack. And he's like, what I'm looking for is like, instead of trying to do a whole bunch of to-dos, knock out a bunch of stuff, he's like, I'm looking for the one big domino. What's the one big domino? If I was to knock that domino down, it would knock down every other domino or make them irrelevant. And he was talking about productivity, obviously, and task management, but like I, he said that, I was like, huh. And the more I thought about that, the more, like, it fascinated me, like, is that something that's true in all things? Like, is there a big domino in, in all parts of our life, in relationships, in business, in selling, and all sorts of stuff? And that started this, this thought process. Uh, then fast forward a little while later, um, I was hanging out with Perry Belcher, one of the owners of Digital Marketer. And Perry is uh, brilliant, one of my favorite people to study and to learn from. And what uh, I was listening to him, and he was talking about the fact, he said that, they went back over the last 10 years of everything that they had ever sold. And he said, I, I realized something really, really powerful. He said, every single time I tried to get my customers to believe more than one thing in a pitch, it failed. He said, if I tried to get them to believe two things, failed. Three things, failed. If I, had, if I only had to convince them of one thing, then it worked. And those offers are the ones that blew up. And, I, and he said that I came back this big domino. Like, every product we sell, is it true that like, there's one thing we need to get them to believe? And if they believe that one thing, then they have to give us money. And at first I didn't think that was true, but the more I started thinking and the more I started digging, the more I realized that, like, that, is, that is the key, right? And, uh, 
and I started going back through all of our stuff and I started trying to simplify things and pull out things to the point where I was like, okay, what, if, if I'm going to get somebody to buy this thing, if they're going to buy ClickFunnels or they're going to buy my coaching program or they're going to buy whatever that thing might be, what's the one thing I need to get them to believe? They believe that, that they have to give me money. Now inside the Expert Seekers book, we have a whole bunch of cool things in there. We have like a whole section on like uh, a sentence we put together that, that kind of helps you fill in and kind of figure out exactly what that thing is. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I just want you thinking about that for your product. Like, what is the one thing that they have to believe, your, customer, your potential customer has to believe to give you money? Okay, because there's one, there's one big domino that if you can knock that down, all the other questions and concerns and everything else becomes completely irrelevant. What is that thing? Okay, think about it for, for yourself. Now, um, and I'm going to kind of dig deeper into this, but what's interesting is uh, when um, I first met Jason Flatelin, and Jason, a lot of, he sold a ton of books first, so I'm sure a lot of you guys are from his audience. Jason's a brilliant marketer. And uh, one thing he told me when he does his webinars, and this has like become huge for me and for everyone in the inner circle, he talked about um, when, you, when you have a webinar, you're not trying to convince somebody of like 10 or 15 or 20 different things. He's like, the webinar is built around the, the idea that there's one thing when you get them to believe, and then everything else is just not, is the, like arguments to get them to believe that one thing. And a lot of you guys make webinars and you're like, okay, I gotta believe this. Now you believe that, cool. Now you're gonna believe this. Now you're gonna believe, and you're like trying to get people to believe four or five or six things or even two things. And that's why you're struggling with conversions and sales and all sorts of stuff. It all comes down to this, okay? And I don't know how many more ways I can stress that. I want you guys to understand, like, like that's it. Simplify your sales message. You gotta simplify, simplify, simplify. And to do that, the first thing you do is figure out what is that thing, okay? All right, so now that you've kind of thought about that a little bit, now, there's a reason why this domino hasn't knocked over yet, right? My goal is just to knock that over. I knock it over, all the other dominoes get knocked down and become irrelevant. Um, and so the first thing is like, well, what is, it, what is it that they currently believe? Because this is the belief, I need to get them to believe this. What do they currently believe? Okay, it's key. You can't get them to believe this unless you know what they currently believe. And on this side over here, you look at like, well, what do you believe? Could you believe something different? That's why you're in this, right? So think about your business, your market. Let's say you're in weight loss, right? Your customers believe something, which is why they're not getting the result they want, right? Yesterday we talked all about results. So they believe something, and that's why they're not getting the result. But you believe this, which is why you got the result, okay? What is that thing that if you got them to believe, they'd be like, oh, sweet, I'm in, and, and everything else would disappear, okay? That's, what, that's the first thing to kind of start thinking about here, all right? Okay. Um, uh, there's three or four directions I can go with this, but I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to go this way. Okay. All right. So as I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about like my customers, right? And this is coming back to your customers and getting inside their mind. So what is it that they, they honestly believe and why do they believe that? Okay. I want to, I want to figure out like, um, if, uh, if I'm trying to get you to like, let's just say I'm trying to get you, uh, I'll use weight loss cause it's like the easiest one to kind of pull. Actually I'll use network marketing. That'd be more fun. Um, okay, so let's say this is network marketing, and, and, I'm tr and I believe that like, and network marketing is really easy, I believe they can generate leads online, and we can close leads online, whatever that thing might be, right? But they believe something different, like why do they believe that? There's some story that they tell themselves about, that, that gives them the reason why they kind of believe this, right? So what's that story? What was the experience or the story or the thing that happened that gave them this false belief? Okay, that's what you guys are thinking about. What was that experience? So maybe if it was network marketing, maybe they signed up and they called a couple people and those people got offended or they got mad, or they called their mom and their mom hung up on them or whatever. And like, oh, like network marketing equals pain because I called my mom and she hung up on me and now my mom won't call, return my calls, right? Or something. So it's like, that's the story that they have. So you have a different story and you gotta figure out, like your story needs to trump their story if you're gonna get them to believe this thing. Does that make sense? Um, in fact, let me... Yeah, I'm going to jump down first because it'll help more. All right. So if you guys go to the Expert Seekers book on page 132, um, there is a, a chapter called False Belief Patterns. And there's this image here, right here, about false belief patterns. So I'm going to write this down here. I'm going to write false belief patterns. Okay. So if you, if you do this... Um, this is an exercise I'm going to do towards the end as well, but I've got to figure out my customer's false beliefs, right? Okay, so number one here, if you look here, there's the first image is chains of false beliefs. So here's this little dude, and there's chains on him. He's kind of like, oh, what's going on? Okay, so here is the, the false belief that they have. Number two 
right here is why do they believe that? What's the experience? Here's a black eye in the picture here. It's hard to draw a black eye with this huge black marker. All right, so this is the experience. Number three, then, we go to, well, what is the story that they've told themselves? Okay, there's the story. And then number three is Epiphany Bridge. We'll talk about that here in a second. All right. So this is story, and then this is new story. Okay. All right, so for this exercise, what I want you to, to think through is, okay, um, first off, what is their false belief that's keeping them from buying your thing or joining your group or whatever the thing is for you? Like, what's the false belief that they have? So I come out here, I'm like, okay, what's their false belief? Well, the false belief is, um, and you know, I'll use network marketing. So the false belief is that if I call, uh, if I join a network marketing program again, uh, I will lose my friends and my family. Okay, so that's the belief that they have, right? So if I join, I lose my friends and family. I'll do this one in red so you can see it. So. So if I join, if I join, dot, 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 lose friends and family, okay? So that's network marketing. For you, it could be something different. Weight loss could be like, if I, if I join this weight loss program, I have to give up cake. And I love cake. I eat cake every day, right? Or if I um, decide to invest my money or start to try to fi plan financially, invest my money somewhere, means I have less disposable income to buy crap later on, right? Whatever it is. So like, they all have a false belief. So what is that false belief for you? Okay, so think about that. Then number two is like, now why do they believe that? They had some experience, something happened in their life that gave them that belief. Okay, and you gotta understand, like, what was it? Like, why do they believe that right now? So for the network marketing, like, if I join, if I join a company, then my mom and my dad and my friends will hate me. Okay, why do they believe that? What was the experience? Well, one of two things probably happened. Number one, they joined a network marketing company. They called their mom, they called their sister. She got pissed and hung up on them, and then I was like, huh. If I do that, then this, right? Or number two, their sister joined the network marketing company. She started calling them every single day. Now they, they, now they screen their calls from their sister, and now they're like, oh, like, I don't want to be like her. So like, th there's an experience that happened that makes them believe this thing, okay? And these, these experiences are strong. So here's the experiences like, um, I call um, um, my, my sister, whatever, my sister called, and she's annoying. <laughs> Something like that, okay? Okay, so they, so they have the false belief. This is the experience that gave them the false belief. So the story they tell themselves is what? MLM is annoying or whatever. So because of that story, they're never going to do it. Okay? And so for me, if I want to get somebody to join my company, let's say, or I need to get someone to lose weight through my program, or I need to get someone to invest finances with me, or I need to get somebody to come to my store, join my coaching program, whatever it is for you, it's different for everyone, but you guys thinking through this for yourself. Whatever that is, I have to understand, like, this is their false belief that's keeping this domino up. If I want to shove this domino down and knock down all the rest of them, I've got to figure out what's the false belief, what was the experience they had, and what's the story they're telling themselves. And then you've got to come back, and you have to give them a story that trumps their story. If I can give them, a, like, my story, if my story right here trumps their story, this story will disappear, and the domino will knock down. Okay, so for example, network marketing, if I come back, and I tell a really good story, say, look, I understand this. I was in network marketing too. First off, I joined, my mom hung up on me. Then my sister called and she like started calling me, so I hung up on her and like, I hate this too, but guess what I found out? I thought that to be successful, you had to call your friends and family members, but this really cool thing, I've met this guy named whatever, Ray Higdon, or uh, you know, whatever the, the person you met, or whatever the thing is, you tell the story, I met this person, and guess what they told me? They told me that there's this weird thing called the internet where I could generate leads, and I don't have to talk to my friends and family. I just talk to people who actually raise their hand interested. And now I did that, and I do this thing, I get leads, I call them, they sign up, and then my mom and dad don't even know that I'm in a program. It's so awesome. And so I tell them my story, so your story, and if your story trumps theirs, then they're like, wait a minute, I thought we had to do this. You're, you're saying I could do this and nobody will know? Oh, I'm in. Boom, domino falls, boom, knocks down all the other dominoes, makes them irrelevant, or goes away. Does that make sense? I can use this for any, any, any program. So think about weight loss, okay? So weight loss. False belief. If I diet, I have to give up cake and ice cream because I love cake and ice cream, right? Why do they believe that? Because I joined the Atkins diet at Sugar Free and I had no cake or ice cream or bread and it was so annoying. Okay, so the story is diets equal no ice cream and they're angry, right? So you come back, dude, I thought that too. This whole time, like, I thought I could have ice cream, but guess what I found out? If you do this diet this way, this thing that I figured out is so cool, you can actually have ice cream twice a week and cake on the weekends and you still actually lose weight. Like, wait, are you serious? I can do that? Oh, I'm in. Boom. Domino knocks down. They give you their money. Okay, that, that's, the, that's the thing you have to understand, you guys. So what I want to do is I want to figure out 
for my customer? What is the one big domino that's holding them back? Okay? What is this story that they're telling themselves that's keeping them from coming into working with me? Okay, we talked about this yesterday. If you think about this, um, right now, most of your customers and potential customers, they, like, there's a result that they want, right? They want that result. They want to lose weight. They want to make money. They want um, better finances. They want um, your supplements. They, like, what, like they, they want the result that your thing gets. And right now, they're currently in some vehicle getting that, okay? If it's money, some of them are in a job, and that's how they're trying to get money, and they hate it. They're in this vehicle that sucks. Some of them are in a vehicle where, uh, uh, let's say it's weight loss, like they're, they're eating whatever, or they're not doing anything, but they're thinking about it all the time. Or, like, people already want the result. You don't have to create the desire for the result. It's already there. All you have to do is, is help people realize that like, this thing that you're doing right now to get the result, your beliefs about it are wrong. And if I can get you to understand like, this is the truth, come over here, then that domino knocks down and they have to give you money. Okay? Does that make sense, you guys? So that is... That is the key to sales. We understand that this is the key to everything. Okay, figuring out what is the one big domino. If I can get them to believe this, they have to give me money. Okay, when I launched the ClickFunnels presentation, the webinar, and the selling for that, I was like, "There's a million things I have to, I know. I'd have to convince them that that um, if I convince them that ours is better than lead pages, I convince them that Infusionsoft is confusing, ours is simple. If I convince them that our editor is better, if I convince, no, if I try to do that, there's a billion things I have to convince them of." Okay? And I will never in a million years be able to argue every single thing like that. Then I get into like feature versus benefit versus, and it's like this huge nightmare. All I have to do is get people to believe that the only way for them to get their dreams and be successful and happy in life is to have a funnel. If I can convince them of that, they have to give me money. Okay, I was listening yesterday to an interview uh, from the owner, one of the owners of Unbounce, which is our competitor. When it first came out, Unbounce was this huge company. Okay? They're nine years into their company, they've got 14,000 customers, and they're growing very, very slowly, right? And so if I would have come out and be like, okay, I've got to convince you that we're different or better than um, whatever, it would have been this long haul. And instead I came in and like, look, landing pages are stupid. Websites are like, you're a moron if you have a website. You're an idiot. Okay? I, if, I, if I convince them that funnels are the thing, guess what they do? They have to drop everything else. They have to leave and they have to come to us. So my only argument, if you watch the ClickFunnels presentation, the only thing I'm trying to convince people of the entire time is that funnels are the key to success, happiness, everything they want in life, you have to have a funnel. And ClickFunnels happens to be the only place that gives you funnels. Like, and so they did that, they come in droves. Okay? Every argument has this. Every sales argument has a big domino, and you've got to figure out what it is for you. Okay? So that's the first step. And sometimes it takes a little while. But I always ask, like yesterday we were working on a presentation I'm going to be giving this afternoon, and my question to the team, we were all in here together, I was like, what is the one thing we have to get people to believe if they're going to sign up for this program? What is it? Is it this? No, because there's, no, no. And we kept going through, finally, like, boom, that's it. If they believe that, then they have, they have to join. There's no other alternatives that are aligned to themselves, right? So you have to figure that out in your business. And this is going to take some time. There's, again, we talked about yesterday, the art and the science. This is the science. The art is you figuring out how does this work for your specific business, okay? All right. So this is the, the first key here. Then you come down here, and the way we do this is we don't knock this down by trying to convince people logically how to sell something. Okay? The way we do this is through a concept which um, is becoming more and more famous. So I keep talking about it, and it gets me excited. I keep hearing a lot of you guys using the word epiphany, which gets me really excited. In fact, um, I was at, uh, I'm, I'm part of uh, Joe Polish's and Dean Graciosi's $100,000 group. So I pay $100,000 a year to be part of this group. And in that group, they, had me, they, they asked me if I teach a session. So I'm like, sure. So I taught a session on the Epiphany Bridge, what I'm going to show you guys right now. And, um, and what's cool is uh, Dean had just filmed an infomercial with uh, Larry King. And it's really, really good. They ran on TV. It was doing awesome. And, uh, and I did my presentation. I talked about the Epiphany Bridge. And Dean, in the middle of my presentation, like, slammed his hand down. He's like, dang it. He's like, I've known this forever, but no one's ever explained it. And he's like, now I know, why, I know what I did wrong in the infomercial. Uh, so he went and he called Larry King up. Larry King flew back out to his thing. They refilmed the intro of the, uh, the infomercial. He messaged me, hey man, we've got the new cut for the infomercial. Do you want to see it? And I was like, yeah, like, wh why did you redo it? He's like, your presentation taught me, like, I, I remembered something watching your presentation about the Piffney Bridge and I realized that I missed that in this infomercial. He's like, we're running it right now. And I can't remember the numbers. It was like, they, were, they, they increased their conversion like 27, 28%, which in infomercial numbers is like tens of millions of dollars. Like it was, it was huge. So I go and I watch this video and I'm watching it. And about two minutes into the infomercial, Dean says the word epiphany. He's like, there it wasn't. I had this epiphany, and I was like, I literally jumped out of my chair, and I was like screaming like, ah, and so, 
it gets me excited. More of you guys are using just that terminology. But this is the concept, and it's in the book. You've hopefully read it. If not, I'm going to explain because it it's the key to everything. When you get this, it, it makes life really, really easy, okay? So this is called the Epiphany Bridge. All right, so this is what the Epiphany Bridge is, okay? For you, every single one of you guys, we're normal mortals going about your everyday life. Do you remember that? Before you had superpowers and became who you are today? Like you were a normal human being. You were there, you woke up, you had breakfast in the morning, you went to work or you went to school, you got home, you watched TV, you went to bed and you fell asleep, right? That's how most of us live in life. I remember to this day, like the time that I feel like I shifted from like a normal human to like somebody different. Uh, initially it was through wrestling, that's the first time I had my first epiphany and other times like that, right? Um, but most of us, we have this normal life and then we're going along, not minding our business and you're just minding your own business and all of a sudden something happened. Something happened for me that got me excited about wrestling. Something happened uh, for, um, for me that got me excited about business, about fun, about whatever it is, right? So for you, same thing, like, you're, everything's normal and happy and, uh, and everything's going on and then all of a sudden something happened and you had this epiphany. Here's the epiphany. And the epiphany was like, oh my gosh, I want to do this. Or I wanna, whatever that thing was for you, right? Everyone had a different epiphany. And so you have this epiphany. What happens is that sends you on this journey. Here's this bridge. And you're on this journey. Right here, what happened? This is an emotional. Something emotional happened. You went on this journey. And what happens is you come over on this side here. Because you're so excited about this topic. And you start, like, you start geeking out. You start studying and learning. And uh, in fact, I'm going to put little glasses on here to show that you're like studious. There's your little glasses, right? And you start geeking out, and you start logically convincing yourself, logically convincing yourself of whatever this thing is, right? So a good example of that, um, uh, I, own some, I have some equity in a network marketing company that sells a, a product that puts your body into ketosis, right? And, um, and so what happens is that um, I, I was speaking, uh, <laughs> I had a chance to go speak uh, in Vegas to this group of about 100 of their, of their top leaders. And it's funny, as I'm walking through the hotel room, uh, to get to the presentation. I'm walking through and I see in, the, I see in the, the lobby, there's all these people and they are like, they're over here, right? They are freaking out. They are so excited. They've been studying this product and the benefits and the, and the science and the nutrition, all sorts of stuff, right? They, they, uh, they have this thing they're really good at called Technobabble. Technobabble. One of my friends, Kim Claver, wrote a book. It's called, If Your Product's So Great, Why Is Nobody Buying It? It's just a whole chapter and it's talking about Technobabble. And this is like, this is the, like, when I got this, I was like 12 years ago, I think, I read her book and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, this is huge. So techno babble, right? This is like what kills all cells. So I'm looking, I'm in this lobby, all these network marketers running around, they all have t-shirts on that say like, uh, ketones are greater than glucose. And they're saying like, all these like nerdy like things, right? And they're all excited, they're all like spandex pants on, they're running around, and they're so excited, which is cool. I love it, like, oh, I love entrepreneurship. So they're running around and I see them as they're like approaching people in the lobby and they're just like, you know, like, hey, let's go get this guy. Like, he's going to be in. They're running over. And then they pounce on this person, and they're spewing out all this techno babble about the technology and, the, and uh, like, all this kind of stuff, right? And I'm watching these, like, prospects getting, like, pounced on, and this techno babble spewing on them. All this stuff, they're trying to logically convince them that this is the, the key to changing their life, right? And the, the people are like, oh, cool, yeah. And then they run away and run to the room, right? Over and over and over again. So I'm watching this, and I'm kind of laughing. I'm like, oh, you guys, like, oh. And it's not just them. I see this everywhere. Um, I was on a podcast yesterday listening to a guy try to sell something, and he was spewing out so much techno babble, and it just made me sick to my stomach, like, ugh. And, um, and uh, in this group, after I went through the lobby, and then I went into the, to the, to the event room, and I had a chance to teach these guys. And kind of the funny backstory, um, they didn't give me a topic when I got there, and they didn't even know, they didn't tell me when the event was starting. So, like, I literally went and I found Brian, the owner of the company. I'm like, hey, man, what do you want to talk about? He's like, oh, whatever you want. I'm like, well, when are we up? He's like, oh, crap, it started five minutes ago. So we, like, we run down to the room. We walk in. There's 100 people. And I'm, I have my backpack. I'm literally like, okay, what do you want me to talk about? And he's like, um, we'll do whatever you want. Like, these are your people. You got as long as you want. He comes up, introduces me, and then, like, you know, everyone starts clapping. And I'm walking down like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to talk about? So I'm coming down the aisle. I turn around. I look at these people. And I see everyone. And I see their eyes. And I see how excited they are, like, about this thing. They're so logically convinced. And I remember earlier, you know, 15 minutes earlier in the lobby, watching what was happening. And it's the first time I'd ever drew, drew out this picture. I said, you guys, you have to understand this. Like, right now, you are logically trying to convince people that what you have is the best in the world. Because you have logically sold yourself on it. But that is not why you got started. It's not why you got started. It's not what gave you the initial pithy. There's not a single person in this room who got in here because you were sold on the fact that beta-hydroxybutyrate salts was the key to you losing weight. Not one of you. 
No one even heard that word until like six months later. And you're like, oh, that's what this crap is, right? So any of you, like, no one of you guys got sold because, in ClickFunnels because I convinced you that our marketing automation sequence was better than blah, 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 right? And that our technology was built on Ruby on Rails. And that like, none of you guys signed up for this because of that. Not one. Maybe one. Nope, I'm going to lie. Not even one. Not one of you guys. What happened to everyone is something emotional happened to you. You had this experience and you had this epiphany saying, holy crap, this thing is like, this is the greatest thing in the world. It tastes, you know, it's a probably, it tasted good. I felt good. Or I learned about funnels and actually worked for Whatever that thing is for you, right? You had some huge epiphany. And when that happened, you were like, holy crap, this is my life. I, I can never go back to the world was the way it used to be. And you went on this thing and you start studying and learning and you geeked out. And then you start spewing this crap on people and that's why no one gives you money. Okay? If you want to be successful in selling anything, what you have to understand is this is the journey you have come on. And over here, this is what you're trying to do. You have to stop using Technobabble. Realize that people do not buy logically. You didn't buy logically and they won't buy logically. You bought emotionally. You bought because of some epiphany that happened to you. Okay? When uh, Two Funnel Hacking Lives ago, we had Marcus Simonis was our keynote speaker from The Prophet. And uh, we had a 30-minute window before, before um, the event started to kind of get to know him. Like, we put it in the contracts. So I wanted to, like, hang out with him and just be like, hey. And anyway, so Marcus comes in 30 minutes before, and super cool guy. He comes in, like, all casual, walk in this little room where we're at. And, uh, and it was funny because he was like, he's like, so what's this event about? I'm like, oh, it's called ClickFunnels, and we're all excited, and this is why. And he's like, so you're a website builder. I'm like, uh, kind of. And he's like, why is everyone so excited out in the hall? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, this is not like a website building. Like everyone's going crazy. They're really ex like, what what's happening? And so I try to explain it to him, and then, um, and he's like, okay, so what's ClickFunnels like? Like he's like, I got lots of businesses. Why do I need this? And obviously, stupid Russell. The first thing I do is I slip into Techno Babble. I'm like, well, the average cart value, blah 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 blah, and you can increase your EP, so I, all this stuff. And he's just like, huh, well, huh. And then I'm like, dang it, I'm losing him. Crap, abort, abort. Why do I actually care about funnels? I came back over here, and I was like, oh yeah. This is why I care about funnels. And I said, Marcus, let me, t let me explain the story. So I told him st my story about funnels. And he was like, wait a minute. So you're telling me, and he asked a question. I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, how does this work in this business? I'm like, well, I do this. He's like, how about this business? I do this. I told him three or four things. And then all of a sudden, the coolest thing in the world happened. I didn't tell Marcus, like, here's the epiphany you need to have. He sat there and he said, huh. He's like, every business needs a funnel. He had the same epiphany that I had. That's the key, you guys. He said, every business needs a funnel. And the next question was like, do you guys want to be on our show? I'm like, yeah, are you kidding me? And uh, what, four or five months later, we were, on, we were on the profit, building out funnels for some of his companies. Okay? The key with this, you guys, is if you try to logically sell, nobody's going to buy it. Like, that's number one. Number two is I can't just shove an epiphany down someone's throat. Okay? I'm trying to tell my story in a way that they have the same epiphany that I had. Does that make sense? If I tell you, oh, I had this epiphany, the funnels are the greatest thing in the world, and you're like, okay, cool, what, who cares? No, I have to tell a story that brings you in, and then through the story, what I want you to do is I want you to say, huh, funnels are the greatest thing in the world. If I can get you to think it, it's not me telling you, it's you thinking it, then you will be sold. You'll have the same epiphany I had, and then you're going to go on this journey by yourself. You'll logically convince yourself, everyone on your staff and your team, but the emotional thing is what sells people. And that's what we have to become good at doing, okay? All right, now a couple of things about this. Um, gosh, there's so many cool things. We can go really, 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 really deep. Again, in the book, it goes deeper, and there's a lot more I can share in a book than I can't always get on stage. Um, but understand that, like, this is the key to everything, you guys. And I'm going to tell you here in a minute, there's actually four Epiphany Bridge stories you need to sell anything, to knock down any domino. So I'll mention that here in a minute. But first, I want to kind of explain this, a, little, a couple other things here. So, again, my job is not to tell them my Epiphany. My job is to tell them a story about how I had my epiphany, and I want them to have the same epiphany I had. Now, have you ever been in a room where um, or you're, you're there and, and something amazing happens to you? And so then you go find someone, and you're like, you guys, i got to tell you the story. You tell, this, you tell them the story, and they're like, oh, cool, yeah. And you're like, no, like, you missed it. Like, let me explain it. You tell the whole story again, and they're like, yeah, we got it. That, that sounds awesome, man. Like, very, very cool, right? And you're like, ah, you're so frustrated. You're like, God, I guess if you would have been there, you would have got it. Have you guys ever said that before? And why would it have been different if they would have been there? Because if they would have been there, they would have been experiencing what you experienced. It's not just the words you said. You experienced something. You felt something. So if I want someone to have the same epiphany I had, I have to learn how to tell stories in a way where they feel the same thing that I felt. If they don't feel it, they're not going to have the epiphany. Okay? So what I have to do, I have to figure out how to control their state. 
Um, if you study Tony Robbins, learn from him, he talks a lot about state control from a lot of different, a lot of different things, right? But what I have to do here is I have to control, right, state control. I gotta control their state to get them into the state that I need them to be able to have this epiphany. Okay, um, at, Funnel, at the last Funnel Hacking Live, I showed a clip from, uh, from the X-Men movie. It's the X-Men movie where, uh, where uh, they were kids and they like, became X-Men. And um, one of the scenes in there uh, is super cool. So what happened in the scene is when Magneto, who becomes the bad guy in the future episodes, right? But he's a, he's a kid in Nazi concentration camp. He's trying to figure some things out. And what happens is that they're pulling him into this Nazi concentration camp. And he's like this little kid and he starts like freaking out and they see the metal fences start bending. The people are like, wait, what? Something? There's something up with this kid, right? So they bring him in in front of, uh, in front of one of the Nazi uh, people, right? The, the, the head guy's Nazi party uh, of, the, of the army, whatever. And they tell this the, the little young Magneto, like, I want you to move this coin, this metal coin. And so Magneto's all shy, nervous. He's like trying to move it. And he's like, I can't move it. So then they bring his mom in. And the guy's like, basically, you need to move, move this coin or I'm going to kill your mom. And so he gets a little nervous. He starts trying to move it, trying to move it. He can't move it. And all of a sudden, the, the, the Nazi guy stands up, shoots his mom. Boom, mom falls dead. And he's like, looks back. And he comes back, looks at the camera for a second. He's got all this, like, all this like, fear in his face. And then all of a sudden, it turns to rage. And then he goes, oh, and he shoves the coin. It moves the coin. You know, like, starts breaking like, like the metal cabinets, like crunches the metal cabinets. The guards that shot his mom had metal helmets on, crushes their heads in the helmets. Starts throwing all this, and like, this huge rage, and you see the pain he's going through. He's going through this experience, and he's just ripping the crap out of everything, just thrashing it all. And then, um, and then the scene ends, and the Nazi guys are all clapping, like, "Yay, we got him! You to do this thing we need you to do, right?" But what's interesting is, like, if you watch a movie, like, what happens is, is like in a movie, they can they, you can see these emotions, you see their face, you see the pain, you see all that. And, like, that's why a movie is such a powerful medium, because you can actually feel it. Like when you see that movie, like you feel so much empathy. For young man Nita, like you, you, you care about him. You have this vested interest in him now because, because of the story that you were, you were taken through. And it's powerful on film. But most of us don't have the luxury of having a film crew that, that follows us and edits us and script writers and stuff, right? So how do, we, how do we create that same thing? If you think about this, if Magneto was trying to get you this epiphany about this thing, and he comes and he tells the story, he's like, yeah, so, um, so this is bad Magneto coming, trying to convince you that, he's, that uh, his cause is good, right? That, that uh, Anyway, so he, if he was, imagine he's coming, he's like, yeah, so when I was a kid, I was a Nazi in Germany, um, they wanted me to move some metal stuff, they brought my mom in, and I couldn't move it, so they shot her, which pissed me off, so I destroyed the room, and then uh, now I'm Magneto. You'd be like, what? They shot your mom? Like, oh yeah, it was really, like, it made me mad. Like, that's how most of you guys are telling your stories right now. You're like, like, you just missed the whole thing. I have to get you into state. Okay, if you watched the video yesterday, uh, I did this three or four times when I was telling you guys stories, right? I was talking about like the pain I had. I was talking about my hands were sweating. I was talking about like oh, the pain, the frustration. And, and like if you look at a good novelist, right, when they're writing a book, they don't just like tell you this quick story about the thing, right? Like they, they'll spend 5, 10, 20, 30 pages building up this scene with like what's on the wall, what's happening, what are you feeling, all sorts of stuff. And then they deliver this thing that happens to you. But they spend all this time preparing the scene, getting you into state so that you can feel what happens, the impactful part of the story. That's what the best writers do. Same thing with the best storytellers. If I'm going to give you the emotional epiphany that you have to have to be successful, I have to get your body into a state where you can feel what I felt. If you feel what I felt, you're more likely to have the epiphany that I had as well. And that comes down to the way you tell your story. So if I'm telling my story, instead of me just blah, 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 talking about it, I'm going to stop and be like, okay, think about this. Think about as you were in this situation, how did you feel? Explain that. Sorry, I'm hitting my mic. Think about how you felt. Talk about like, man, like, like, what did it feel like? So if I'm telling a story, like, man, like, I was sitting there and like, God, I got so nervous. Like, I felt like I had a knife stab me in the gut. Um, and like, I hold, all the muscles tensed up and I couldn't even stand up straight because it hurt so bad. And as I was bending over, like, I felt the pain in my spine because it was like, oh, I felt like someone was sitting on my back. There's so much pressure. And as I'm sitting, I look down and I'm like, my hands are sweating and like, oh, the water's getting in my, my pants. I was like, God, oh, what am I doing? Whew, I took a breath and I was like, okay, I got to figure this out. And, I, and see, as I'm telling that story, I'm guessing some of you guys felt that, like you felt like the pressure, you felt the things, right? I'm explaining how I felt, because if I can explain how I felt, then you're going to feel something similar. Us as humans, we have this weird thing with empathy, where it's like, when I tell you about the pain I'm going through, you'll experience some of that pain, you'll feel it. And so as a storyteller, I have to do that. They're great at doing that in Hollywood, you have to be great at doing it as well. If you're going to be able to tell a story in a way that trumps their story. Because they feel this pain right now. They went through this experience, 
So they have a lot of pain and emotion and stuff tied into this thing, right? So if I come in, I'm like, oh yeah, dude, you're an idiot. You don't need to call your mom. You just get leads on the internet. It's really easy. They're like, easy for you to say. Screw you, man. This sucked. I have a ton of pain associated with this. They're not going to listen to you and the domino's not going to fall. I have, I have to get them in the same state I was in when I had this emotional thing. And if I do that, then they're like, wow. God, that, he does know where I came from. He went through the same path that I did. He struggled just like I did. He went through calling his mom and that sucked for him. And like, this is what happened. And like, they, they have that, they, they have rapport. They build this thing with you. And then you share the epiphany. Like, wow, I guess that would work for me. It worked for him. I like him. I have, I have rapport with him. He went through the same pain that I went through. And now it becomes really easy. Okay? So this is the foundation, guys. It's so, so, so vitally important. I want you guys understanding this. Like, like this is the key to knocking down this. Okay? All right, now, one more little mini caveat I'm going to throw in here before we talk about what, uh, what the four stories are. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the big problems that you guys have, especially as experts, is you're smart. And honestly, like, being smart is one of the worst possible things that can happen to any of you guys. In fact, the smarter people are, typically, the worse they are at selling. Okay? And this is the reason why. For some reason, when we were little kids, we were taught that like, having a big vocabulary was really cool and you were smart if you had big vocabulary, right? Um, and so what happens is that we come back and we start using this techno babble crap again. We assume people know what we're talking about. Okay? And so there's a little trick that I kind of put together. It's in the Expert Secrets book. I want to give this to you because it's going to help you guys a ton as you're doing this. Um, it's a concept that we call, I'm going to put it up here. It's this little, call it kind of like, kind of like bridge. Okay, what a kind of like bridge is, is every time I hit a word, techno babble. Sometimes like, if I'm explaining something, I have to use techno babble because like, that's what it's called. And, like, but the thing is, like, if I'm telling you an emotional story and all of a sudden you drop some techno babble, the second you say that, I'm like, wait, what? I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, and like, it, it takes all this rapport you're building through a story and it like, repels it instantly. They're like, whoa. And they stop listening to you the second you drop techno babble because like, I don't know what that means. And it just ruins the pattern of the story. Okay. Um, when I was writing the pitch for this net, for uh, for Prove, the network marketing company, and I was writing this pitch about ketosis, there's all these really big words like ketosis, and so I'm explaining this thing in a video, trying to like make this video like hit somebody and like give them the emotional impact they need to, to sign up for this thing, so we can knock down the big domino. And I keep having to use these stupid words like ketosis. And I'm like, but that's the word. That's what it is. Like, what do I do? So what I do is you make these little kind of like bridges. So what happens is um, this over here is something that people understand. You understand, over here is your techno babble. <laughs> and every time I hit techno babble, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop. And I'm going to grab this person over here and say, okay, we hit some techno babble. Let me take you back over here on this side of the bridge and relate something you understand. So in the video I did for Prove It, when I was like, um, what it's going to do is going to put your body into a state called ketosis. And instantly everyone like, whoop, blocks over. And I stop and I say, it's kind of like, and I take them on a journey back to something they would understand. But it put your body in a state called ketosis. It's kind of like having a million motivational speakers running through your body. That's what it feels like to be in ketosis. People are like, oh, oh, cool. I know what motivational speakers are. If I had a million run through my body, like, oh, I'm going to feel awesome, right? And also, I'm like, oh, that's what ketosis feels like. Sweet. Okay? Later on in the video, if you, some of you guys have probably seen the video, some of you guys haven't. If you see that video, um, there's a part where I talk about, um, uh, again, again, another concept tied to ketosis, and, and I, I, I can't remember exactly what the phrase was, but I said something, it's kind of complicated, it's techno babble, and I stopped and I said, it's kind of like, if you guys ever play the game Pac-Man, you know how most of the game, like you're running away from the ghost, and you're eating little pellets, and you're trying not to get caught, but every once in a while you eat one of those power pellets, and as soon as you eat that power pellet, then you're on. And then all of a sudden, like, you turn around, and then you're chasing the ghost, and you're trying to eat them. Like, that's what it feels like to be in ketosis, that's what it feels like to be on, right? So I'm taking, again, a complex thing, and I'm taking it back to something that they understand. So for you, think about this. Every time I say the word funnel, like that is techno babble, right? But it's what it is, so I have to use that. So what is, what is a funnel? I have to figure out like, what is, what is the, the kind of like bridge? Funnels, autoresponders. Um, in, in your business, it could be financial planning, uh, whatever. Like I watch, um, I watch car commercials. And this is funny because car, I hope there's someone out there who works at a car dealership because you guys are the worst at this by far. So like I watch these car commercials and they're always like, Zero down, no, blah, 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 blah. And they, they, they string off like 30 techno babble words in, in a row. Like, you can get a Hemi with a this and a that and a blah, blah, all these things. And I'm sure that there's, a, there's people who understand that who buy. 
But this is Russell here. I'm not that smart about cars. I have a lot of money. I buy weird cars. I've had a Ferrari. I've got a Corvette. Like, I buy cars. I don't know what any of those words meant. Every time they, they list off that techno babble, I'm like, uh, I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know what a Hemi is. Some of you guys are laughing at me because you probably do. I don't know what that means. If you said a Hemi, it's kind of like freaking having a gorilla in your car shoving you up a bridge. I'd be like, dude, I need a freaking Hemi. But I don't even know what that means, right? They talk about like all the financing terms. I don't know what that means. I'm going to pay cash for my car. So all these financing terms just confuse me. I'm like, ah, uh, that sounds confusing, so I don't buy it from them. Right, like car, car companies, like any company, I promise you guys, you have so much techno babble. I was listening to the podcast again with the, uh, with the owner of our, one of our competitors and he's spewing out techno babble and I'm like, I'm so grateful that all he knows is techno babble. It makes my job so much easier because all I have to do is throw in a couple kind of like bridges and people are like, that seemed really cool but I have no idea what he's talking about. Russell makes things simple. That's it. How do you make things simple? Okay, simplicity. So when you are telling these epiphany bridge stories, every time you hit a word that's techno babble, you have to stop instantly and say, well, it's kind of like this. Then they'll be like, okay, cool, and then you can continue on your story. If you don't, every time you hit techno babble, you're in confused people. Now, obviously, if you can pull techno babble 100% out, that's the best, but sometimes there's words and phrases you have to use, and kind of like Bridge will save you every single day. Okay? Uh, it's funny, after we taught this at Fun Hockey Live, then uh, Todd, one of my co founders in ClickFunnels, he got on stage and he was talking about something, and he stopped saying, like, it's kind of like this, and it was really, really cool the way he did it. So, uh, this concept works. Use it over and over and over again anytime you're telling a story. Okay. All right. So to recap, the big domino, this is the key to everything. You tell a story in a way that's going to knock down this big domino. This is how you tell a story. Okay. Now I'm going to move into the story structure. Now, um, if we had like six days, I could go really, really deep in this. Um, but a lot of stuff's in the Expert Secrets book, and I don't want to reteach the Expert Secrets book. My goal is to use this training as a supplement for it. Um, so if you come into here, and uh, the big domino is chapter, it's actually secret number five, starts on page 85. So you go through some of this, um, which is kind of cool, and it'll go deeper into this concept so you guys understand it even better. Uh, secret number six, we talk about the Epiphany Bridge, which is what we just covered right now. Um, we talk about techno babble. We talk about kind of like bridges in here, and then secret number seven, we talk, we move into a concept called the hero's two journeys. Okay, now kind of give you the recap. Uh, uh, initially, I learned this from a guy named Michael Haig, and Michael uh, is one of the screenwriters, uh, or not screenwriters. He um, he's a screenwriting consultant. So people in Hollywood will write screen screen uh, will write their screenplays, and they'll hire Michael to come in and make sure that the story structure is correct. Uh, he's done it for people like Will Smith and a whole bunch of like amazing people. If you ever seen the movie Hitch, uh, Will Smith wrote Hitch. And it was based on, it's funny because they, they based the whole thing on Michael, um, uh, Michael Haig's uh, process. He calls the Hero's Two Journeys. And so he like, he did that and then they met later and he was like, uh, and they talked about Hitch and he's like, I, Michael was like, I love that movie. He's like, oh, because I was actually studying your stuff when I wrote the screenplay for that. And they became friends afterwards and, and they worked together, all sorts of stuff. But he figured out, I don't know if he was the one that figured it out, but he wrote, uh, he's, he's written a couple books and uh, some audio books and stuff on this concept called Heroes Two Journeys. And he actually came and spoke at one of our events teaching this. And so he taught the Heroes Two Journeys. And I was like, it is insanely cool. He showed how like, almost every Hollywood movie from the beginning of time till now, the ones that have been successful, they all follow the same script called the Heroes Two Journeys. And, uh, and he showed the pattern, how it all works. He's like, it doesn't matter if it's Titanic, if it's Rocky, if it's whatever. Like, the script is basically the same. He's like, so much so we can be like, okay, page 13 in every single uh, screenplay is when the hero does this. Page 62 is when this happens. Page 90, and it's like, it's fascinating to start seeing the process, how similar it is. Um, and so what's cool is after he got done speaking to us, this is five or six years ago, I was like, cool, how do we use that in like what we do? And he's like, I don't know. I'm like, crap, um, there's got to be a way. And, uh, and it took me like five years. I kept listening to stuff, going through it and going through it. And as I was writing this book, I, I wanted to sketch out. So actually on page 103, I sketched out like, here's the hero's two journeys that he, he explains in all his training. And this is like, anyway, I'm going to be sending this to Michael as a gift. But like, this is, this is his teaching in like, in a drawing. So there it is right now. And I'm not going to go deep into this because um, I just have this chapter here so you understand like the story process from all story. But then the question is, how does this work for us? Like people like us who are trying to tell a story, and sometimes that story is going to be, I got three minutes on an interview to tell my story. Sometimes I've got an hour and a half to tell my story. How do I, what's the script that we plug it in to get my Epiphany Bridge story the right way that has all of these things that we get from the Heroes Two Journeys? And so, secret number eight then in the book is the Epiphany Bridge script. Okay? And this, this is, uh, this is how you actually tell these stories. Do you guys want to see that? Should we break that one down for you? We got some nods over here? All right. I was going to do it anyway, but now I really will do it. Okay, so the Epiphany Bridge script. 
it's right here. P I P H A Epiphany. Okay, Epiphany of your script. So as you go through here, the script's on page 114, and then the questions are on page 115. So I'll just kind of do, I'll kind of write this out really quickly. So we have back here, we've got backstory. Here's a person, and there's desires. One and two, there's the external, and then the internal. From there, they hit a wall on this journey. And from here, they have, oh, this epiphany. Here's your light bulb epiphany moment. Um, from there, there is a plan. From there, there's conflict. And then there's two outcomes. The journey of achievement. And then the journey of transformation. Okay. There's a better version in the book, but that's kind of what it looks like. So let me kind of walk you through this. So in any story I'm telling, it starts with the backstory, right? Why do we start with the backstory? Because we want to build rapport with people, and I, I want to help them to understand that their, their current story is wrong. Um, if I just come in and like ch try to trump them with like, oh, this is the truth, like no one, if there's not rapport, people will not listen to you, okay? So I build rapport by coming back, so like, I was in the same spot you were at. Let me tell you my journey. Ooh, and you start with your backstory always. If you notice my stories, I always, um, I always start with the backstory. I go back to that, right? So the backstory then, what we talk about in the backstory is kind of the situation you're in, and we talk about your desires. What's the external desire? Like, I wanted that result, right? The result we talked about yesterday, that's your, that's your external desire. Okay, and what's cool is that's typically your audience's external desire. I want to make money. I want to lose weight. I want to, here's an external desire, right? And that's where most people stop. And that's where, that's where storytelling, most people are really bad at, is they talk about the external desire. If you watch the people out there who are selling, um, you can call them scammers, spammers, whatever you want to call them, they're always talking about the, the money, the bling, the, you know, like, that's what they're always talking about external. And it's like, you can pitch someone, you can convert them once on an external, but they're not going to build rapport with you. They're not going to become a mass movement. They're not going to become a tribe if you're just pitching the external. Because people don't actually care about the external. So the second thing is your internal. What's the reason why you want that result? What is it? Not that you want to lose weight. No one really cares about that. You want to lose weight because something internally wants it. Because you want love from your spouse. You want your kids to respect you. You want whatever. That, like, what's the, in, like, the real reason? Like, why do you start a business? Yeah, you want, a whole, you want to make a million bucks a year. That's your external desire. Sweet. That's not real. The real thing is the internal desire. Like, why are you doing that? I want security for my home, for my family. I want to wake up in the morning and know that like, I can provide as a man. Right? It's the internal stuff that we have. Now, most people will never talk about the internal. So in your story, if you talk about the internal, guess what happens? People are like, oh, that's all I want too. I don't really want a million bucks. I just want security too. I want to wake up in the morning knowing that my house payment is covered for. I want to make sure that um, my, my mom, who... Uh, Whatever, I want to make sure she, she, she thinks I'm cool, that she respects me, she loves me. I want to make sure that my spouse is proud of me. I want to make sure my kids, like, oh, like if my, I want my kids, like, when, when, uh, when I die, I want that to be cool. This is in Gary Vaynerchuk, it's interesting. He keeps talking about, like, I want to win the Jets, I want to buy the Jets, his external desire. And then he's like, if you ask him, you listen to what he really wants, when I die, he's like, I want, every, I want, I want everyone I know, at my, I want everyone on earth to come to my funeral. Like, that's the, how many people come to his funeral, that's his internal desire. When I die, I want to make sure people are there. I want to make sure I matter. Like, that's his real thing. The jets are a thing that gives him an external drive. The internal is big. So when you start sharing your internal drives, why you actually wanted this thing, that's when people connect to you because nobody talks about that. There's so much fear of us releasing that and talking about those things, right? It's the vulnerability part of this. Um, the more vulnerable you are, the more people will connect and come to you. It's interesting, in our inner circle, um, I've got 100 people in my inner circle, not this last set of meetings, but ones before, the theme between all four groups, all 100 of the entrepreneurs, over and over and over again was the reason why they were not successful is they were all focused on talking about the external and posturing. None of them were talking about the internal. And everyone that was having success were the ones who broke down and were vulnerable and they shared their internal desires. This is the key, you guys, in your story. Okay? So you tell out the backstory. The backstory is all about connection with the attractive character, with you in your story. So you tell the story, what you externally wanted, but then like the real reason is this. Like, I really wanted blah, and you talk about your internal desires. Then you go, and I was, I was in this vehicle trying to get the result, but I couldn't get it. It sucked. I hated my job. I hated my weight loss plan. I hated my coach. I hated my, like whatever, the vehicle they're currently in isn't working, and they hit this wall, and they were so frustrated that they had to, you had to change. You had to shift something, right? So you went on this journey. If you notice every, by the way, every movie, Think about Frodo in The Hobbit, right? He's here, hits a wall, he has to leave. 
every, I think the first five or 10% of every single movie is when the, the hero leaves, physically leaves where they're at, right? So I'm in this thing that sucks. I have to go on a journey. I have to physically leave the, the vehicle I'm in to try to get the result. I was trying to call my friends and family. It sucked. I had to leave oh, and try something different. I had to go on this journey, right? It's all about this journey. So you hit a wall and you left on a journey and then somewhere in this journey, that's when this whole thing happened, right? She's telling your story. You had this epiphany of like, oh my gosh, I needed a funnel. Like that was the key. Like if I had that, like, everything would be easy. Oh my gosh, if I, if I could get my body in ketosis, everything would be easy. Oh my gosh, if I just um, shifted my, my financial strategy, whatever, if I just, you know, whatever that thing is for you, right? You tell that story. If I had a supplement that had all these kind of things, then it would blah, 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 right? You tell the story, you had the epiphany. Then from there, you have a plan. So then I had the epiphany. Then I tried this, this, and then you start telling about the plan of how you executed on it. And then once again, most of us entrepreneurs want to position and posture ourselves as like, and then I just made a billion dollars. I was infallible at that point. No, nobody relates to that and it's not true anyway. You have a plan and then you introduce the conflicts. What were the struggles you went through on this journey? Um, if you don't, like, conflict is what gets people to care. If you don't have, if you just have, I made a plan and then it worked and boom, I'm rich, I'm skinny, I'm whatever that is, no one cares. What was the conflict you hit along the way? And at the end of it, you share the resolution. Now there's two things, right? Right here we had, we had the hero's two journeys. The external, like the goal, like Frodo wanted to destroy the ring. Um, uh, so Rocky Balboa wanted to beat Apollo Creed. Like there's the external thing, right? So at the end of it, you talk about what happened here. Uh, what was the achievement? Oh, Frodo destroyed the ring, right? There's the achievement. Uh, Rocky, well, in the first one, he didn't. Like half the time in the movies, they don't actually get the thing they set out to achieve, right? Rocky part one, Rocky got jacked by Apollo, but he lasted the time, right? So he got the achievement, but he didn't actually win. But what's the achievement? It's like, sweet, so I got my goal. And like, you talk about the, the achievement you got, but then you come back to like the internal. But, but what was really cool is like, I came home that night and hung out with my kids and they were like so proud of me. I, you know, like, my dad called me and told me this and it was like so cool. Like, what was the transformation you had? So there's the Epiphany Bridge script, you guys. That, that is the key. That is the script that goes into here to tell the story. And if you do this the right way, this follows the storytelling process that everyone has used from the beginning of time that works. And this is how we use it inside of our, in our world here as experts, okay? Now, sometimes it's kind of hard. Like, how do you remember all this? So for me, I, honestly, I have this printed out on my desk. As I'm telling stories, I'm glancing, okay? And I'm telling, okay, let me tell you my backstory, blah, 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 blah. And then, like, um, what I really wanted was this thing over here, but, like, internal. So, but these are, like, what I really was kind of hoping for, if I'm completely honest, was this. And I went on this thing, and, I, and you just kind of follow the process here. Now, the next page, on page 115, uh, to make it even easier. Is it okay if we over-deliver? I just want to keep making it easier and easier. So, number, on page 115, then we come through, and it's like, okay, here's the actual questions to make this even easier. So, my questions is the backstory. So, what is your backstory that gives us the vested interest in your journey? You tell the answer. Cool. What was it you wanted to accomplish? What was the external struggle you're dealing with? Oh, I broke. I want to make money. Okay. What was the internal struggle you're dealing with? Boom. Uh, number three, the wall. What was, uh, what was the wall or problem you hit within your current opportunity that started you on this new journey? I was trying the Atkins diet. It sucked. I ate cake every night. I wasn't even close to doing it. So I decided to try something new. There's the wall I hit. I went on this journey. Boom. What was the epiphany you experienced? A new opportunity you discovered? And when I had this epiphany, ah, oh, here's my new opportunity. Ketosis, it's amazing. What's the plan? What's the plan you created? Uh, what was the plan you created to achieve your desire? What was the conflict that you experienced along the way? What was your end result? Up here, what was the transformation you experienced? Those eight questions are the secret, you guys. There's how you tell your stories over and over and over and over again. Okay, how many of you guys are getting excited about this? Okay, um, hopefully I don't get in trouble for sharing this, but this was amazing. So. Um, Kaylin, who is, if you go to expertsecrets.com, she's the very first success story down there on the bottom. Um, what was cool is uh, she's, she's a master of this. She's one of the best in our group at telling stories, knocking down dominoes, and the, the people that are able to impact because of it is huge. They have over 500 women a day joining into their programs. It's crazy because she's mastered this. Like, she's one of the best. In fact, I keep trying to, if they didn't make so much money, I would hire her to run ClickFunnels and I can just go back to bed because she's better than me at this. Like, she's amazing, right? But she's mastered all these kind of things. And what was interesting, she had this idea at the last uh, meeting that she told me, I was just like, I can go home now. I got my value. You know, it's my own meeting, but like, that was amazing. Like, it was so cool. So what she did is she knew that like, her story connected with some people, right? And so her audience was coming, but there's a whole bunch of the market, in her market, they're in the weight loss uh, market, that don't respond to her. Uh, one good example is like, she's not a mom. So the mom's like, oh, well, you can do it because you're a young girl. So she wasn't connecting with mom. So she understood that. And so she did. She went out to all of her success stories and she said, um, you know, I want you guys all to come and I want to tell your story live on Facebook Live or whatever it is. And, uh, and so 
if you have a cool story about how what we've done has helped you, why don't you fill out this form? And so she created a, a form, and the form basically had eight questions. What is your backstory that gives us a vested interest in your journey? And they filled that out. And then boom, and they filled out all of these things right here. And then she had, she had the entire story written out, emailed to her, they filled out this form. And then when she interviewed her on Facebook Live, she was able to say, okay, so, you know, so-and-so, um, what's your journey that gives, what's, what's your backstory? Like, why, why should we care about your story? And then people tell the story. And then typically, some success stories or testimonies, they get awkward or shy on camera, right? And, but she knew, she already had the story written out. She's like, well, um, well, tell us a story about your, your dad or tell us a story about this. And then they started going deeper and deeper and telling that story. And she was able to get the emotional connection because she knew the story. She had pre-written out. She knew the entire story and where she was taking somebody through this interview to be able to get it. Uh, we've got other people in our circle now who are using this with all their testimonials. They set up a camera at their events or after someone buys their product and they just ask them these questions. And they go through it. And the, the, with these, these testimonials now become powerful because it's actually telling their journey in a really, really cool way. Um, when someone asks me if I'm on a podcast, someone asks me a question, guess what I slip into? I slip into Epiphany Bridge stories. When I'm doing webinars, there's four Epiphany Bridge stories I will tell on every single webinar we'll talk about next. Um, I, I'm using this over and over and over and over and over again. This is the key. A bunch of you guys were asking in the, in the questions before this training, like, well, how do we sell this stuff? I want to know how to sell. Like, what's sales? I'm going to talk about sales, sales, sales. This is sales. This is sales of the future, okay? Telling emotional stories that are true. That's it. That's it. It's really simple. You have to learn the next technique and how to blah, blah, like all those kind of things. Like, it's getting good at telling stories because this is the key. People, they want to give you money. I think we have a fear sometimes asking people for money. We love to buy crap. How many of you guys, like, when you buy something, you're just like, it feels so good. You pull your crap, you type it in, you're like, ah, oh, I bought that thing. Like, it feels so good. Your people want to give you money more than anything. When you understand that, this is a big thing. A lot of times I think people don't want to buy stuff. Like, oh, I have to convince them to buy. No, they want to buy. Really, really bad. All of us love buying. It's an addiction. It's a habit. Like, we all have it. Um, pretty sure we all have it. Yeah, we all have it. I've got it. Bad. All of you guys have it. We have it. We want to buy. But something happens. We see this thing. We're like, ah. And all of a sudden, instantly, all these false beliefs. Well, that doesn't work because of this. And so, like, they're convincing themselves not to buy even though they want it. When I can come in and be like, look, um, this thing right here, this is actually uh, really, really good. Why don't you want it? And they're like, oh, because of this. Like, oh, that's why? You didn't even know. Like, let me tell you a story. Like, this is actually the truth. And they're like, Holy crap. Are you serious? Boom, I want that now. Domino falls. They have to buy. They have to give you money, which gives you the ability now to help them and serve them. Okay? So these, these are the pieces. All right. You guys getting excited so far? There's one more layer on top of this we're going to add in next um, to make this thing complete. Maybe two layers. All right. We'll keep going. There's a lot more layers. Okay. I'm going to break this down here in the middle. Break this here. So we've got some... Okay, so if you notice when I speak, I do a lot of Epiphany Bridge stories. Some of them are short. Some of them are like 30 seconds to a minute long. Some are hours long. Like, it just kind of depends, right? There's different length for all these things. And so that's what's cool about this. I can tell the story in two minutes. And I can tell the story in two hours. It's just how much details, how much emotion, how much feeling can I put into it. Um, and so that's, that's the power of this is you start getting better at this and understanding your stories. Now, there are a lot of stories you're going to use and you should be using over and over and over again. But... For the webinar that we're going to be creating, that you're going to be doing, there's basically four core stories you need to understand. Okay? So story number one, the four stories. Uh, yes. All right. So story number one, we call the origin story. Okay. It's your origin story. What is the origin story that got you excited about your thing? Okay? It's usually your original Epiphany Bridge story. If you listen to my thing, like my original Epiphany Bridge story that I talk about with funnels is my potato gun. How many of you guys have heard my potato gun story at least 50 million times, right? That's my origin story. That's how I figured this whole thing out. That's like why I got excited about funnels, okay? If you haven't heard my Epiphany Bridge story, let me tell it to you. All right, here's my backstory. I was in college, and uh, I was a dumb college because I was a wrestler, barely graduating, but just getting good enough grades to wrestle. Uh, they always told me it's easy to get degrees, and that's true. All you have to have is a 2.0 to be able to compete. So I was in, competing, wrestling, having the time of my life, and then I met the most beautiful girl in the world, and she is hot. And I love her. And I was like, i got to marry this girl. She's amazing. And so uh, I begged her and I pleaded and I tried. It was like by far the hardest sell. And after like three months, I closed the deal and we got married and it was awesome. Now, in Mormon time, um, that's a long time. I know most people's world are like, oh, you got to date for like six years. And the, yeah, for me, it's like, what's wrong with you, Russell? You've known her for three months. Why aren't you married yet? I'm like, I know I'm trying to close the deal. So it was a really hard sell for me. Eventually, closed the deal. She married me. Awesome. Life was good. And then something, and uh, uh, and then something really scary happened. 
uh, my dad messaged me like, cool, you're getting married. I'm cutting you off. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, when you are by yourself, I support you. When you're married, like you're a man now. You have to take care of yourself. I was like, dad, that's not good because I'm not a man yet. He's like, well, if you want to get married, you kind of are. I'm like, crap. Okay. So I had this desire. I was like, I got to figure out how to make money because I'm wrestling. I'm not giving up wrestling. That's like, that's why I was put on this earth was to wrestle at that point. I'm like, I'm not giving up wrestling. Screw that. I got to figure another way. And so um, I got to make money. That was my thing. And I'm like, but the real reason is like, my cute little wife, she's amazing. Like, as soon as we decide to get married, like, she got a second job. So she's working, she's working all during the day while I'm at school wrestling, having the time of my life. Then at night, she got a second job serving tables at Chili's so that we could pay for our rent while I was out wrestling with my buddies at night. Like, so much fun. But I was like, oh, like, what kind of man am I? Like, I'm making my wife work two jobs so I can go have fun. And, uh, and I realized, like, God, like, I, I got to figure out, like, how to help support her because, like, Eventually, she's going to want kids and a family and all sorts of stuff. Like, I can't do that. Like, I remember that good of a husband. Like, well, I'm not really pulling my load at all. I was like, I got to figure this out. So I went on this journey. I started trying to figure out how to make money. I went online. There was a bunch of stuff happening. I tried selling stuff on eBay. It didn't work. I tried selling stuff on Craigslist. I tried to like, buy stuff on Craigslist and on eBay. I tried to stuff. And like, I had little incremental successes, but nothing that uh, we could write home about. In fact, I remember the first summer we were married. I'm on the computer trying to figure some stuff out. And, uh, and Clay came home from her second job. And she's like, hey, do you think this summer you could get a job or something? And I was like, no, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm starting a business. And she's like, no, you, you really need to get a job because I'm doing two right now and you're home playing on the computer all day. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll give you a job. So I got a job and it sucked. I'm in this vehicle. I hated this job. But I was just, at the night, I'm trying to figure this out, trying things out. And I'm trying all sorts of stuff. And finally, I learned about um, information products, which was like the coolest thing in the world. I was like, information products, because if I, if I make one, I can sell it over and over and over again. So I just got to work hard once and then just sell it a whole bunch of times. I was like, sold. That is like the vehicle to get me the result that I actually wanted. So I started a bunch of things and I realized at first, like, I'm not good at anything. I'm like, crap, what should I make an uh, info product about? And I was like, well, I do wrestling. I'm like, ah, oh, the problem is the wrestlers are all broke. Crap. What else am I good at? I got nothing else. I'm like, dang it. Um, okay, well, huh. And so I got to figure something out. Thinking, thinking. And all of a sudden, one day, spring break, all the wrestlers are gone, having party. And my buddy and I, Nate, Plone, and me, were the only two wrestlers that weren't married. Or, excuse me, that were married. Sorry. And so all of our buddies are off, tend to Vegas, having fun, gambling, whatever people do. And we're at home because our wives are working. We feel too guilty to ditch them and go to Vegas. So we're like, okay, we're watching movies all day, hanging out. And we're like, our wives are going to think that we're not doing anything. We should do something. And he's like, do you want to make a potato gun? Which is like the logical first question to ask. And I'm like, heck yeah, dude, let's make a potato gun. Like, I don't even know what that is. That sounds awesome. And so we jumped online, started Googling potato gun plans, and we figured things out, went to Home Depot, and we spent the entire week while our wives were working, supporting us, making potato guns, and it had so much fun. And then uh, at the end of the week, when the wives got off work, we went out in the mountains, we shot them, and it was like a great time. Um, and so that was, that was what was happening. And then, uh, and then what was interesting is um, that next week, I went back to school, and, and I'm sitting there in class. It's a finance class. My teacher's talking about who knows what bored out of my mind as most entrepreneurs are. I'm looking at the sky, like wondering when the clock's going to ring. And all of a sudden I had an idea. I was like, wait a minute. I wonder if I was the only person this weekend thinking about potato guns. I mean, there's got to be other people. And I just learned earlier about a website. It was called Overture back then for those for the long time, old timers who remember that. So I, I like act like I had to go to the bathroom and I ran out of my class, slipped in the computer lab, went to Overture. Uh, it was inventory.overture.com. I typed in potato gun plans. Boom. And there were, and I thought there were 18,000 people a month searching potato gun plants. And I was like, I was one of those people and there's nobody selling anything on potato gun plans. I should be that guy. So I instantly find Nate in the hallway. He's like, dude, let's go make a potato gun DVD. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I can explain later. Are you in? He's like, sure, let's do it. So we went that next night. Uh, we borrowed a little video camera from somebody we knew. We went to Home Depot and we filmed us buying the pipes. Like, I'm doing this because the first Home Depot we went into, we got kicked out because I was asking a guy like, hey, do you have these kind of pipes? He's like, what are you making? I'm like, potato guns. As, my, as Nate's walking with the camera and they're like, you can't buy that stuff here, and he kicked us out. So the next Home Depot, like five miles down the road, like we had it hidden in the coat, the camera, as we're like filming everything. So it's kind of, if you've seen the DVD, some of you guys have seen it, it's kind of secretive and cool. So we got the thing, built the gun, did the whole thing, made a DVD, started selling online, and that's how I had my first success. And it was awesome, we were making a bunch of money. I was paying $20 a day on Google Ads, I was making like 40 bucks a day through buying, people buying DVDs, and I was rich. I was supporting my wife. I was, pay, you know, we netted 20, 20 bucks a day, which for us was like, it was awesome. So we were going to movies, eating dinner, like it was awesome. And then one day, overnight, gone, it disappeared. And it didn't work. What happened was Google jacked their prices up. So we were spending 40, 50 bucks to sell DVD now, and it just didn't work. And I was all sad and depressed. Um, and then something cool happened. One of my friends called me up, he's like, dude, and he had a similar business to me. He's like, I figured out this thing. He's like, you know how McDonald's does upsells? 
Like you order a, you order a burger and they're like, hey, do you want fries with that? I'm like, yeah. He's like, how often do you say yes to that? I'm like, every time. He's like, so do I. So I thought, what if I did the same thing on my website? He's like, I sold the DVD. On the next page, I was like, hey, do you want this too? He said, 30% of people right now who buy the first thing are buying the second thing. I was like, what does that mean? He's like, it means that now I'm making a crap ton more money. He's like, my upsells work, which means now I can pay money on Google again. He's like, you gotta figure out an upsell for your potato gun thing. I'm like, well, people who buy potato guns, what else do they need? He's like, well, they probably need like potato gun kits. I'm like, I don't know how to make a kit. I'm sure there's liability. I'm not going to do that. And he's like, well, maybe there's something you can do. So I started Googling. I ended up finding this guy in northern Idaho who actually sold potato gun kits. Like, how cool is that? So I did a deal with him. I said, I'm going to do an upsell, selling your kits. He said, yes. And the people bought the DVD and the upsell was like, hey, do you want me to ship you out a kit? And just like he said, 20 to 30% of the people who bought the DVD started buying the kit. And that was my first funnel. And suddenly it worked again. And I went back to Google and it worked. Like I was able to spend 40 bucks a day. Like it now cost me because of the upsells, we were profitable. And suddenly like, I was back in business. Now for me, potato guns isn't the biggest market in the world, but I got it. I was like, the secret is funnels. Like if I have a funnel, that's the key. And I was like, I can replicate this in markets that actually have a lot of people who care about this. So we replicate it in the dating market and, and weight loss and supplements. We did it over and over and over again. And for like eight years of my life, all I was doing was building these funnels. And they were making tons of money. I was the rich kid in college. We were driving nice, nice cars, all sorts of stuff. And it was, it was so cool. Like, I was supporting my wife and it was awesome. Um, but the problem was that for us, it took us between three, uh, two to three months every single time we wanted to build a funnel. This is how it worked. I would log into Microsoft front page and I would design the copy of the sales letter, whatever it was. Then I sent it to a designer. He'd have to design it. Then we sent it to a, to a, a website designer who would slice in HTML. We had to send it to the programmer who then programmed it. Then we had to send it to somebody else at the shopping cart, the autoresponder, the analytics. And it took like eight people and three months to launch every single funnel. And most funnels cost us um, on the low end about $30,000 per funnel. And it was hard. And what was annoying is that one out of 10 funnels failed. Or excuse me, opposite. One out of 10 funnels worked. So we were looking at every year or so we'd have maybe one hit that would make uh, money for the rest of them. And so we got frustrated, right? And so what happened is we decided to build a tool to make it easy for us to build funnels. And this cool thing came out called ClickFunnels. And now I can build a funnel. Literally, one took us three months before and eight people I can do now in an hour by myself. And they look better, they convert better, and it's done. And that was a cool thing. So I'm able to build funnels. But the cool thing is that because of that, like, not only can I build funnels fast, like I can actually spend more time with my kids, my family. I got my kids building funnels, now we're building funnels as a family. It's like the most exciting, fun thing. And um, at the same time, we've changed the world. We've had right now 41,000 other people just like you who are building funnels. And it's so amazing. Okay, so that's my origin story. How many of you guys now, that was it. It just knocked the domino down for you. You're like, holy crap. Dude, I, I need a funnel too. And apparently click funnels is how we all do it. All right, I'm in. Okay, for a lot of you guys, that origin story is all you need to knock down the domino. Boom. Okay? So think about that. So that's the first key. Hopefully you guys just learned a lesson there, right? The origin story is the first story. And for some of you guys, the origin story is enough to knock down the big domino, to get people to believe what you need them to believe, to get them to come and follow you into your movement, buy your product, buy your service, whatever it is for you. Okay? Now, a couple things about humans. We're um, stubborn a lot of times. And so what normally will happen because um, if, if that's all it was, like my webinars would be 20 minutes long, I'd tell a story and they would close. And that will close a percentage of the people, right? Um, but there's a big percentage of people that like, they're all excited, like, sweet, that's awesome. And all of a sudden, boom, all the red flags start popping up. And typically there's three, there's three things that'll pop up, okay? One, two, three. Three false beliefs that are gonna pop up, okay? And the first false belief, after they hear your origin story, is gonna be like, that sounds awesome. I mean, and they're like, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 hold on. This, so right now I'm in this current vehicle trying to get my result. I've been doing it for a while. Maybe I don't like it, but like, you know, it's security. I know what it is. It's a known thing. You're trying to get in this other vehicle, this new vehicle to get that result. Your story made sense. I'm excited, but like, I have all this fear about me abandoning my current vehicle, my current opportunity to get into this new one. So they have all sorts of fears about the vehicle or the opportunity. Okay, they have a bunch of fears about that. The second thing, after believe, like, okay, cool. All right, that vehicle's right. I feel comfortable, I'm good with that. Then they're like, wait, oh, but, but I don't know if I can do it. I know you did it, Russell, but you're so smart and cool and amazing. Well, thank you. Um, but they're like, I don't know if I can do it. I'm different, right? And so the next thing is their internal fears. If I was internal fears. Okay, so here, the vehicle, for me, I make funnels. Funnels are the greatest thing in the world. If I can, if I can convince them that, that funnels are the greatest thing in the world, 
um, then they're like, sweet, I, I'm in. But I, so then over here, it's like, oh, I believe in funnels. I don't know if I can do funnels. And I got to show them, like, no, you actually could do it. I do, you like, it's really simple. And if I can get them to be like, oh, yeah, I, I could do that. Then the next thing is like, okay, well, I believe funnels are the greatest thing in the world. I believe I could actually do it, but I don't know how to get traffic to my funnel. So there's external, like, there's an external thing, right? So there's an external thing that we all fear about. So it's like, um, cool, I believe funnels are the greatest thing in the world. Cool, I believe I can do it, but I don't know how to get traffic. Therefore, I cannot give you money. So I got, okay, well, I got to figure that out. Like, how, can I, how can I show them that traffic is actually easy? If I get that, it just happens. All these things fall, and the big domino knocks over. Okay? Now notice one thing. I'm not trying to convince you of three new things. This is where people have a lot of make, this, make the big mistake. We talked about earlier, I believe. I need to get you to believe one thing. This is the only thing I need to get you to believe. These are things that, these are different ways to approach this. Because the, the, the things that are going to keep them from believing the big domino are their belief in the vehicle you're putting them into or the new opportunity. It's their belief about themselves being able to execute on it. It's their belief about the external things they fear are going to stop them from having success. But it's all just one thing, this one domino. Okay, I'm convincing you that funnels are the greatest thing in the world. This is what you have to have. And then you're like, okay, well, convince me more of this, this thing. I need, little, I need more pushing on this. I need pushing that I can actually do it. And I need pushing that all these other things. So I'm coming through. I'm trying to knock down these other these external things. Does that make sense? Um, so those are the other stories. So my first story I'm telling you is the origin story. It's my first shot at trying to knock down the big domino. Like I said, a percentage of people, that's all they need and they're in. Then there's the next percentage of people who are like, they have questions or fears about this. So my second one, my second story here is all about the vehicle slash opportunity. Okay, so what's your epiphany bridge story that you have that got you to believe in this and this, right? What's that epiphany bridge story that you had? Number two, or th story number three then is the internal fears they have. So your third story is your epiphany bridge about the internal. And then number four, epiphany bridge about the external, the external things holding back. Okay, so those are the four core epiphany bridge stories you need to have. And the reason why is, again, it's all about knocking down this domino. Origin story is the first shot. Second shot is taking out the vehicle, taking out this and this. It's like the stilts that are holding this domino up. And you're just like, okay, I'm going to try to push that domino. Sometimes it knocks over, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, knock out that stilt, knock out that one, knock out that one. And it's like, awesome, I believe. Boom. And you got them. And then that domino knocks down all the other ones, and they have to give you money. They have to come to you. Does that make sense, you guys? So that is, that is the key. These are the four stories. Okay? Now, um, now, where do we get these stories from? So what I'm going to talk about now is um, an exercise that I highly, 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 highly recommend you guys all do tonight, um, tomorrow, whenever you want to do it. Um, so on page 132 in the book, we talk about this. So it's, it's uh, this thing right here. Okay? So the false belief patterns. So the reason why people aren't giving you money, the reason why they're not doing what they use is because they have false beliefs, right? That's what we're talking about. Like, how do we create belief? How do we cause belief? How do we take false beliefs and break them and rebuild them into true beliefs? So I got to think about this. So for me, um, we did this for number one. But for most of you guys, like, if you do this, you have one story. You have your origin story. But you need more stories. You need a lot of stories. So the way I do this, I come down. I said, for somebody to give me money and to become part of this thing I'm trying to sell or create or do, what are all of their false beliefs that they have related to this? Like, what are there? And there's false beliefs about this. You know, these two are these two are similar. So the false beliefs about the vehicle, about their internal and their external. So what I do is I come down here and I start making a list. I start building a story inventory. So I'm down here. I'm like, okay, um, false beliefs. What are the false beliefs they have? Okay, so they have a false belief about blah. Maybe maybe they have a false belief um, back here that like um, I'm going to use MLM because that's what we're using to begin with. So we'll just kind of stay on that theme. But again, this works for anything. So let's say it's network marketing. They're like, okay, well, um, only people at the top of the pyramid make make money, right? So that's that's a that's a false belief they have. And then number three is like, oh, I'm gonna have to um, I'm gonna have to um, do home parties or whatever, right? Or um, you know things are like I'm gonna have to learn how to sell. I hate selling; it scares me. Um, or um, you know everyone everyone who's ever signed up's already signed up, so everyone's signed up. So I, I list out all the different false beliefs that I can think that people are gonna have about this. Can okay, all the false beliefs are different like things they're using to try to like keep security in, in what they have by holding up this domino. Like, here's all the false beliefs that they've um, accomplished throughout their entire life. So I list out as many as I can. A minimum of 10. You should do 20 to 30, 40. Like, if, you're, if this is the business you want to be in for forever, you should do a lot of these. Okay? A lot of people ask me, Russell, how do you tell so many stories every single time you talk? Okay? It's because I did this exercise. I have an inventory of stories. I've written them out. I know what they are. So I'm talking now. Like, I don't plan. I sit here and like plan out. And I'm going to tell story number one here, story two here. Like, 
I have the framework, and as I'm going, I have, because I've, I've written these out and I know my stories, when I'm talking, also I'm like, oh, tell, your, tell this story, oh, tell this story, oh, tell this, and I can pull them out of thin air because I know them. Most of you guys can't tell stories well because you never thought about it. You never mapped them out. You need to build an inventory of stories. So the way you do that, you start with false beliefs. Here's all the false beliefs that your customers could have. Now, if you're struggling with this, what I want you to do is I want you to stop. I want you to come back over here. And before you had your epiphany, what were your false beliefs you had about this thing? Because they're probably the same as theirs. Okay, when I was sharing this one time uh, in our inner circle meeting, Garrett White was there. And Garrett's like, I always struggled with this until I realized that it were all the false beliefs I had. When I broke through those is when I had success and I got the result. So he just went back through and said, what were all the false beliefs I had? So for you, it's like, what are, you, what are the false beliefs you had? Or the beliefs that they have, or whatever it might be. Whatever you can think of, it. here's all the false beliefs, okay? Then I want to come back and say, okay, why do they believe this? Why do they believe that only the people atop the pyramid scheme are making money? Why do, I, why do they only believe that the only, people that the only way to lose weight is if you have the right metabolism? What's the, you know, whatever, again, whatever it is for you. So what's the experience they had? There's some experience they had tied to this thing that made them believe that. And now because of that, they made up their own story. What is the story that they tell themselves? And I need to identify what their story is because I have to have an Epiphany Bridge story here that trumps theirs. That's better. Okay? So what is my story right here? And this is the key. What is your story here? Okay? Then I come back to number two. Here's the false belief they had. Why do they believe that? Here's the experience they probably had. We don't know the exact one, but they're pretty similar. People are, humans, are, humans aren't as different as we all think. Experience ever similar. Here's the story they're probably telling themselves. Here's my story that trumps, that trumps their story. Okay? Number three, here's the false belief, story, or experience, story, my story. False belief, their experience, their story, my story. False belief, and you keep going through here until you have all these stories, right? Now you got your list of Epiphany Bridge stories. You have a whole, a whole bunch of them here now, right? Um, now I have this. This is my story inventory. Now practice telling that story. Okay? Go in front of a mirror. Pull out this script right here. Tell the story once. Pull out the script here. Tell the next one. 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 Okay, do it in front of a mirror. Do it on a podcast. Do it on a Facebook Live. Do it on whatever it is. We talked. Remember we talked yesterday about becoming the expert. Doing Facebook Lives every single day. Guess what I do on my Facebook Lives every single day? What? I just tell stories. These are the stories I'm telling over and over. Start watching what I'm doing, you guys. Every time I come on my podcast, guess what it is? Me telling a story. Every podcast you listen to, I'm like, okay, so let me tell you what I did today. And I go into the backstory. I start telling this whole story, right? Every podcast, every Facebook Live, every webinar, every communication, this whole entire training has been a bunch of these. You guys not notice that? How many stories have I told? Is anyone keeping track? I don't know. Last time Dave kept track, we did, I did a 60-minute presentation in a group, and he started marking down all the stories. And uh, it ended up being, it was over one per minute, wasn't it? Like, it was like 120, so anyway, one or two per minute when you looked at the whole thing. Some were long, some were short, some were stories embedded inside of stories. But they're, they're happening because I've done them. I know what they are. I know how to tell these stories. I know where I'm going. Some people start telling stories and they're going and they're like wandering here. And then they're kind of like, where am I going with this? And they just wander off and you don't get the impact that you need. So you do this by, by learning them, by mastering them, by practicing them. So you write out all these kind of stories, right? So you figure out, here's all the stories, here's the, it breaks all these false beliefs, you practice, you tell these stories, and then when you come back over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these, and I'm not going to tell all these stories in as much depth, but I'm going to look back at here, I'm going to say, okay, here we have our origin story, which is my first one, so I'm going to say origin story, that's our, that's our initial goal of knocking down this big thing, then I'm here, I'm like, okay, what do you think, what's the biggest false belief that they're going to have about this after I tell them my origin story? So the biggest false belief they're going to have, so for, and I'm going to use the Funnel Scripts um, webinar, because I know a lot of you guys have, uh, not Funnel Scripts, excuse me, uh, the ClickFunnels webinar, because I know a lot of you guys have seen that. Um, so for this, I tell my origin story about my potato guns, right? Then I come down here, I'm like, okay, secret number one, I'm going to show you guys how to ethically steal over a million dollars worth of Funnel Hacks from your competitors for under 100 bucks. Okay, what's the false belief that I am trying to get them to do here? Okay, when I looked at that, I said, okay, their false belief about the vehicle, so I'm trying to get them into funnels, is that, man, Russell made sense. I believe in funnels now, but like, it seems so techy and complex. I don't know. It just seems, seems like too much. So what I do, my false belief is that funnels, um, understanding how to create a funnel is really, really hard. So that was the false belief here, right? So then what was my... What was the reason why? Well, the experience they had is they tried to build a funnel or a website or a blog or something in the past. They hired tech guys and Indians and they couldn't communicate with them. They put them things in the wrong spot. So because of that, they're like, building this crap is hard. I don't know the strategy or anything. And so I said, okay, what's my story? So when I was building out that webinar, I'm like, okay, what are the stories that I have that are going to trump their story? 
Okay, so if you look at that, I tell a couple of Epiphany Bridge stories in Secret Number One. First thing I do is I tell the Epiphany Bridge story about, um, and it's a quick one about Tony Robbins talking about how you need to model success. Then I switch to Porter Stansberry talking about how you got to copy somebody, and I talk about my Epiphany I had there. Then I go back through and I show the actual, pro- and so I'm, I teach the whole thing. So uh, I tell two or three little Epiphany Bridge stories that are the things that knock that out and make it irrelevant. Boom, and now all of a sudden this domino starts tipping. That transition secret number two, the internal. So then they're like, cool, Russell, you convinced me. Like, your story convinced me funnels are awesome. I convinced I could actually map out a funnel now because I get it. I see exactly how I do that. I just funnel hack someone else. Sweet, that's awesome. Ah, oh, but I'm not technical. I've got no skills, Russell. Cool, so that's your internal fear. Like, I don't know how to do this. Oh, I don't know how to do it. Cool, let's talk about this. Your internal fear. So then secret number two, talk about how I'm going to show you how to clone, how then clone your proven funnel in less than 10 minutes. So for me, I just do a demo of click funnels. I'm like, look, even an idiot like Russell can do it. Oh, and I move the thing around. I'm, and oh, it's so easy. Even I can do it. And they're like, holy crap, Russell can do it. I can do that too. Like, that looks like fun, actually. Okay, sweet. So I believe the funnel is the greatest thing to slice bread. I, believe I can actually build a funnel now. This is so cool. I'm going to build a funnel. I'm going to sell all my crap. And they're thinking about all the stuff, all the possibilities. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, wait. I build a funnel. Then what happens? I don't know how to get traffic or people or like all these other fears, right? So I'm like, okay, um, well, the last thing, that if I show you how to get traffic, then, then would you do this? Like, oh yeah, if you can show me traffic, I'm in. Okay, cool. Let me share you my Epiphany Bridge story on that. So traffic used to be really hard. I tried Facebook, I tried Google, I tried blah, blah, blah. And I figured out this way. I found my competitor site. I run through a similar web. It shows me, in a way, if you've seen the webinar, you know what I'm talking about. Boom, I chose this whole thing. Traffic comes easy. This one knocks down. Boom, wait. So what happens? Now all these pillars are gone. The big domino has to fall. Boom. And people have to give me money. Okay, but all it is, is then figuring out origin story, the original Epiphany Bridge that got me excited about this, the big domino. Then I figure out what are their other fears about this vehicle. Because it's, it's a commitment. They're, they're leaving security and unknown, a known thing for something that's unknown. So what are their fears about that? And then what are the Epiphany Bridge stories I have that will trump this? That's going to replace that for them. And then what's the internal fears going to have? What's the Epiphany Bridge story I have to replace that? External Epiphany Bridge stories replace that. That's it, you guys. That's the magic. Okay? Those are the four stories. Origin story, intro. Origin story, vehicle, internal, external. So if you've watched any webinars that I've done, any webinars that our Inner Circle members have done, you will see this pattern over and over and over again. It's not that we have to go, and um, in the book I talk about, like if you're doing this from a PowerPoint standpoint, in fact I go through like a third of this book is like, hey, slide number one is this. Slide number two is where you plug in origin story. Slide number three is where you plug in your big domino statement. Slide, and so like, I show that in here, so you can go through like, yeah, slide number seven, like in the story to them, slide number six, Epiphany Bridge story, origin story number one. Uh, so I, I go through like, if I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation, um, but the reality is like, you don't have to do PowerPoints to, to be able to do this. If you understand the structure, it becomes really, really easy. Anytime I'm, having, I'm trying to sell somebody something, this is all I'm doing. Let me tell them a story about this, story, 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 asking for money. That's it, right? Um, you can do this in so many ways. So, so the one way that we're most familiar with is a webinar, right? That's why I talk about in the book, like I wish, uh, whenever we started this whole movement three or four years ago, I started calling it the perfect webinar because I didn't want people to jack it up. And it's funny because every time someone in our circle, they'll, they'll do a webinar, like it didn't work. And I'm like, it didn't work? Like what happened? Like, well, I tweaked some things on it because of blah, blah. I'm like, okay, so wait, you're telling me that I gave you something that's called the perfect webinar and you took it and you changed it and now it's not working. Yes? I'm like, okay, what if you did the perfect webinar the way it's built because it's perfect. I didn't make this crap up. For those who don't know my Epiphany Bridge story, is when I hear it, I'll do the fast version. Okay? Um, when I got started 14 years ago, I was an internet nerd. I was sitting behind my computer with glasses. I was like, oh, this is so cool. I'm making money selling crap. And I thought it was so cool. And I went to my very first internet marketing seminar thinking it'd be a bunch of geeks like me sitting in a room with our computers, like, I don't know, texting each other so we don't have to actually talk because we're all introverted and scared of each other. I get this event. I'm in this room and I see the first speaker get on stage and I think that he's just going to sit there and he's going to be teaching me internet marketing. And he does this presentation for uh, 90 minutes. At the end of it, he sells something. And for $2,000, and people start running to the back of the room. And I'm sitting there like, what's happening? You know, just my little nerdy glasses. And I'm looking back and I see people running to the back. And I start doing the math. $2,000 course. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, forty. Holy crap, that guy made $60,000. Next speaker gets up, does the same thing, speaks. He's selling a $5,000 package. People start running through the math. 5, 10, 50, 20, $120,000. Person, after for three days, I see this over and over and over again. And I'm sitting there like, I've got to learn how to do that because that is freaking amazing. I don't care how nerdy and introverted I am. If I can get $100,000 an hour, that's a skill I should probably like, focus everything I know on and figure out, right? Like, it's worth it. 
And so I was like, okay, cool. So as soon as I like put that out there, like I'm going to learn this stuff. And uh, right like a month or two later, I get an invite from my friends saying, hey, come to this seminar and speak. Like you're doing internet marketing, you want to teach it? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you can sell something too at the end if you want. I'm like, all right. And so me, I'm like, I am so smart. I'm going to come up there. And so I was like at that event, I'm like, those people just told stories all day and they didn't even like, they didn't even, uh, they didn't even teach that much. I'm going to like blow these people's minds. And they're all going to give me their money. So I stood on stage in my presentation and I gave like the most amazing presentation. I taught step by step exactly what to do and how to do it. And I weaved this whole thing. And it was amazing. At the end of it, I did my pitch. And I remember being in the process and I was like, I'm not going to insult your intelligence like the other speakers. My package costs $1,000 and you can get order forms in the back. And I stood there all cocky and statured and postured. And nothing happened. And I looked down in the audience and I was like, this is really awkward. I slowly kind of turned and walked off the stage. I came out and people started greeting me. That presentation was amazing. I learned so much. That was the best presentation of the whole event. Thank you. The next person, that was so amazing. I learned so much. Thank you. Person after person, I walked to the elevator, jumped to the ring, and I literally went to my hotel room, locked the doors because I didn't want to see the other speakers. They were going to make fun of me that nobody moved. Um, I didn't want to see the other attendees. I didn't see anyone. So I hid in my room for the next three days during the event. And I remember all I did all day is I ordered haagen ice cream and coconut shrimp. <laughs> it was a great three days. Like every hour on the hour, probably gained 8,000 pounds and watched movies all day because I was too embarrassed to go out. And I was like, I'm sitting there in all this pain. I was like, I will never, ever try to sell from stage again. That was horrible. That was the worst experience ever. And then um, went home, snuck out that night, went home, I flew home, you know, and then uh, a little while later, somebody else asked me. I went to a couple of events. I saw people doing it. And I was like, what are they doing they're not doing? And then I uh, had a mentor who kind of told me, he said, look, he said, I saw your presentation. The problem is like you're selling. I'm like, that's what people want. Or he says, the problem is you're teaching. I'm like, that's what I need to be doing. I need to be teaching. He's like, he's like, do you understand how much of a disservice you're doing to people? I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? And he's like, if you're teaching for 60, do you honestly think that people are going to learn what you know in 60 minutes, 90 minutes? It's like, there's no possible way. Like, that is physically impossible unless your crap sucks. If they can learn what they need in 60 minutes, like, you're not very good at what you do. Like, that's something you can just go Google and figure out the answer to. He's like, if you honestly care about your people, you have to get them First off, to believe what you're saying so much so they're actually going to do it. Your job as a speaker is not just to teach them crap. Your job is to change them. And I was like, what? How do you do that? He's like, you don't do it by teaching. You got to figure out what their beliefs are. And you have to shatter those things and rebuild the right beliefs. And I know what that meant. It took me almost 10 years to figure that out. Um, a little while later, I went back to the, to the speaking circuit. And I would go and I started, and we talk about funnel hacking all the time in our audience, but I started watching the speakers. And I was like, what are they doing? Why are they doing it? I take notes and I would try stuff. And then I would get invited to speak and I'd go and I'd try a thing and it would do a little better. I'm like, okay, cool, that worked. And I would try again and again. And for three years I was on the road. Um, it was really hard on my marriage. And in fact, it was, it was really, really bad. But probably once or twice a month, sometimes three times a month or more, I was on the road speaking. And I was learning this process. I'd go and I'd figure it out. I'd watch other speakers. I'd take notes and then I'd tweak my presentation. I'd give it and I'd have like incremental successes. And I'd watch the next event, watch all the speakers, take notes, change my slides, do my presentation. And three years of that, it got better and better and better. And after three years, um, like I said, it was really hard on my marriage. And uh, one day I was sitting at the airport in Boise, Idaho, sitting in a, at, a, at like 1 o'clock in the morning. Nobody else is there, waiting for a flight. And I text my wife, like, I'm going to quit this. And she's like, you're not going to quit. You're making too much money. I was like, this sucks. And so I quit. So I did that last speaking gig, and then I quit. Came home, and I was like, dang, we were making really good money doing this. What should I do now? I said, like, well, how do we take what we learned, and how do we shift it to sell other stuff online? Can we do that? Like, does it work? And back then, it was pre-webinars. I started doing teleseminars. And I tried this stuff in teleseminars. And I was like, holy crap, it's the same thing. We just shifted to webinars and over and over and over again. And it's 10 to 12 years of me doing this over and over, tweaking, changing, tweaking, changing, learning from the best people in the world, the point where it is now. And now I've done it. I've shared with other people. I'm in circles. I'm doing it. Like, it works. You have to understand, like, a lot of us think that getting on a webinar, I'm going to teach people stuff. And just like I learned from my mentor back then, like, if I'm just going to go and teach people stuff, like, it doesn't, like, it's a huge disservice. I need, I mean, how many, how many of your customers have you given them everything? You put everything you know in a book. You give it to them. They get the book. And they put it down. And it gets dust. And they don't do anything. They got excited by the moment. They don't have the impact or the change that they need to have to be successful. How many of you guys have that? It's frustrating, right? You're like, dude, I gave you everything. It's there. It's sitting there. You just have to do something. And the reason why they don't is because they still have all these false beliefs. You have not done your job. You failed them. Okay, people always get mad at me. Oh, Russell, your presentations I don't teach. I'm like, dude, I teach better. The, the, what I'm teaching is the most important thing. I'm teaching them that they want to have this result. That they've got to destroy these false beliefs that are keeping them back. 
And after I destroy those things, I give them no other outs for them to wimp out and not do the thing. Then they're like, crap, like, this, is the mo- this is the future. This is the opportunity I want. I know I can do it. I know nothing's going to stop me. And if I can get them to believe that, then I can sell them something that will be the vehicle that gets them the result. Okay? You have to understand, like, you guys, when you shift your mindset to that, like, it's funny, um, when we first start teaching the inner circle, people, like, it's tough sometimes for you as the educator. We're so good at educating and teaching, right? And so the problem is we get out there and we're like, I didn't teach people that much stuff. Like, I didn't, like, I went out there and, like, I told stories and I did stuff. I didn't teach them that, that much stuff. And they, they felt weird. And I remember um, uh, Noah, one of the guys in our circle, he told me, he's like, the first time I did it, he's like, I felt really, really, he's like, I used to do presentations. People always told me, I learned so much. Thank you so much. But then didn't do anything. He's like, I started doing it your way. And at first I felt, I, like, I felt like I was jipping them out because like, I didn't give them the, the tools yet. Like, I hadn't given them like, the, the how-to that they actually need to be successful. He's like, you know what's weird? He's like, I get more people now that tell me that that presentation changed their life than ever before. Because what you don't understand as an educator, you think that the key is like the how-tos. How-tos are easy. That's what you sell in your course. That's what people are going to have. The key is this. When you break people's belief patterns, they don't just like, oh, I learned a cool thing. For them, it's a paradigm shift. It radically transforms their way of thinking, their way of living, and that is the most important and most powerful content they will ever have. And you forget it sometimes because you've already gone through those experiences. You've already had those transformations. And so you gloss over all that crap and move on to the techno-babble teaching. This is not what people want. You give them this. You give them that epiphany. They will remember that. They will change. That is the best, highest way you can serve your audience. Do you guys understand that? Like, I don't know how many more ways I can push that, and, and, but I believe that so strongly. That's why this is so important. So this is not something I made up. It's not something I just invented overnight. This is 12 years, three years of me on stage looking like an idiot half the time, learning how to do it, then perfecting the next eight years through teleseminars, webinars, over and over and over again. For myself, we've got 100 people in the inner circle doing it every single week. We're going to talk about the model here in a little bit. But it's a consistent thing. Like, this has been tried and true and tested. It is the key. It is the pattern. Do not deviate from it. It is the perfect webinar. It's perfect. Don't jack it up. Just follow it. It works. Okay? And if you are screwing up, then guess what? Like, I have people like, oh, perfect webinar didn't work for me <laughs> all the time. And I always look at it. It's always because they mess this stuff up. They shift from breaking beliefs to teaching and training and trying to give them all this techno babble crap. They're not ready for this yet. After you break their beliefs, they will be ready for your techno babble. They will, have, they will go on this journey. They will buy your product and they will geek out and have fun on the techno stuff. But if you do not destroy their beliefs first, they will never get to this and you have failed your customer. That's the key. Okay, now this process, again, this works in PowerPoint slide presentation style. That's what we started doing it initially. Well, honestly, it started with me on stage. In fact, it works on stage. I spoke at Grant Cardone's event two months ago. For those of you guys who were at Grant Cardone's event, uh, they had 2,200 people in this huge room and uh, did the presentation, closed it, and we had masses of people running, did almost a million dollars in sales in 90 minutes. People were sprinting to the side, trying to buy, going crazy. And uh, Grant even pulled me aside afterwards. He's like, oh, I've never seen someone do that before. I don't know how you did that. That was amazing. This year we're speaking at this event. I think there's like eight or 9,000 people going to be at it. Um, and it's going to be big. We're going to move the audience because of this. Because it's not about me being smarter or teaching them techno babble crap. It's about me breaking their beliefs, showing them the vision of the future, and bringing them with us. Okay? It works. So it works on stage. works through webinars. works on teleseminars. Uh, recently, actually this last week, some of you guys may have seen it. We did over six figures with this. Um, it works on Facebook Lives. We did a Facebook Live. In fact, here it is. Um, we printed these out so you saw this. I just took this. I took um, this right here. This is my, my one thing. We talked about this. I told my origin story. And then I went through and I just showed these different pictures. I have five or six slides here that, that went through the whole thing. Anyway. I wonder if I can see it. Uh, I'm trying to find one of them. I'll show you real quick here. But this right here. So this is my one thing, which is my big domino. So if you go through, when you go through the book, this is the one thing. These are the three secrets that we, that we go through. Um, but like, let me find the one I'm looking for. All right. So I came through here. First off, I told my origin story. So I showed like, here, here, here's a website. Here's a sales funnel. I'll tell them a potato gun story. Then I had vehicle, right? So after I told my origin story, potato gun story, then I came here. What's my vehicle? Um, which was secret number one, funnel hacking. So I took this false belief that structure, like, figuring out the structure of a funnel was hard and complicated, and I made it easy. And then I, I tied a like, cool headline to this thing, right? So how to ethically sell over a million dollars to funnel hacking competitors for under hundred dollars. Everything I tell after this slide is all stories. Knock this down. Boom. When that's done, then I shift to the uh, internal beliefs. 
This is going to be hard. I, funnels are cool. I don't know if I can do it. Cool. Let me show you this. Funnel cloning. How to clone the proven funnel in less than 10 minutes. Then I show them how, you, how easy that is. Tell them some stories. Do a demo. Number three. Cool. But actually, I don't know if I can do I don't know how to get traffic. Oh, well, guess what? Secret number three. I'm going to show you my number one traffic hack. How to get the exact same customers are currently going to your competitors' funnels. Start coming to your funnels instead. We do that. Boom, 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 boom. Four stories are told. Domino knocks down. There's belief. We get customers. So we did it on Facebook Live. Just simple like that. Okay. What I'm going to do here in like 20 minutes is the same thing. I'm going to do Facebook Live. You're going to see the whole process and the whole thing. Same kind of thing, right? You do Facebook Live. It works through email sequences. Okay, you do this now where email number one tells the origin story. Email number two, email three, email four, email five, you ask them for, the, for money. works in email sequences. Uh, product launch size. How many of you seen Jeff Walker's product launch formula? It's very, very similar. We have a couple different tweaks that we do versus him, but the process is almost identical. Stu McLaren and I, we were in Kenya last summer. Um, we were, I was walking through my webinar process, and he was like, huh, let me walk you through my product launch process that I do. And he walked me through his, and I was like, Weird. Video one and product launch sequence. Video two, video three, video four. Like, it's weird how much they, they mirror. So it doesn't matter the format. There's so many ways to do this, but it's understanding this is sales. This is how you sell. Now, I titled this, this, uh, this presentation and also the section of the book, Your Moral Obligation. And I'm going to end with this as well. So Jay Ram told me this. He said, um, he said that if you honestly believe in the product and the service that you're selling, then you have a moral obligation to do everything within your power to get it into the hands of your customers. And when I first heard that, I was like, moral obligation? Like, do I believe when I have that much? And for a long time, I didn't, which is why I think I struggled at selling stuff. I didn't believe in that much. But some people ask, like, how has ClickFunnels grown so fast, so much? Okay, and for me, if you want to know, because I honestly, I, have a, I believe in my soul, in my heart, that I have a moral obligation to get this out to everyone. Um, it's spiritual for me. It's spiritual for people in our office. Like, we feel that. Like, I know that when people have this tool, it'll change their life. It's completely, radically transformed my life. I've watched in the last 12 months, we've had, uh, excuse me, more than that now, but the first 12 months, we had 93 people make over a million dollars in a funnel. 93 people whose lives have been changed, which is cool. But number two, which is even cooler, is those 93 people made a million bucks. That represents thousands of people that they're each serving. Hundreds of thousands of people being affected because of what we're doing here inside of ClickFunnels. Like, I believe in it so much, that's why I go crazy. Like, I could easily go home right now and take a nap, but I didn't. I'm here serving you guys because I know that if I can get one of you to hear something I say, tweak how you do it, and get your people to change their life, then I've helped you. I'm like, obviously, I know that it's you, but I've been a little piece in that journey, and for me, that's so fulfilling because I know that this world is not going to get changed by politicians or political parties or anything. It's going to get changed by you, by entrepreneurs, people who actually believe in what they have and are willing to get off their butts and figure out any way possible to get their customers to buy their products so they can give them the result that they actually want and they need. That's how passionate I am about this. And that's why I, I, I feel this way. So for you guys, the same thing. Like you have a moral obligation to get these, your tools into people's hands. This is the process. And doesn't this feel better? Doesn't this feel better than like, okay, let me show you my 36 closing techniques. Let me show you my tricks and my, like, Oh, like that's it's not what this is about. This is about what are their false beliefs that are getting they're keeping them from the big domino. And we figure that out, we tell four stories, knocks down that money, and then we ask them for money at the end. And we talked about in the book, we should walk you through all the rest of the stuff and we'll go deeper into that. But that is the key. Okay. All right, so with that said, you guys, this is the framework. I hope this was really fun. I've never gone into this much detail in one spot like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed that a lot. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, a 20 minute break. When we come back, I'm going to be doing a webinar pitching a coaching program that we have that I think all of you guys should be part of, only if you like money. If you don't like money, don't worry about it. But if you do, I think you should be part of it. So I'm going to talk about that, but I'm actually going to do the webinar. So you are going to see me do this whole process. You're going to see me telling my origin story. You're going to see me telling these other stories. You're going to see me hitting down the big domino, going external, inter or vehicle, internal, external. You're going to see Epiphany Bridge stories. You're going to see Kind of Like Bridges. You're going to see all these pieces wrapped into one presentation. I want you to watch it intently. Get a pad of paper, notepad, things like that. Watch what I'm doing and link those to the things you're seeing that we talked about here. Link those kind of things and you'll see it. At the end of it, I want to invite you guys to come join the actual coaching program so you can go deep into the technical babble side of it. We'll talk about that later. So watch the presentation and understand it. See, the th the, see if you can see all those kind of things. And then when we're done after that, so I'm going to come on and I'm not going to do a short intro. I'm just going to, we're going to start in about 20 minutes. And when we start, I'm going to start writing the presentation. We're going to go. When it ends, uh, we'll actually end, and then uh, we'll be done for today. And then tomorrow morning, 
At 9 a.m., I'm going to come back, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this up. We have this page right here. I'm going to have the presentations here, and I'm going to, like, I'm going to show you guys what I did and why I did and all the different intricacies, and it's going to be really fun and exciting and uh, hopefully be a really good teaching lesson for you guys and just show you how powerful this stuff is. So that's kind of game plan. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a 20-minute break. That'll give me enough time to take a nap, get a drink, and uh, get things set up for, uh, for the perfect webinar in action. And uh, I'm, hope, I'm excited to show this to you guys. So take a 20-minute break, go to the bathroom, get drinks, get your notepads out, and we'll be back here in 20 minutes. Thanks, everybody. Click funnels, click funnels, click funnels, click funnels, click funnels, click funnels, like, again, so cliche, but it's, it's a f***ing game changer. Funnel Hacking Live is the one event that you need to be at. Having the skill set of knowing how to like build funnels is the single most valued skill set. I think there's a difference between watching it done and actually doing it yourself. I, I would say that that's the main difference. Funnel Hackathon is super 100% hands-on. It's literally, here's what we need to do, now we're all gonna do it together. Like, there's none of that when I fly home tomorrow, because it's done. This event is most suited for people who want to accelerate their story to the market. You're really developing something. You're leaving with something very tangible. This will give you the right mentality to be able to succeed no matter what industry you you know, when you have Russell around you all the time, all of a sudden, like, things don't seem unrealistic. It's just like, I can do this. You enter his world where he is, and you can just see him in action. And the great thing that action is within your business. It's nonstop. I mean, we were at it from 9 a.m. to midnight, just learning, implementing, sharing. It's so cool that I'm going to leave with a product that's going to make me a lot of money. And here it's like a totally safe, vulnerable space where you can just be like, I suck at this stuff, what am I supposed to do here? And then you have guys who have done exactly what you want to do or have done 10 times anything you've ever thought of right there next to you saying, hey, have you thought of this? You think that would work for you? And you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. Like, I should start doing that. I learned more in that compressed period of time than I had in almost the two years of being inside of ClickFunnels. I would pay any amount of money if I could come back and do that every month or two. So if you're looking for an opportunity to work with amazing people and work under the guidance of somebody who really knows what they're doing and be able to get things done, it's just, it's unbeatable. If you hate money, then this event is not for you because it's just gonna get you more money and you're gonna make an impact in the world doing what you love most. So we've been married for 11 years now. 11 and a half. And <laughs> this guy is awesome, but he's like a crazy entrepreneur guy. And so he always has all these ideas, and some of them are amazing, and some of them are like crazy. And we've been doing real estate for about nine years now, and that's we've done really well there. And we've systematized that. And he got to where he had a lot of free time. And we've always worked together. And there was this problem where I'd you know, be doing things around the house, and he's like following me around. And I'm like, you need to find something to do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and so he started to hear kind of about online marketing. We always knew that if we could get on online or learn how to market online and how we could kind of open up our world to other things besides just the real estate, because as we love real estate, it, it can also be risky. And so we kind of wanted to mitigate some of that risk and kind of go into some different areas. And so we started to hear, you know, this guy, Russell Brunson. And we hear his name everywhere we go. We're like, who is this Russell guy? And I think you went on like a binge of checking out podcasts. And <laughs> yeah, someone told me about one of his podcasts and as I'm coming home from Tampa and layovers and just listen to like, I think 80 podcasts, I'm, maybe that's exaggerating, but listen to a lot of podcasts on the way home and just thought it was amazing. But then at the same time, okay, I heard him talking about funnels and then someone else was telling me about a funnel. And so we went and hired this guy to help us create a funnel because we had been doing online marketing for about a year, over just over a year at the time, but we had some struggles and we weren't really we thought it was going to be a lot easier than it was, right? Yeah. And our message just wasn't getting out there. We weren't uh, finding the people we wanted. So we found this guy who was going to create this funnel. And we didn't even know what a funnel was before that, right? No, we thought you just, we were like, we have this awesome real estate package. We're going to put it online. And, and people are going to like, oh, I'll we, take that. We do well. And we thought yeah. everyone else is going to want to learn how to do it. And it's like, oh, it was really kind of a letdown. Deflating. Somewhat depressing. <laughs> we almost threw in the towel like several times. We paid this guy $20,000 to create this funnel for us. And he said, a funnel takes a long time. 
and it's really involved. And so after 90 days, I finally gave up on the guy because <laughs> we were spending $20,000 so far. It was $5,000 a month. It was just ridiculous. And he hadn't done anything. And we'd heard more about Russell and we knew he had this event coming up and we're like, okay, we just gotta go. We went and before that event, we knew he had his inner circle coaching program, but we're like, no, we're not, you know, we've been scammed before by other high ticket sales and stuff like that. And we're not, we're not paying for this. And after one day, what did both do? We got his book because we've been hearing all about it. And we're like, this Russell guy, he must be yeah. amazing. We hear these people and they're having these cool stories. We get this book and we couldn't wait because we're super impatient. And so we get the audio and we're both listening to it. And I'm on the beach running and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. Like we're not doing any of this. We need all this stuff. But we know there's this inner circle group. And we're like, we don't need that. We're going to, we got we're this. Good. We got, got this, this by ourselves. We got <laughs> so we're this. both like, okay, you don't say yes. I don't say yes. <laughs> we're, Robbie, we're not going to do this. And so we show up when we see Russell on the stage and we, you know, we see Liz and we see all these guys doing all these really cool things. And we're like, you know, we need, we're somewhat new to the online world. Yeah. Like some guidance. Let's figure out exactly how to do it. Let's see the people who are doing it and let's join this super cool group. And we were sold. We were in. We had no doubt that he would very shortly help us, our online business turn into a seven figure business. Mm -hmm. There's, there's no doubt. And, um, it's, it's only been six months, but that's the trajectory we're on. Yeah, so in six months, Russell's done for us in that amount of time what it took us six years in the real estate world to build. I mean, we've made over half a million dollars just in that six months. Just joining that inner circle group, being able to box Russell. You know, for a long time, we went back and forth on, we had this great coaching program. Should we do a high-end coaching program? We're like, no, we don't want to, we don't want to be that guy who yeah, sells the thing. Yeah, I think it was a and, until we, <laughs> No, and then we go to this group and everybody's doing all these really neat things and then we're boxing Russell and, you know, the group he's telling us, you need to do this and you can. And so we did it. We tried it. We just threw it out there knowing it was an awesome program, but we were kind of afraid to sell it. And this was two and a half months ago. Two and a half months ago. Program. We don't have a sales guy. We didn't do <laughs> the way we sold it perfectly. We're, we're still somewhat Scratching new, the surface. but we got 13 people to sign up and pay us $25,000. And they're now part of the super sharp group all because of just joining in a circle and being able to be around these people because naturally what we do as human beings is we get around these you know smart successful people that inspire us and what do we want to do like i want to fit in right mm -hmm. and so i lift myself and i learn and i stretch and i try to do different things and that group has done that for us so now we're like holy cow the world's our oyster we have so many ideas it's it's exciting you know getting to know him and going to work with him has just been like it's been a huge blessing for our life now we just tell everybody about him. Like, Russell, he's like this wizard, and he can change your life, and he's a genius, and he's like, oh my gosh. And sometimes they think it's amazing, sometimes they're like, what? And what I love too is that, you know, we have three kids, and so it is very important that I spend time with those kids, and I'm there at their important times. And I feel like this online marketing world, like, we can systematize it, and we can get people to help us, and I can share and do what we feel like we can do, but I also have freedom to, you know, be with my kids in the morning, take them to their sports, do their homework with them, and spend all that time with them. This year we know we'll do seven figures, that's our goal. Um, and to do that in such a short period of time, uh, it's, just, it's just mind blowing, and the way that you can scale it, and um, yeah, it's been pretty cool. All from a guy who couldn't push play oh, on the DVD player man. on one of our first dates. Now to being an online techie You guy. said you Ooh, wouldn't bring that up, up anymore. <laughs> Jeez. So I go to this Tony Robbins event like 12 months ago. And I'm rocking the house. Like things are going crazy. Com the event completely changed my life because I'm a huge fan of Tony Robbins. And the third day, the last day I was there, transformation day, which is like, you're already on this crazy high from Tony Robbins, like you walked on fire and you're like, you know, you're like, yes, yes. Uh, and I go to the water fountain and I meet this guy for like two minutes and it was just a strange passing, like nothing was serious about it. Um, and I got his name and I got his number. And after the event, when I'm, I'm driving home, I actually get a call from this guy that I'd met for two minutes and he goes, hey Mike, it's Matthew from the water fountain. I'm like, Matthew from the water fountain? And he goes, I met you Tony Robbins. I was like, oh yeah, hey, what's up, man? And he was like, listen, I know you're driving back to Tampa, because that's where I live. He's like, I know you're driving back to Tampa. Let me, let me get a ride with you. And I was like, uh, no. I was like, oh, okay. So I pulled into a gas station and I waited for him for like 20 minutes to meet me so I can give him a ride. And as we were driving back up to Tampa, he start, we start talking about the event and we're excited. And he's telling me about his past because I didn't know this guy. 
and he starts telling me about this thing that he's super into, which is called internet marketing. And I, at this time, I had no idea what internet marketing was. We started talking about building businesses and just painting this whole future, and we were still on fire from Tony. So I drop him off and nothing really comes of it. But like a week later, I get a call from Matthew again. And he's like, Mike, he's like, I'm doing this thing, Inner Circle Mastermind, you gotta call this number, I'm gonna text it to you, you gotta call this number and talk to this guy, he's gonna tell you all about it. But I'm doing it, I'm in, and you have to do it with me. You have to promise you. I'm like, okay, dude, I'll do it with you, whatever. And I call this guy, and I start talking to him, and he tells me about this program called the Inner Circle Mastermind, and it's you team up with this guy named Russell Brunson, who's this internet marketing guru, uh, and he's changed all these people's lives. And I'm thinking, okay, that's cool, I don't know what internet marketing is, you know? I talked about it in a car for three hours. I talked to this guy who was telling me about this program. He's like, Mike, and he sells me on. He's like, you get to do learning this, you're gonna build businesses, you're gonna drive traffic. And I'm like, this sounds really cool. You're gonna make a lot of money. And by the way, your buddy's doing it with you. And I was like, cool, fun. He's like, all right, so the program costs, he told me that the cost of the program, he said it was $25,000. And I was like, and at this time, I had just dropped out of college and I took all my money from my college fund and was gonna live off it for the year. because so I dropped out of college and I moved to Tampa. Like I moved across the country to Tampa and I only had $28,000 in the bank. And so my plan was to get a job, to kind of figure out my life, to build it, to do, just kind of figure it out. And I had no intention of spending $25,000 on a program. I'm like, all right, well that's, that sounds good. Like I gotta talk to Matthew before I make any decisions. So I hang up with this guy, I call Matthew and I'm like, dude, this, this program is $25,000. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Like an inner circle mastermind, he's like, trust me, trust me. Russell knows everything about internet marketing. Like you're gonna, don't worry. Like I'm doing it with you. We're gonna crush it together. We're gonna build business, Mike. This is the dreams we talked about with the car. So I'm like, all right, man. Like 25. I can't. No, this doesn't go past me and you. My dad's gonna freaking hate me. He's like, don't worry. Just sign over there. Just, just give him the check, and we'll be good. So I call this guy back. I write a check for twenty-five thousand dollars. I'm like, all right, I'm in. I send it to him. And I'm like, I'm pumped up. I'm like, I'm you know, going to Boise in a month. Because that was the event was. And I call Matthew back. I'm like, Matthew, I'm in. I bought it. Let's do it. Like, it's rock. Come over and let's, let's plan out our trip. And he goes, dude, that's so awesome. I'm not doing the program. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I'm not doing it. Like, uh, I don't have the money for it. I'm thinking like, what, dude? Like, you... <laughs> I just bought this program for $25,000. You're not, you're not going to do it. So I was sitting in my room like, oh, I got to return this program. I'm freaking out. I only got $3,000 for a whole year. I don't know what internet marketing is. So I fly out and I'm there for a couple days. And in that process, I had learned more about internet marketing than, than I felt like it was like a, a waterfall of information. And I took that and over the last eight months, I mean, just to credit it, last week, I made more in one check last week than I've made it all last year. Doing the traditional bit building business or working a job, I made more in that week. So Matthew calls me up like three weeks ago. I'm, I'm starting to make money, I'm doing good. Matthew calls me up and he's like, Mike, dude, how are you doing? I'm like, great. Uh, I've been in Russell's mastermind. Thanks, by the way. And he's like, oh, that's awesome, man. Listen, I needed some help. I'm really stuck. And I could just sense on the phone like he was just struggling, right? And what's crazy is like, cause me and him were in the car like less than a year ago, talking about building businesses online. And we were both, had these visions and these plans and I'm like hitting all the goals that I was talking about in the car. Like my first five figure check in a week, done. Being able to help pay my parents, you know, being able to really give back to the people I care about. And I'm doing all these things that I was telling him about and he hasn't moved at all. He's still in the exact same place. And so I might, some people might even think he's regressing, but I, he's in the exact same place. And what, what shocked me was like, I was like, Matthew, dude, you just should have joined the program with me. Like you're in the place that we were at a year ago. And, I've, and I'm talking about, I'm living the things that we were talking about. For the people who are, are thinking about signing up with the program or joining the mastermind or the Ignite program, and I think that if you look at my story, someone who eight months ago, didn't know anything about internet marketing, anything at all, to now traveling the world, hanging out with people from all types of internet backgrounds, making a good living for myself. There's no like there's no reason that anyone couldn't 
do this if you teamed up with the right group. And that's what the mastermind did for me. It got me around people who were thinking on a different level than me. Because it's not like functionally, it's hard, right? Technically, it's not hard with the programs that we have today and with all the resources that we have. But you have to believe that you can do it. And the only way that I was able to do that was by just getting off the phone with, with Russell's guys and saying, all right, like, I believe that you can take me where I want to go. Like, I have, I have faith that this program is going to change, elevate my thinking. And that is what everyone needs to do. And that's why everyone needs this program. Everyone needs to come out to Boise and everyone needs to hang out in the mastermind. It's the greatest decision anyone could make, hands down. I was almost at the point where I was ready to say, you know, maybe I should go find a job. And that's when I said, uh, no way, there's no way. I was lost, you know, I, I was letting my business run me. I wasn't running my business. So I needed, I needed a coach, you know? Uh, and so I, 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 I found you guys via Facebook where somebody else was already using ClickFunnels. And so I, I was like, what is this ClickFunnels thing? So I, I did, some, did some investigative work and finally came to ClickFunnels and I was like, whoa, this is some powerful stuff. I got this software that could totally take my business to the next level, but I'm having trouble using it, like really getting getting my hands around it. So I'm, I'm listening to Russell's podcast, and all of a sudden he starts talking about this inner circle uh, program and this, this code, Ignite program. So I was like, I, I need to be involved in that. I, I, if I'm going to take my business and my life to the next level, uh, I need to be part of that. To really get that coach to, to diagnose my issues and to come back to me and say hey this is what this is this is where you're struggling and point me in the right direction I never had that as a business owner when I struggle with things or I'm stuck on a topic I go to my ignite members and I ask them for help and that there is priceless because here's here's other successful like-minded individuals uh, like myself and they have the motivation and drive exactly like I have so to team up with people like that on projects and so that is, is extremely powerful and, it, and, and provides a, a tremendous amount of value you know, to, the, to your business. Back when I was like six or seven years old, I joined soccer. I was this little chubby kid, so they, I guess they put me in the soccer program to, to help me manage my weight. So anyway, um, I, I hated the game. Uh, I just did it because my, my parents wanted me to do it. But for, I don't know how we did it, but we made it to the championship game that, that, that season. And so I, I remember running up and down the field and every time the ball would be on one side of the field, I'd be on the other. And, and every time I would try to get to the ball, the ball would be, so anyway, uh, it was a mess. So I'll, I'll never forget this. When I was, I, I remember being in the game and, and just, I remember all the people on the sideline and the one guy that stood out from, from all those people were my, was my dad. And I remember him just, just screaming, go, go, get the ball, get the ball. And uh, I looked at him and I don't know what it was, but it just made me haul ass down the, down the field and get that ball. And, 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 and I, I, I chased the ball down and, 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 and sure enough, I, I scored my first goal ever. And that was, the, was a point in my life at such a young age that said, no matter what you do, Never give up, because when you never give up, the outcome is always positive, and, it, and, and, and you'll, you'll always be successful. And that was my biggest thing. I, I said before joining the program, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get my return, but, 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 but if I don't do it, I'm just, I'm going to be where I'm, where I'm at. So I said, don't give up, do it, do it. And so I, I did, and, 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 and I always keep my father up to date with, with my business, because he's always, he's always worried, he's my dad, so he'll always worry about me. When I told him I made my money back on the program, he, his text message, he's 75 years old and he's text messaging me, and he wrote back, wow, so proud of you. And, and, and when I got that from him, it just made me, it just made me, I don't know, I, I'm speechless, I'm sorry, but, it, it, it just gave me that confidence and, 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 and that reassurance that, and I always thought back to that soccer game, that you just, you never give up. 
Russell's positivity and his team, like Christian and Brent and all those guys, that they all have that same mindset, never give up, always follow through, always move forward. And to have that support is just tremendous. And I'm very thankful for, for Russell and his team for helping me. Hey everyone, my name is Russell Brunson. I hope you guys are doing amazing today. I'm so excited to have you guys here. And um, today I've got a really special presentation. I've never done this presentation ever. Um, I'm really excited for it. Um, I was up all night putting it together, getting all the pieces. Um, and hopefully it's gonna help give you guys a huge shift in your thinking and help you guys understand what's actually possible. I got a bunch of cool things up here hanging out. And so really quick, the title of this presentation today is how to finally get into the two comma club in the next 12 months without the fear of falling into the gap again. What is the gap? We're gonna talk about that here in a bit, but that's what we're gonna be covering here in this presentation. Now, I know you guys have heard me talk about the two comma club. How many of you guys know that that's a goal you want to be in the two comma club? I obviously can't see you guys, but hopefully you're going crazy, yes. Um, that should be a goal for every single person. So that is the title. Now during this presentation, I'm gonna cover three core secrets, and uh, I want you guys taking notes on this stuff, because I'm gonna go kind of fast. The more excited I get, the faster I talk, and I'm gonna try to keep it slow, but I just know myself. So make sure you're writing things down. Secret number one, I'm gonna talk to you guys about how to give yourself a raise every day. How many of you guys wanna give yourself a raise every single day from now till the rest of your life? Okay, yeah, it's a lot better way to live. Most people walk up in the morning, and they wait for six months, a year, two years, and they're hoping to get a raise like that, um, I want to transition your thoughts and, and everything to help you understand that you literally can give yourself a raise every day. That's the reason why we become entrepreneurs, am I right? All right, so that's secret number one. Secret number two, I want you to understand that you are literally just one funnel away. One funnel away from what? Well, for you, it's gonna be different than me, but whatever that goal is, whatever that result is that you want to get, um, it's not that far, it's one funnel away, and I'm gonna show you guys that so you understand that. And secret number three, the second million to make is way easier than the first million. I want you to understand that because the first time it's hard. I don't know about you, but for me, it took me four or five years to get the first million. And as soon as I did, I was like, oh crap, this is actually not that hard. And I did it over and over again. And I'm going to show you guys that process as well. So that's what we're going to be covering. Um, but to begin with, before I kind of dive into this whole thing, um, I want to talk about the two comma club. Because I know a lot of you guys have heard about that. And, um, and uh, I want to just tell a story that I think will help you guys. In fact, this is... Uh, one of my two comma club trophies in my wall. I think I've got how many do we have now? Four, 17. So we have 17 times I've had a funnel make at least a million bucks. And I initially did this award because I wanted uh, my own gold record on the wall. Like you look at like real bands, like when they go platinum, they get a record. I'm like, what are entrepreneurs? What do we get, right? So I was like, let's do this for ourselves. And then eventually it became a big thing. And now we've given away a whole bunch. And I'll kind of talk to you guys about that here in a minute. But um, the story behind this whole thing. So when I got started, um, I was like most of us. I was an entrepreneur who was trying to make some extra money on the side. Like that was my, <laughs> my initial goal. I met my beautiful wife, we were engaged, and um, she was working and I wasn't, and I didn't want to work, I wanted to keep wrestling. And I was like, how do I, how do I make some money? So I tried all sorts of things. I started selling stuff on eBay, I started other things, nothing really worked that well. Um, but I had a little business and I had, um, I don't know, I probably had five or six customers. And in fact, I remember when we got married, uh, I went on my honeymoon, and while we were uh, on the honeymoon, I brought my laptop, and she's like, why are you bringing your laptop? I'm like, I'm an entrepreneur. Like, what if one of my customers messages me? And I literally think I had three or four customers. So every day, we'd, I'd go check my email. I'm like, nope, none of them are, none of them messaged me. And I was always nervous that like, that one, I, I'd miss like my one customer support email that might come through. So um, that's kind of where I got started at, uh, like a lot of you guys. But at the time, um, I remember my first goal was I want to make $1,000 a month. If I made $1,000 a month, I'd be contributing to my marriage and my life, and that was kind of my, my initial goal. And uh, looking back now, it makes me laugh, but that was, like, that was it. Um, in fact, it's funny, one of my, my buddies, Alex Hermosi, when he joined the Inner Circle, he told me, he's like, uh, my goal is to make, if I can make an extra $20,000 a month, like, that would be huge. And it makes me laugh, because now uh, they're doing an extra $40,000 a day right now, and I always laugh, I'm like, oh, your goal is to make $20,000 extra a month. Come on, dude. Like, when you understand the process, it's not that hard. So um, my goal was 1000 bucks a month. That was my, my lofty dreams as an entrepreneur. And um, about that time, we'd been married about a year, and it was the summertime, and every single year, my family, my parents, they put it on, they have a... This place down in, uh, it's called Bear Lake, and it's on the Utah-Idaho border. And every year we go down there for a little family reunion. And this is, again, back 12 years ago. So this is pre-cell like phones, pre-wireless internet, pre-any internet almost anywhere. In fact, in the entire city of Bear Lake where, where uh, we stay, there was no internet except for one spot, and it was the, the public library. 
And so we're down there, and um, same kind of thing. It's been like two or three weeks, or two or three days, sorry. We're having fun with our family, water skiing and stuff. And I'm like, I know that, my one, that one of my customers might have emailed me. I need to check my email. And so I finally figured out that the library had, had internet. So one day I blocked out like an hour time and went to the library. And when I got there, it was interesting because um, there was two computers. And on the sign, there was like a little paper sign like taped above that says like 10-minute limit. Please be uh, you know, cognizant of other, other people trying to use the internet. And there's like these lines of like five or six people in each one waiting for their turn on the internet. And back then, the internet was dial-up. So it was like, oh, like in 10 minutes, maybe you could download your emails. And that was about it. Uh, in fact, my email address at the time was moneyforcollege at juno.com. I still remember that. Um, and uh, so finally I'm waiting, I'm waiting all frustrated because like, I want to check my email and I know I got to go because my wife's probably like, where are you at? So I'm kind of waiting and finally, you know, I get closer and closer and finally it's my turn. I sit at my desk, open up Juno, I click download and it's downloading the messages and it's a little thing like, bloop, bloop, you know, you're waiting, waiting and all of a sudden emails start kind of popping in the little inbox and I'm looking at them, I'm looking and sure enough, none of my customers messaged me, none of them bought anything. I was like, oh, dang it. But then one email came through and uh, I still like to this day remember that email popped through and the title of it a subject line was something like, I did it, or we did it, or something. I can't remember the exact thing. And it was from a guy named John Reese. And I had known who John was. I knew that he was doing a product launch. And I didn't know, that's about all I knew. I didn't know the backstory behind it. But I opened the email, and as I started reading it, he told a story. He said that his goal when they did this launch was to try to make a million dollars in a day. And I was, I was like, okay, sweet. And I, I read that. And then, um, and then as, uh, in the email, he told that. He said, you know, we launched this new course called Traffic Secrets. I launched Traffic Secrets, and, uh, and what's cool is we made a million dollars, not in a day, but we did in actually 18 hours. And I remember sitting there in this thing, and like the entire world around me just stopped. And I remember seeing the screen, and I don't remember, it was like dark, everywhere else just the screen. I remember sitting back in my chair and just, for a moment, just sitting there and just realizing like, God, he, he made a million dollars in a day. And I started thinking about the math. I was like, he was selling a thousand dollar course. He sold a thousand copies. I was like, my, my goal is to make $1,000 a month. I was like, what if I had, like, what if I had a $1,000 course or something like that? And what if I, like, I don't think I can make a million bucks in a day, but what if I, like, sold two or three a day? In a year, I would make a million dollars. And I was like, holy crap. I was like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe I can't do it in a year, but what if I do it in three years? In three years, I can make a million. And I got, all these, like, thoughts started going through my head, and all of a sudden, like, I believed that it was possible. And that was huge for me. Um, it's interesting as I like, looking back now to when that moment happened. I talked to other my, my friends who were in this industry who have had success. And for most of us, like that was the moment when John Reese made a million dollars a day. That was the moment like the four minute mile had been broken. And all of a sudden, like we, because he had done it, we're like, oh, John's like us. I'm sure he's a little smarter probably, but like he's like us. Like if he can do it, we can do it. And so I shifted my goals and my mindset from a thousand bucks, um, from a thousand dollars. Like I want to, I want to make a million dollars. And I don't know how I'm going to do it. The, the way ahead of me is completely blind. I have no idea, but like, that's my goal. And because I shifted my mindset, I started running that direction. Because I knew that John could do it, I knew that I could do it. And so because of that, I started running and started running. And uh, within a year, um, I hadn't made a million dollars, but I, I got close. And the second year, I almost got, I think it was like three, two or three years, I like, almost made a million bucks. First million for me was like the hardest. I made a million dollars total, but a million dollars in, in a calendar year was like, that was my goal. And I, I missed it two or three years in a row. And finally, the next year, I broke it, did a million dollars in a year. And then since then, after I broke the first one, kind of comes back to this, like the second million is way easier. And then we did it again. Eventually, we did it in a month. And then we did it in a week. And then we did it in a day. And, uh, and we've done it multiple times since then. But it was because John did it that I believed it. And so the real reason, if you look at why we created this Two Comma Club Award, is not so much, well, the real reason I wanted these rewards on my wall, if I'm completely honest. But then after that, I was like, I want people to understand that it's not just me. Like, we've got 17 on my wall. That's exciting. And a whole bunch of different markets. But like, who cares if Russell can do it? Like, that doesn't help you at all. And so at the time I asked Dave, I was like, hey, can you, can you like, export the ClickFunnels members? Let's say, like, how many ClickFunnels members have made a million dollars? I thought there was going to be like a handful, maybe five or six people. And he pulled it out. He's like, dude, you're not going to believe it. I'm like, well, how many are there? And he was like, at the time, I think it was like 60-something. I was like, 60 people will become millionaires since they started using ClickFunnels? I was like, I... That was way more than I thought. And I was like, we should get tro like two comic club awards for everybody. Like, we should do that. And so we got all excited and we kept doing that. And uh, up until the last Fun Hacking Live event, we had a whole bunch of them. And some of you guys were there, you saw it. We actually handed them out. And, um, and we found out in the first calendar year, we had 93 people ended up making a million dollars inside of ClickFunnels. 93 of you guys. And I wanted to put it out there for a couple reasons. Number one, I want you to understand that it's not just Russell. Like, I'm not some magic genius. It's not John Reese. Like, it's you, it's people like you, it's your peers, it's happening all the time. And I know that if you see that and you believe that, it becomes tangible and you're actually going to be able to do that. 
And I want you guys to understand that. In fact, in our office, I wish I could show you right now, but we all were wired up with, with cameras and stuff. So I brought a couple of them in here, though. Um, we, uh, we send a big, huge version to every single person who wins one, and then we actually keep a small version here in the office. And uh, so in the bathroom hallway, there's this huge white wall wrapped in these. We have 93 people. Uh, in the first 12 months, we put these in there. And what's cool is actually uh, we had 11 people last, um, uh, in the last month that have also won these. So it's happening not just once, but it's continuing to happen. 11 people this month hit a million dollars. And uh, here's a bunch of them. This is uh, Anthony Morrison's. This is Simon Black's. This is Christopher. Like, cool. Like, these are all people like you, your peers today who understand that and have done it. And hopefully for you, that breaks the four-minute mile. Why don't you guys understand, like, that's a thing that's not, it's not unattainable. I believe that anybody can do it if you have the right strategy behind it. Okay, so that's number one. All right. So with that said, uh, what I want to do right now is I want to kind of go through these three secrets. Because when you understand these things, again, my, my goal is to make this so that this becomes so real and tangible. Okay? Again, the title is I want how to finally get into the two comma club in the next 12 months without the fear of falling into the gap again. So the first thing I want you guys to understand is how to give yourself a raise every single day. So this right here, this is a board. And some of you guys know I have an inner circle group. It's $25,000 a year. And uh, we have 100 entrepreneurs at a time. And right now it's closed down. I had probably seven or eight of you guys yesterday after the live, uh, messaging us, asking how to get in. It's closed. I'm sorry. Um, it's just not possible. Um, but in those groups, this is what we talked about in our last meeting. Um, you, you listen, uh, a lot of... Uh, I've read a couple books that talk about like how do you grow when you scale businesses, right? And I, I was reading this one that talked about how to go from zero to million, million to ten, ten to fifty, and fifty to hundred. I was like, how interesting is that? And I started looking at at the process, and they were talking about like the business structuring, like you got to hire this person, and then you need these people in place. I was like, that's cool, but what about from the marketing standpoint? Like you have to shift things as you like you as the entrepreneur has to shift things. Like the way you get from zero to million dollars, like those skill sets are different than a million to 10 and to 10 uh, and 10 and beyond, right? Or nine and beyond. And so like understanding these. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this part today, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain it really quick so you guys have a picture of where you're going. Um, but today I wanna focus mostly on this because this is our goal. How do you guys get from wherever you are today to the two comma club? That's our goal, right? That's my goal. That, that should be your goal for yourself as well. So that's, that's the thing right here, okay? Now, I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna fill this out as we go. I need a skinnier market for this one though. Do we have a, here we go. Here's the skinnier marker. Um, all right, I've got my note sheet here to make sure I don't forget anything as well. Um, okay, so as you look at this, the first goal is how do we go from zero to seven figures, right? And what's interesting is I look at my business and, and I have a lot of friends that are in the spot right now. Like when I got to about a million dollars, I plateaued and I got stuck there. And it's funny because um, as I've coached so many of you guys, you guys all had the same response that I had, which is wrong. So I'm going to hopefully coach you through that right now. My goal, I got to a million dollars and I got stuck in a million dollars. I make a million dollars a year, a million dollars a year. And like, I kept getting stuck at that spot. I couldn't get, I couldn't figure out how to like break that. So my first mindset was like, okay, I got one business doing a million. What if I had two businesses? Then I would do two million. So I like made a second business. We started launching. Guess what happened? It was crazy. This business started making more money and this business started dropping. And then at the end of the year, we look at our tax returns and guess what we made? About a million bucks. So I'm like, crap, okay, well maybe if I, I have two businesses, what if I had three? If I had three, then I get, then we could double our, our business. So we had the third one, and guess what happened? This one went up, this one went down, this one went down. At the end of the year, we looked at our books and we made about a million dollars. And so genius Russell, instead of like seeing that something was wrong, that next year I was like, I'm gonna launch 12 businesses. Maybe then we'll get to two, two or three million dollars. So we launched 12 businesses, and guess what happened? One did good, all the rest dropped, and we made about the same money again. I was like, there's something wrong here. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but there's something definitely wrong here. And so I want to walk you guys through, because as soon as I figured this piece out, we went from zero to seven, seven to eight, now we're, on, now we're racing to get to nine. It was by understanding a couple things, okay? So the first thing is understanding this piece right here, how to get from zero to seven figures a year. Now, the first thing is you have to figure out this piece, okay? The first year of business is all about selling, like learning how to sell. In fact, I call this, this phase right here, we call this the what and how. You're trying to figure out what are you selling and how are you selling it? Okay, the what and how. What are you selling and how are you selling it? Okay, and so what happened when I first started my business, I was like launching this company, this company, some worked, some didn't work, I was trying all sorts of stuff and some of them worked, right? For you as an entrepreneur, the first, the first from you going from zero to a million dollars, it's all figuring out like what in the world are you actually selling? What do people want? Okay, we talked, uh, yesterday we talked to you guys about creating offers and figuring out what the market wants, things like that. Like that's this whole first phase is you just figuring out what in the world you're selling and how are you selling it. Are you selling through webinars? Are you doing it through salespeople? Are you like, like how, what are those things, right? And during this process, you're trying to figure out a couple different things. 
Now, if you've read the Expert Secrets book, hopefully this little thing looks similar, looks familiar to you, right? Okay, in this phase, what you're trying to identify is a couple things. You are trying to figure out uh, what offers work and what business you're going to be creating, right? Because um, you're typically going to have to try a couple at first, right? And while you're in this process, you're trying to figure out these three things, right? Number one, if this looks familiar for those at home, write down in the comments down below. Number one, what do you have to identify? Who is the attractive character or the charismatic leader? I'll write leader here, okay? Who is the leader? Number two, what is the future-based cause? Number three, what is the new opportunity you are making for someone? And inside of that, there's two ways to position it. One's an opportunity stack, and one is an opportunity switch, okay? And you are figuring out how to create your mass movement, okay? Does that look familiar? This is right here, Expert Secrets book. Okay, if you do nothing else and you study and you understand this book, the goal of this book is to help you guys figure out what it is you are selling and how you are selling it. And in that process, building a mass movement of people, building a tribe of people, finding your voice, all the stuff we've been talking about is this phase here. As soon as you figure out this phase, then you can start going on to the next phase. But this is the, the goal. And the first business you create, the first offer, the first webinar is probably not going to work. Now inside the inner circle, when we um, started this process, because when we started the inner circle, everyone was kind of in this phase. Most everyone has transitioned out of this phase, and this is what we're focusing on in the inner circle, and this is what I want to focus on with you guys, is mastering this piece. This is what we covered for the last two years inside the inner circle, every single day, day in and day out, with those, that group of entrepreneurs. And you guys have seen the results from them. In fact, it's interesting, uh, there was one huge common thread of every single person that got on stage at Funnel Hacking Live that got a Two Comma Club award, I'd say probably 80% of them were inner circle members. So there's the thread, they figured out this piece, how to get from zero to a million dollars in a funnel. And it's this, it's figuring these things out. So how do you do that? In the Expert Secrets book, I talk about the, the process, okay? And the process comes down to this, how to give yourself a raise every single day. The way that we do it is we start this process, um, uh, is, how do I explain this the best way? The, the model that we use inside the inner circle is, is I told everyone, and the same thing, when I launched ClickFunnels, this was my process, when everyone else is the same kind of process. Step number one is you come in there and you've got to create your presentation. Okay? Your webinar, your Facebook, whatever it is, like your sales presentation, you got to create, and then you have to do it live every single week for a year. I tell everyone that. They're always like, well, I created my webinar, I put it out there, like, can I automate it now? I'm like, no, you can't automate it now. You have to go through this process over and over and over again until you master it. That's how you give yourself a raise every day. So this is the model. What we do is we figure out the day of the week that you want to do your presentation. Let's say for me, it's typically on a Thursday. So every single Thursday, you know that I'm going to be having people come to a presentation, or I'm going to sell them something. I'm going to figure out what exactly they want and figure out how to sell it. This is the what and how phase, right? And the first webinar you do is going to suck. It's not going to convert. It's not going to make any money. It's going to completely fail typically, right? Because you don't know what people want. You don't know how to sell it. But you have to start somewhere. So we set up a webinar happening every single Thursday, and it's live. And you've got Monday through, what, through Thursday morning to get people to come to this event where you have a chance to sell them something, to give them a presentation and to sell them something. Okay, and you're going to do it once, and the first week you do it, it's going to bomb. Second week you do it, it's a little better. And you keep doing that every single week. And if you do it consistently every single week for a year, um, you will figure this out. You'll figure out what you're selling and how you're selling it, and you'll be able to create your cause, and you'll be able to figure that whole thing out. Okay? This is phase number one in the process. I want you guys to understand that. Um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, as, as, I, as I put that out there with ClickFunnels, um, some of you guys probably know this story, but when we first launched ClickFunnels, um, a lot of people think it was a huge success out the gates. We launched it, and it bombed. And I was like, oh, we spent like a year and a half, a lot of money, a lot of energy creating this. Why did it bomb? And it's because I didn't know this. I didn't know what people wanted, and I didn't know how to sell it. So we created one funnel, it bombed. Tried another funnel, it bombed. Tried another funnel. And like, after four or five funnels, I was discouraged. I'm like, this isn't going to work. And I was just like, oh, this, this sucks. And then I had a friend who invited me to come speak at an event. He's like, you need to sell ClickFunnels. I was like, dude, nobody's buying ClickFunnels. He's like, really? What you have is amazing. I'm like, I know, but I can't. Nobody's buying this stuff. Like, I know it's amazing. Why aren't they buying it? And so he said, well, come to the event. I want you to make a $1,000 version of ClickFunnels and let's sell it at the event. I was just like, ah. So I sat down, and I went through this process. I figured out what my offer was. I created a perfect webinar. I came to the event. And the room had probably 150, 200 people in the room. I came up. I did this presentation. It was the fifth or sixth try to figure out how I was going to sell this. I did the presentation. Something amazing happened. People in the room jumped up and started running to the back and buying. And as it was happening, I was like, oh my gosh. Like, th like that was it. I figured out what they wanted and how to sell it. And as soon as I did that, that night, uh, we had dinner with um, the four or five people in the company at the time. It was a handful of us that were there. And we were at dinner talking, and everyone's excited. And I said, hey, guys, do you want to hear something cool? That worked. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, that pitch worked. They're like, I know, it was cool. I'm like, no, 
now that I know what to sell and how to sell it, like, we're going to blow this thing up. I said, you guys, we're all going to become filthy rich. Like, we know what it is now. And then what happened, it was cool. This is like, and this is the learning lesson. That morning, I was leaving to fly home, and as I was leaving, somebody in the, in the lobby bumped into me and said, hey, Russell, your presentation was so cool. I wish I could have bought your thing. I'm like, what do you mean you wish you could have? You don't have money or what? She's like, no, I have plenty of money. She's like, but what you, like, your presentation was like teaching people how to build supplement funnels. I don't have a supplement. I'm a coach. I can't use click funnels. I was like, are you serious? Like, no, this works, this works for coaches. Like, I, I'm, a, I'm a coach. I, sell, I have funnels for coaching. She's like, really? I'm like, yeah. And I told her a couple things. She's like, are you kidding me? She ran in. She grabbed her and two of her friends. They grabbed an order from the field and that ran back and said, here you go. I didn't know this would work for, for, uh, for coaches. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I took the things, jumped in the airplane, I'm flying home. And I was like, there's something wrong in my presentation. I did good, but like, it wasn't perfect. So I went through and I tweaked the presentation on the flight home. That next day, as I'm flying home, I'm messaging everyone like, this webinar is hot. Let's, let's start scaling this company. I know exactly what I'm selling and how to sell it now. I started messaging people. I was changing the PowerPoint slides. That next morning, I did a webinar at 10 o'clock in the morning. I added those slides and I did a presentation and we did really, really good. We did like thirty or $40,000 in sales on a live webinar. And I was like, yes, this is awesome. But then I was like, oh crap. I had another webinar four hours later. And, and uh, so what I did is I, I, I exported all the questions that happened during that webinar. And I was like, okay, what, what are the things that are like the people got stuck on. I'm reading through them like, oh, people are confused here and they don't understand this. So I went back, tweaked my PowerPoint slides, got everything ready. Four hours later, did the exact same presentation to a smaller audience. Only this time, we didn't do $30,000 in sales. We did $120,000 in sales. I was like, oh my gosh. Guess what I did? Exported every single question. When I read through them all, saw what people got stuck, restructured my slides, did it again, did it again. Um, for, the next, uh, for the next 77 presentations that I did live, for ClickFunnels, it took us from a million dollars to ten million dollars. I did a, I did a live webinar most weeks. I did four or five a week, but I did at least once a week. And every single time, I'd export the questions, change it, and tweak it. And every single time I did it, I was giving myself a raise, figuring out the concerns, figuring out what to sell and how to sell, and got better and better and better. Okay. And so this is the first phase, you guys. It's so understanding I'm not going to make a million bucks tomorrow, but I need to figure out what am I selling and how am I selling it. I need to try over and take a whole bunch of times of bad. I got to try. Ah, oh, it didn't work. Try. Ah, oh, it didn't work. Try. It didn't work. And a bunch of times, and eventually it's going to work. I'm going to crack it out of the park. And as soon as you do, you're going to have the same conversation I had with my team that night. It worked. We know what we're selling and how to sell it. Now we're going to be rich. Okay. And being rich is cool, but it's even cooler is how many people can you serve when that works? Like that's that's awesome. So that's the, the first thing here. Now, because I know that this is an in inevitable truth for you guys, it's going to be happening. Um, I don't want you to do what happened to me next, okay? What happens to a lot of entrepreneurs. This starts working and you're freaking out and you're like, how do I start growing? And the first thought is always let's launch a second company, which is the wrong thought, okay? And it took me a while to get this. And the second step, the second phase is you shift from like, okay, I made a million bucks in a funnel. What's phase number two? How do I get to $10 million? It's not about creating more of these. You only need one business, okay? You will do better if you focus on one. And instead what you do, I call this thing right here the second phase, or the, the phase right here. This is called the creativity switch. D-I-T-Y switch. I'm shifting my creativity from figuring out, because usually entrepreneur, we're so creative, we want to figure, we want to create stuff all day long. So you figure this out, you're being creative, trying to figure out what it is you're selling and how you're selling it, to figure out who, how are you as a leader, you're finding your voice, you're building out your cause, you're building your, like, stuff's all happening. You figure it out, now you shift your creativity from focusing on more things to the next piece here. Okay, and what we call this, this is phase number two, which it's interesting, if you look at this, if you look at the um, Expert Secrets book, it's all about this phase right here. If you look at the dot-com secrets book, it's all about this phase right here. Now we're creating front-end funnels and back-end funnels to grow your company. Now I wish I had more time to spend on this. I'm going to go through this really quickly. This phase is all about shifting your creativity. Instead of building new businesses, is to build new acquisition, ascension, and monetization funnels. Okay? So um, I'm going to write this right here. We've got, uh, and this comes from uh, Jay Abraham. He told me one time, there's only three ways to grow a business. Number one is getting more customers. Number two is getting them to spend more. And number three is getting them to buy more often. That's it. There's no other way to grow a company. So what do we call that? We call that basically, we call this uh, acquisition funnels. It's a nerdy term for you. We've got ascension funnels. We've got monetization funnels. I'm not going to write the whole thing out. And right here, acquisition, monetization, and that. That's phase number two in your business. Okay? It's figuring out other ways to get people into your, into your product, into your service. Okay? 
Acquisition, ascension, and modernization funnels. Okay, that's phase number two. This is what the inner circle, what we're focusing on right now. Everyone's graduated from here. Now we're focusing on, okay, how do we get these guys to get more customers? How do we get these people to ascend higher? And how do we get them to buy more often? That's phase number two in your thinking. And then phase number three, as you figure these pieces out, then it's shifting now to go from eight to nine figures. This is the, this is the thing that I'm focusing on our company right now. It's all about figuring out how to convert cold traffic. It's the for, for, for third phase here. And kind of interesting side note. Um, so John Reese, that I mentioned earlier, who broke the four-minute mile, he did it with a product called Traffic Secrets. And recently, we actually just bought that company from him. And the reason why is probably, I'm not quite sure, but if I do book number three, book number three will be Traffic Secrets, and it'll be this phase. So you go from Expert Secrets to .com Secrets to Traffic Secrets. So that's kind of a cool side note. Only you guys who are listening know. Anyway, um, so I'm going to bring this down. I filled this whole thing out so you guys can see this is the, this is the process and the path. This is where we're going. Now, the key, you guys, here, see number one, how to give yourself a raise every day. It's not about doing all this crap at once. It's about figuring this out. And it's going to take a little while to figure out the what and how. Like, how, what are you selling? How are you selling it? It comes down to not just like brainstorming in, in your office thinking. It's about putting out offers and trying stuff and, and getting up to bat and just trying things. Like, the more offers you make, the faster you figure out what this is. And to figure out that, boom, you transition to acquisition, ascension, and monetization. You figure that out, and then you start shifting to creating customers through different traffic streams. That's the creativity switch that we go through as entrepreneurs. Okay? And I'm doing this by every single day. What's the thing I can do to get myself a race today? Okay, tweaking my presentation, changing this, changing the funnel, driving more traffic, figuring those things out. Here's the same thing. Okay, what's the funnel we can do on the front end? What's the monetization? And it's just little tweaks every single day. For you as an entrepreneur, it should be the most exciting job in the world. Because every day you're coming in figuring out, how can I get myself a raise today? It should become your mantra. You walk through the door and say, how can I get myself a raise today? Okay, what are we going to do? Why is it not converting? What are we gonna, and just thinking little tiny things every day, trying to make little tweaks to give yourself a raise every day. Does that make sense? All right, cool. Now I want to transition now to secret number two. So now that you understand that this is the process to go from here to here to here. Now secret number two is really understanding that you are literally just one funnel away. Okay, I want, like, I want you guys to understand this because sometimes we think that... In fact, I did a Facebook Live with Justin and Tara Williams who were in the inner circle, and it was interesting that like, they were flipping 100 houses a year, and they were trying to create this thing, and they couldn't figure out this piece. And for like eight or nine months, they tried. They couldn't get it to convert, couldn't get it to convert. Finally, like, screw it, we're going to stop. And then luckily, they joined the inner circle, and we just made a couple little tweaks, and all of a sudden, their funnel like, took off. Boom. And within eight months, they made a million dollars. So it's not something that's like, like in the real world, if you want to call it that, like to get to a million dollars, like you have to go and you have to become a manager and then you send up and you're like going through these levels and, and, and hopefully someday you'll get these big, big jobs in 20 or 30 years. It's not like that. As soon as you get within the works, it blows up. Dan Henry on your circle, same thing. Struggled, 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 wrote a webinar pitch that worked, boom, within five months made a million bucks. So you're one funnel away. Like, I want you guys to understand that. In fact, at the last uh, Funnel Hacking Live, I did a, I can't remember, 60 or 90 minute presentation where I told just a whole bunch of stories about my one funnel away story is like when I was failing or struggling, and it's interesting because um, for me, like I, I mean, I've tried a lot of things. I've been doing this 14 years, and unfortunately, not all my funnels work. I wish they did. In the beginning, most of them didn't. And I tried a whole bunch of little things. And I remember the very first funnel I ever had that got me to seven figures was like an unlikely thing. I've been selling all sorts of stuff, and in the interim, there was this guy. He'd written a book. Some of you guys may have the book. Um, it's not in print anymore, but it's called The 12 Month Millionaire. And this guy made 100 million dollars in 23 months. And I was like, I read this book. Like, it's like a phone book. It's, it's probably um, there's my, one of my top three favorite marketing books of all time. So I read this book, and I was like, oh, my gosh. And so the author, I actually messaged him. I was like, and again, I'm a shy, nervous, awkward kid back then. I'm like, can I interview you? Like, I have some questions. He's like, sure, man. And he let me interview him for six hours. I went through, I interviewed him on this whole thing. And it was just like, it was like the most amazing experience ever to ask this dude who made 100 million bucks how he did and what he did. He told me everything. So six hours, and he let me record it, so I recorded the whole thing. And then like, those recordings sat there for like three or four years, didn't do anything. I'm trying to sell all sorts of different things, I'm trying stuff. And then one day I was like, God, those interviews are so cool, I wonder if anyone else would want these. And so I made a little funnel for them, put them online, and we launched it. And that was the very first funnel we had that made a million bucks. And I was like, oh my gosh, it was an interview. Like, who knew that that was what people wanted? I didn't know that's what they wanted, but that was what, like, all the other stuff I was trying didn't work, but that was the one that like, people wanted. Okay, and from there we started growing a company, we built it from a few people up to over 100 employees. It was really, really big. And I'm not going to go into all the details, but um, basically, like, my entire company collapsed around me. We had merchant accounts frozen. We had people walk out on us. And um, it was about three years of the worst pain that I've ever experienced in this life, trying to not crash and burn and go bankrupt. It was this hard thing. And I remember 
how much significance we have as entrepreneurs tied to our business. And it's like everything's falling and collapsing and my friends and some of my family members are walking out on me and, and everything's collapsing. We were in this big, huge 20,000 square foot building. The people that, we had to leave our lease early and they were threatening to sue me. We had the IRS coming after us for money. Like it was, the whole world was collapsing around me. And, um, and I didn't even know how to pay rent. I didn't even know how to like cover, you know, we ended up for going from 100 employees down to like 10 and I needed the money to pay for them. Because if they, if they left, I had no way to support all the stuff we had sold. And I was just like, I know what to do. And I remember it was the last night we were in our 20,000 square foot building. We cleared out all the desks, all of everything. Uh, and all I had was a laptop. I was sitting on the ground. I had my socks on. I don't know why, but my shoes weren't on. I had my socks. I'm sitting there on the laptop and I did a webinar. And it was kind of like a Hail Mary pass. I'm like, <laughs> I got to do something. We had a, you know, a list of some people at the time. We promoted this webinar and we did this webinar. And I was so scared because I didn't have time to prepare all the slides right. And I was just like, ah. but I knew the offer was good. And I tried it and I did this webinar sitting there lonely in my office late at night with just my socks on and I did this webinar and when it ended, I watched the sales start coming in. Boom, 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 boom. In the next 48 hours, we did over $250,000 in sales, which gave me the next money to go back to our team and say, look guys, we'll have jobs for another week or two, uh, longer than that luckily. And we gave them money and that gave us the ability to breathe, to figure out what it is we're gonna sell and how we're gonna sell it and get back to the, back to the basics. Um, and that process has happened over and over and over again for me. And so when we talk about this, like you're literally just one funnel away, I leave it blank at the end because it's different for everyone. Like there was a time in my career where I, I just wanted to funnel because if I had one, then maybe, maybe I could get people to, to buy something and my wife and I could go out to dinner. And that was, all, that was like all I wanted. And then when I had a funnel did that, I was like, oh, this is so cool. Then I was like, I want to build a company. And then that, like, there was a funnel that took me to there. Um, twice I've been on the brink of bankruptcy in my business and both times the funnel is what saved me and saved our company. Um, some people like, some of you guys, it's like you're trying to get out of debt and job and like one funnel is the key to get out of that. Some of you guys, you, you got a great, you're an entrepreneur, but you don't have the impact you want. You want to like get your message out to more people and you're trying to figure out like one funnel could be the one thing that gets you to the next level. We talk about money all, all the time, but it doesn't really matter for a lot of us. A lot of us, it's mission and legacy driven. And one funnel shifts you from you know, getting your message out to you know, a few hundred people to getting out to the entire world. You probably saw recently we did a book launch for Expert Secrets. Um, that book sold 50,000 copies in the first month. Like that impact got out there and it was one funnel. One funnel got that thing, got that message out there and will continue to for the rest of my life and hopefully beyond. And that's exciting. Okay, so I want you guys to understand like you're literally just one funnel away. All right, now I want to transition to secret number three because this is something I want you guys to understand. The second million is way easier to make than the first after you figure this process out and you don't do what I did three times and credit, just keep creating new businesses. After you've got this, you've got the foundation, you know what you're selling, how you're selling it, transitioning becomes really, really easy. Okay? So this is a picture here I drew. I love doodling stuff. And this is the concept we always talk about, right? You're one funnel away. You're one funnel away. And then over here is this other concept we talk about, the two comma club. And some of you guys are here and you're seeing that, you're hearing that and you believe it. You're like, yes, I'm one funnel away, I'm one funnel away. And you're trying, and you're trying, and you're trying. And you're seeing all these people up here on the two comma club and you're like, oh, how do I get there? And you're trying stuff, right? It's not that you're not trying. Not that you're lazy, it's like you believe it, you know what's there, but like so far your efforts keep falling you into the gap, okay? The title of this again is like, I want to show you how to finally get into a common club in the next 12 months without the fears of falling into the gap again. So what is this gap, okay? This gap's different for everyone, right? Some of you guys, this gap is, uh, it's like the, the funnel crashing, right? And I know that you guys are, and like, there's a concept I like um, about unfinished bridges, right? And I'm curious how many of you guys relate to this. Think about back in your life where um, you first learned about the first shiny object that you excited. Let's say it was Amazon, right? You start doing Amazon, you start like ordering inventory, doing some stuff, you start doing some stuff, and something doesn't work, and you have like this half built bridge that's coming up here, right? Half built, and it doesn't work, and it falls into the gap, right? And you don't quite finish it. And down here in the gap, there's like these mean sharks with teeth, and like, ah, there's your piranhas, right? And so you try building this thing and it fails. And you're like, okay, well, maybe that's not working. I'm going to shift this. I'm going to try Google AdWords. You try that, it doesn't work. You try Facebook ads. And, and you have all these like half-built bridges that keep collapsing into the water, right? And so because of that, a lot of us have fear. It's like, crap. Like, like I don't want to fear. I don't want to fail again. Some of you guys, this gap is like, you run out of money. Like, I don't have money. Like, this is, this is my gap, right? Some of you guys, the gap might be, um, you know, people you love not believing in you and doubting you. And like, all of us, we have these different things, right? And there's all these, all these different gaps that are happening here. They're keeping you from here to here. Right? So if you think about it, what's the gap for you? What's that gap that's keeping you from this two comma club? Is it knowledge? Is it technology? Like, and today, today, like now, it's easier than ever before. You know, back when, before ClickFunnels, it makes me laugh. People are like, I pay 100 bucks a month for ClickFunnels. That's a lot. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, do you not know what life was like before ClickFunnels? Okay, like for me to get one funnel done, it's eight employees. That's like $250,000 
a year if I pay them all like minimum wage, right? If they're good people, it's even more. Plus you got uh, servers, bandwidth, co- like, there's, like it was so hard. Now it's like the technology's there, it's not hard. Is it the ideas? Is it the, like, what is it for you? Like, there's something that's keeping you from there. I'm sure you're feeling that, right? Okay? But after you, after you get here, it's interesting. Like, after you make it to the Two Comma Club, okay, and you're up here, what's interesting is that you figured this stuff out right here. And the second time, it's not that hard. It's like, cool, I got it. I can do it again. Okay, one of the big reasons why when I crashed and burned multiple companies over the years, that I wasn't too stressed out because I did it once. I can do it again. Like, I know the process. I know the path. I know how to get there. Okay, now what you guys understand here is that this is kind of cool. Like in our community, amongst you, it's not just one person, it's not just me saying, hey, come up here, it's awesome. Like 93 people in the first year, 11 last month, more coming every month. Like they've done this before. Now for them, if they were to jump back down here, it's not that hard to get back up here, right? Like, oh, I lost everything, cool, don't worry. I've done it before a million times, I'm just going to do it again. Because you've seen the, the process, the path, like you know how to get here. First time is always the hardest, but it's easier. And so my question for you guys is what if there was a way where instead of trying to like figure this thing out, have these half bridge built bridges, instead of trying to be building a bridge and keep tr- collapsing, what if there was a way to get these guys right here, all of us, the community of people who are in the Two Comma Club to help you? And not so much you try to build a bridge to them, but us lowering down the ladder to you and saying, look, this is the path. Come on up. How many of you, if you had that, you know you could just walk right up it? Yeah, it's not that hard, right? But you have to have that. You have to have this community. People who've already done there, been Especially there in the you past, guys, and done it. What if there was a way doing it and come back? Right? Where instead of trying to like figure this thing out, have these half. We got an echo coming over the, the speakers. I'm not sure why. <laughs> All right. So that that is the goal, you guys. This is what you understand. Okay. The second million is so much easier. And now we have a community of people that have done this over and over and over again. It's not so much guessing. It's like a science. We know it. The bridge is here. And we want to lower it down to you guys. Does that make sense? All right, now what I'm going to do right now is um, I want to kind of recap what we've talked about because if you guys understand this and you internalize it, it's going to make this path for you so much easier, okay? Secret number one, you got to give yourself a raise every day, okay? It's going to be hard. It's going to take a little while to figure this out, but we can help you to figure out what it is you're selling and how it is you're selling it, okay? When you understand that and you get these pieces all put together, then it's very quick and then it's transitioning to the next part, right? Number one. Number two is like you're literally just one funnel away. When you understand like it's not... You know, you don't have to do a billion of them. Maybe you have to do two or three, but eventually we're going to find it. And the more we can help you, the more we can help you identify, like, this is the one I should focus on and just do that one. Okay? If you can come down here and, I, and these guys up here, all of us here, say, look, just do this one. That's the one. Then you're not trying 50 different things and trying out. Like, you know exactly with absolute clarity which one to do. Right? And number three is the second million is way easier. After you've done this once, what I want you guys to commit to is after you've done it once, you've come up here is I want your help to get more of us up here. Okay, 93 people is awesome. 11 this month is awesome, but that's not enough. Okay, my goal here on this earth is to help entrepreneurs give them the tools and the training that they need to get their message out to the world so that they can change the world. That's how I change the world. I don't have any ability on my own to do what you do. I wish I did. I wish I was as amazing as you, but I'm not. Like, I can't do what you do, so I need to help you to get up here so you can change the world in your own little way. Okay, so what I want to do is, I want first off, you guys commit that when you are here in the Two Comma Club, you're going to help me to get other entrepreneurs up here. You guys all committed to that? If you'll do that, we will help you to get there. Okay, so that's kind of the exchange here. You guys cool with that? All right, so what we did is um, we actually put together um, a program to help you guys to get to here. The more people we have here, the more people we can help to get to here. Okay, and I want to, I just want to like, I, the only way for me to change the world is to get more of you guys up here. Like, that's it. Okay, so I need you. So what we did is we put together a really cool coaching program. We're calling this the Two, Cub, Two Comma Club Coaching Program to get you to here. Now, someday I want you guys in the inner circle. Like, this is the inner circle. Um, this is what we're focusing on. We're not talking about this right now, but this is what we're focusing on the inner circle. Right now, the inner circle is sold out. People could be asking me, how do I get in? The only way to get in the inner circle, honestly, right now, is to come into this program, and then we handpick people we like from here to send them up to here, okay, when there's openings. And there's very uh, often openings. That's the only way to get in the inner circle. So Two Comma Club Coaching is all about getting you guys to here, so you can come up here and you can start helping more people. Is that cool? You guys all all right with that? So what we're going to do is I'm going to spend, um, actually, you guys okay if I spend about five minutes or so going through the Two Comic Club coaching program and how we can help get you guys from here to here? You guys cool with that? All right. So, Mel, if you want to bring that up. So we put together a special offer to help you guys to get there. Thank you very much. All right. So the first thing you're going to get inside the Two Comic Club coaching package, there's actually two different options here. And uh, we did this because um, the inner circle is $25,000 a year, um, and then there's no openings. 
And we have uh, one that's very intensive. We actually come here to Boise and hang out in this room with me and with our team to get this. Um, it obviously is more expensive, so we also have a home study version that you can do at home. So we have two different options for you depending on what you're able to do right now. Um, you know, some of you, and so that's kind of the, the things. You have to figure out what's going to make the most sense for you. Is that cool? So I'm going to kind of walk through. So the first thing you're going to get when you invest into a comic book coaching program is you're going to get the home study version. Now, this is kind of cool. We did it on sticky notes. All right. So the first thing you're going to get is access to this thing that we call the Secrets Masterclass. Now, what is the Secrets Masterclass? This is something that I am so excited for you. So um, I've been doing this coaching stuff for now over a decade, right? And I've taught a whole bunch of stuff all over the place. And Stephen Larson, some of you guys know, he actually had a task six, six months ago to go through everything I've ever done from the beginning of time, watch every video, and go through it all and figure out, like, chronologically, what is the order that someone needs to go through to build this right the first time? And he went through like, insane amounts of detail to figure out, like, hey, video, this one from this time to this time, he told that story the best. And then this one, this one, we put it together into an eight-week course called the Secrets Masterclass. And what this is going to do is going to take you to the dot-com secrets book, the expert secrets book, everything you need to get this foundation in place so that you can get into the Two Comma Club. Okay? Uh, right now, we have just our inner circle members going through that. And like, the feedback has been insane. Like, they are all going nuts. Um, it is the most in-depth coaching program on planet Earth to get you from here to here. So that's secret number, or number one, you get the Secrets Masterclass, $4,997 value. Second thing you are going to get is a program we call Spy for Profits. Now, some of you guys have heard me talk about funnel hacking in the past, and uh, some of you have had the Funnel Hacks course. This is Funnel Hacking 201. This is how to go deep, okay? When you start transitioning to here and here, um, the more you understand funnel hacking, the better. This goes into how to funnel hack your competitors, traffic sources, um, copy, like, all of the things, it goes so, so deep. This is the course, the total value of $2,997. It's in the members area today. You guys can dive in that tonight if you want and just really start geeking out on it. Number three here, the next thing you're going to get when you invest today is you're going to get access to the six months weekly coaching accountability calls. So the way it works is when you come in the Secrets Masterclass, you come in there, there's a module that's happening, and then every single Friday, Stephen Larson comes on the call, opens up the call lines, and you can ask any sort of questions you want. He helps figure things out. Because if you're just kind of guessing and shooting in, in the air, sometimes you're going to miss this, right? But you can actually get uh, on the phone on the coaching calls and ask questions and figure out like, this is what I'm trying to do. This is my what and my how. Is this good? Is this funnel right? Is it different? And Stephen will be coaching you through the other members, people here in the Two Comic Club. Like, we're all here to help make sure you do this right the first time. Okay? Those are happening. You have six months to be on these weekly coaching accountability calls to help push you through this material, get your first funnel live because you're just one funnel away. And when you get that funnel, this process becomes really simple and fast and easy. Okay? All right, then the next thing. So the first thing you're going to get the Secrets Masterclass, Spy for Profit, and then the six weeks of monthly coaching accountability calls. Next thing you're going to get is a private discussion group. We've got a really cool Facebook group that's already in there. And the coolest thing is like most of my inner circle members are in there. So if you want to hang out with these people who are here, they're already in there. Hanging out, talking about this kind of stuff. And so you've got these guys right here that are in this group. You can come and you can talk. You can ask questions and get coaching from the people who have already been where you want to go. All right? And then the next thing here. Ah, if I can get the stickers. All right. Uh is you are going to get access to something really, really cool. And this is the two Comic Club members behind the scenes. So what we're going to start doing here inside of this coaching program is every single week we're going to bring one of these guys on. And gals. We have a lot of women actually in it as well now too. And bring them on and let them come and like show you what they did. Here's what I did. Here's how I did it. Here's my funnel. I can't tell you how many times I see people asking like, can I see the two Comic Club members' funnels? I'm like, no, that's theirs. But right now we've got a whole bunch of them who have, who have committed to coming on and just showing you everything. Here's an open door to here's my business, here's my funnel, here's my traffic sources, here's everything. And they're going to come and show you. Now, the one, the one caveat to that is that if they're going to open up the, the doors and show you what they're doing, then when you get here, I want you to be able to be willing to share with uh, the other members as well. This is a group we're all trying to ascend together. Does that make sense? We're not people who are fighting and trying to hide over different products. And, like, we're trying to change the world. And the only way to do that is together. Okay? So when you guys get to Comic Club, I just ask that you be willing to help participate in these as well and show people what you're doing. Okay? So when you guys get the home study version, you're going to get the Secrets Master Class, Spy for Profit, the six-week monthly coaching calls, the private discussion group, and the two Comic Club members area. This is the home study version. If you look at this, you add up all the math on this, <laughs> we've got a total value of $12,558. Now, obviously, I'm not going to charge you guys $12,558, but I'm curious. Let's just say that we did. Let's say the total, like, I actually charge you $12,582, and you're going to get all of this. You have a chance to spend eight weeks going through everything I've ever taught and trained in chronological order to get you to get this, and you were able to go through the process to get to Comic Club. Would it have been worth $12,000 to get you into Two Comic Club? 
Yeah, that's pretty much the greatest ROI in the history of planet Earth, right? If you were to go through this process and all it did was help you to get your message, the thing that you know needs to get out in the world and get out to more people, it would be worth $12,000. Yeah, like we spend more on that every single day on Facebook ads trying to get my message out. Like it is definitely worth that. And so I want you guys to understand that. But we're not going to charge you guys $12,582. If you guys want to, the home study version, I don't know if you'll be able to see this here on the board or not. Um, but what we're going to do is going to be really cool. It's just one payment of $1,997. That sound more than fair? Like literally $2,000. Like how much crap have you wasted on $2,000? What's interesting about this too is like, I have people sometimes like, oh, that's a lot of money. But if you think about this, the cool thing about, about money is like every single month money comes back, right? For those of you who have a job, what happens every two weeks? Every two weeks, like you get more money. Paycheck comes and money replenishes over and over and over again, right? It's kind of this really cool process. But what's interesting is like, the one thing that doesn't replenish is our time. Like, if you guys go and you try to build a bridge and it fails, you try to build a bridge and you try to build a bridge, you could spend a month, six months, a year, year and a half, two. In fact, how many of you guys have been trying this for a while? How many of you guys been trying to get to a comic club? And I'm curious, like, how long has it been? And we had our Funnel Hacks uh, uh, event three or four months ago. Like, that time, when you set that as a goal, and the time that it's been trying to get there, like, that time's gone. You can't get that back. Okay, the money's going to keep coming back. It's going to keep replenishing, especially after this thing launches. Like, you'll make that back in your first day or so. But your time can't. This money comes back. I want you guys to understand that. So that's option number one if you want to do the home study version. Okay? Now, for some of you guys, like, you love the home study version, but you're like, go, oh, I want to just connect into everything, Russell. I want to come to Boise. I want to hang out here in this room. I want you to look at my stuff. I want Stephen to help build the phone. Like, you want everything. So if you want that, we also have an intensive in-person workshop that ties with this. Let me walk you through that. So the first thing you're going to get when you invest in the in-person one is... is uh, is obviously you're gonna get the entire online program. So you're gonna get all of this, that will be there as well. So you already have all that. Okay, so step number one, in fact, before you come to the live event here, you have to go through the first eight modules. Okay, that's like a criteria. That way you have all the foundations. So when you show up here, we can get to work. You already have figured out your message, your positioning, all that stuff will be figured out. So when you show up to Boise, it's just like, let's plug this stuff together and rock and roll and get this thing live. Okay, so that's number one, you're getting the entire online program. Number two, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get access to our Fill Your Funnel program and, all, and actually Traffic Secrets as well. So what is Fill Your Funnel? This is a program we sold for over $3,000 at our, at our live event. Um, this is helping you to get people into your funnels. After the funnel is created, the way you scale is getting more people in. Okay, now this is a year-long program that we're going through teaching you exactly how to get people into your funnel. Uh, the training's already started. Uh, the whole foundational stuff's already online, and right now we're shifting around. Uh, the first module's coming about two weeks going deep into Facebook ads. I'm going deep into YouTube, and all the stuff we're doing to fill our funnels, um, what's cool about it is like, we learn about it. We fly in the best experts in the world here to Boise, and you guys have a chance to look as a fly in the wall as we actually learn from them, and then we implement it, and then Nora... Uh, on our team goes through and builds out all these traffic systems so you can take those and your team can implement them to get traffic into your funnel. So you can get that. Um, also, I mentioned recently we, we, uh, we purchased traffic secrets from John Reese. We're going to give you access to that members area as well, which has how to get traffic from over 125 different sources, which is insanely cool. So the total value that's $997, you'll get the Fill Your Funnel training course. Now those of you guys who already have Fill Your Funnel, we have a huge discount for you, uh, so don't worry about that. But if you don't have yet, I want to make sure you have it, because this is all about structuring, getting your funnel done. This is about filling your funnel with traffic. Then the next phase here is actually coming here to Boise for our three-day in-person Funnel Hackathon event. We call it the Funnel Hackathon or the FAT event, F-H-A-T. That's here in the Boise Click Funnels. It's a three-day event. We do about once a quarter. So far, we've only done it for Inner Circle members, the only ones who have had a chance to come. You will have a chance to come to one of these as well, um, but not until you finish the online program. You finish eight weeks, and then you're qualified to come to one of the three-day FAT events. So what is the FAT event? What does it look like? How does it feel? What I'm going to cube a video really quick right now. Um, it's about a three minute video. It's going to show you what happens here at the FAT event. This is a video from the very first one we ever did. And uh, while you're watching this video, I want you to imagine you sitting in this room, because this is the room. Like, imagine sitting right there next to Kaylin, next to uh, Brandon, next to Alex, next to all the people that we've been talking about who are already here. My inner circle members are coming to these events anyway. You'll be sitting next to these people. They'll be sitting in the chair next to you. And just imagine yourself sitting here, experiencing that with them together as you watch this video. Click funnels, click funnels, click funnels, click funnels, click funnels, click funnels. Like, again, so cliche, but it's, it's a f***ing game changer. Funnel Hacking Live is the one event that you need to be at. Having the skill set of knowing how to like build funnels is the single most valued skill set. I think there's a difference between watching it done and actually doing it yourself. I, I would say that that's the main difference. 
Funnel Hackathon is super 100% hands-on. It's literally, here's what we need to do. Now we're all gonna do it together. Like there's none of that when I fly home tomorrow because it's done. This event is most suited for people who want to accelerate their story to the market. You're really developing something. You're leaving with something very tangible. This will give you the right mentality to be able to succeed no matter what industry. You know, when you have Russell around you all the time, all of a sudden, like, things don't seem unrealistic. It's just like, I can do this. You enter his world where he is, and you can just see him in action. And the great thing that action is within your business. It's nonstop. I mean, we were at it from 9 a.m. to midnight, just learning, implementing, sharing. It's so cool that I'm going to leave with a product that's going to make me a lot of money. And here it's like a totally safe, vulnerable space where you can just be like, I suck at this stuff, what am I supposed to do here? And then you have guys who have done exactly what you want to do or have done 10 times anything you've ever thought of right there next to you saying, hey, have you thought of this? You think that would work for you? And you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. Like, I should start doing that. I learned more in that compressed period of time than I had in almost the two years of being inside of ClickFunnels. I would pay any amount of money if I could come back and do that every month or two. So if you're looking for an opportunity to work with amazing people and work under the guidance of somebody who really knows what they're doing and be able to get things done, it's just, it's unbeatable. If you hate money, then this event is not for you because it's just gonna get you more money and you're gonna make an impact in the world doing what you love most. All right, you guys getting this? Can you imagine being in this room during that experience? Like, it was the most intense thing I've ever gone through. In fact, we're doing another one of them next week uh, with a group of Rainer Circle members. And then after that, you're going to be welcome to come and experience that as well, which is uh, the coolest thing in the world. So I can't even wait. So if you go through what's happening in the intensive one, first off, you get the entire online program that we talked about before, everything we talked about here. Second, you get the fill your funnel and the traffic secrets. So you can get fun traffic into your funnel for the next 12 months. Number three, you can come to the three-day live funnel hackathon. Total value of this is $40,579. And if you ask my circle members, they say that that's pretty close to what they actually spent to come in here to do this. Um, you guys are going to get it at a huge discount. In fact, you're going to get all the stuff today, the total cost for just one payment of $14,997. So that's kind of the two different package options. Now, i got um, two more things I want to show you. For those of you guys who get started this weekend, because um, basically we're going we're to be closing this down before the FAT event starts on Monday, so we can start focusing on the serving everybody coming through here. But those of you guys who get started in the Two Comma Club po Coaching Program, who know that you're here, you know you want to be here, you know that your peers, your future friends, and everyone who has done this is going to be helping you want that and I want you guys to come here. I'm gonna give you guys cool, two really cool bonuses if you get started in the next 48 hours. So the first thing you're gonna get is this week we've been filming um, the Secrets Masterclass. This is a product I'm gonna be selling for $997 here in the very near future. Um, as a bonus, you guys will get the entire course will be inside of the members area. That means you'll get um, everything that's been happening over the last three days, the recordings all put inside there. You'll get the entire product for Expert Secrets Masterclass, total value of $997. And then the last thing I'm gonna give you guys to get started today and this right here, you get this bonus if you get either the home study or the in-person. So this comes for either of them. The second thing is, just because this was kind of the theme of getting into Comma Club, um, this book right here, The 12 Month Millionaire, is again, one of my favorite marketing books of all time. It's out of print, um, but when they, um, when they stopped selling it, the printer was actually printing these for the author. Uh, he messaged me basically, I'm stuck with the warehouse of like four or 500 of these things. Do you want them? And so I bought them from him at a huge discount. So I actually have a bunch of these sitting in a warehouse. For any of you guys who get started this weekend, um, at either of these levels, you will get, like I said, the Expert Secrets Masterclass course will be in your members area. And you also get the 12-month millionaire book and workshop, which means you're gonna get the book plus the six-hour interview I did with Vince James, asking him everything. Now, I wanna make sure you guys understand when you do watch this, um, this was like 10, 12 years ago. I was shy and nervous and awkward, so don't make fun of me when you listen to it because, um, I, I was definitely awkward. It wasn't Russell that you know today. But what he taught me there has been insanely valuable in any business. It doesn't matter if you're selling supplements like he was or coaching or info products. Like it's one of the best books on marketing ever. And the only way to get it is by investing in one of these things. So you get the 12-month millionaire course and the Expert Secrets Masterclass course when you invest in either of these two within the next 48 hours. And so that's kind of it, you guys. So if I walk through this one more time, the way to get started, uh, we'll put the link down below. All you gotta do is go to twocommaclubcoaching.com. 
When you go to commoncloudcoach.com, there'll be a real, real quick video there of me talking about this. You can opt in, and then these two options will be there, and you have a chance to pick which one you want. And uh, like I said, if you already have the fill your funnel, there's a discount option for those who, and that way you already prepaid for that, so you don't have to have that as well. But those are the two options. $2,000 to get the home study course version, or $14,997 to get that, and you also get these other two bonuses as well. But there is urgency and scarcity. Now, a couple of reasons why I'm doing this. One is to train you guys. This is the most important thing in every offer is urgency and scarcity. It has to be real. So what happens in 48 hours, this offer will be gone. If and when we open this up in the future, these two bonuses will be gone forever. They will not be part of it in the future, which means you can't get them. The only way to get these two things is by investing right here, right now. And the way to do that is go to twocommaclubcoaching.com to get started. Now, um, while you guys are going there and you're getting signed up, um, I just want to kind of have some just straight talk with you guys if that's cool, okay? Um, I've been doing this game for a long, long, long time, okay? This is not something I just made up yesterday. We've written two books on the topic. We've helped the first year 93 people make over a million dollars and get here. Um, last month, we've helped 11 more, and I want you to be one of them. And I want you to understand, like, the biggest thing is if you understand, like, this is possible for you, then there's no reason why you shouldn't do it. If you don't think this is possible for you, then you should stop right now. You should return the book. You should turn this thing off and just, and just be done. But if you know that this is possible for you, if you know you have a message or a product or a service or a gift or something that you have to help change people's lives, and you know that this is where you're going and you have perfect certainty that you're going to make it there, $15,000, what's the percentage off of a million? It's, it's like a fraction of a percent. Like I'm talking about an ROI that if you were to take that anywhere else in the world would be the most insane thing in the world, okay? So I'm not asking you guys for half of your business. In fact, um, back in the day what we used to do is we used to, um, I used to help people build funnels like this. I would charge them $100,000 cash up front just to engage us in the services and I made 10% of every single, every single sale, not the net but the gross, 10% of all the sales we got until I had been paid a million dollars. And people were lining up. In fact, we had seven people so far this year that have asked for that and we told them no because I don't do it anymore. This is the equivalent. I'm not charging you $100,000 and 10%. All we're charging you is the money to basically so we can do this and we can serve you at the right level. Okay, I had to dedicate people and time and effort and all these things. And so this is the cost to get in. But it is a fraction of what you would come at over here. So if you're over here and you're like, ah, I don't think I can ever make two comic club anyway. It's going to be so hard and it's going to take time and to think and blah, 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 blah. If that's you, fall in the gap, give up, go back to get a job. Like that's honestly how I feel. But if you know this is where you want to be, this is where you want to go, like you need to have absolute certainty and act as if you already have done that. Okay? And know that you can get there. And then when you look at that, the investment becomes insanely cheap. $2,000 to get you the two comic club. Are you kidding me? $15,000 to come to Boise and hang out with us and help you even more to get there. Like, anyone who doesn't see the value in this, like, honestly, it's because you don't believe in yourself. So I want you to sit back and really think, like, do you believe in yourself? Do you think if you had the right tools and the right training and the right mentorship and the right people to take you and hold you by the hand and get you there, do you think you could do it? Like, if you don't think you can, then this is not for you. But if you know that you've got the skills, the talent, the ability, you just need some help, you just need some coaching, some mentorship to get here, and this is for you. Now some of you guys may be looking like, Russell, I can figure this out on my own, I'm a genius, I've read the books, I'm gonna do it. And that's true, you can do it. And who knows, it might take you a month, six months, a year, some of you guys might be really fast. Dan Henry figured it out, did it in five months. Okay, maybe that's you, I hope that's you. And so I still want you to come back and help coach these people. But for most people, like, there's a lot of pieces the first time around. The first million's tough, you gotta figure out all this crap. But after you figure it out, it's easy. Second million, third million, all the rest become really, really easy. But this first one's the toughest. And so what I want to do is I just want to take you by the hand and help you. I'm going to help get you here. Because after you made a million bucks, it becomes easy. Okay? And like I said, after you've gotten here, then right now in the inner circle, I mean, again, we do not accept people. There's no public application. In fact, if you apply, it redirects you to this page to sign up for this. And then what we do is we handpick the people in this room that we like. People we think can come here and go to eight and to nine. That we, we handpick the people when there's openings. So the only way to get to this group, there's two ways. Number one is get to know these people inside of here because they're the ones helping with the coaching. And number two is come through this program, come here to Boise, and the right people we will ask you and invite you to come to the inner circle and to come, continue to be here. But the biggest thing, you guys, is understanding, like, this is not that hard, but it makes, it, 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 when you have someone there to help you, it's so much easier. And yes, I know you can figure it out on your own, but I don't want you guys to waste the time and the energy and the effort. I want you guys to do it today. I always tell people, like, um, like, what would it have been worth for you to be successful six months ago or a year ago? Where would you be today? Right? There's a Chinese proverb. I mentioned it in the book. You know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. But what's the second best time? The second best time is right now. So right now you guys have that opportunity and that option to become 
part of this and to work with us, with me and my team and other people who've already been here. And the option is down below. You got to go to twocommonclubcoaching.com. We have both ways. If you spell it wrong, you still get to the right place, hopefully. And when you go there, there's two options. Number one is the home study version. And again, right here, you can get the Secrets Masterclass. You can get the Spy for Prof. You can get the accountability calls every single week. You can get the private discussion group. You can get the two comic club members behind the scenes. All that for just $2,000. Or if you know you want to come and actually be here in Boise and hang out with us in the inner circle and everybody else, then that's over here, the two comic club in-person training. You get the entire online program. So all of this again, plus you get to fill your funnel. For the next 12 months, we'll be helping you get people into your funnel, help scaling your traffic. You become the, the fat event. And like I said, the last thing for any of you guys who get started before the weekend is up, we've got two other bonuses. Number one is the Expert Secrets Masterclass. Some of you guys have been seeing me film parts of this this week. Um, when it's done, it'll be gone. And the only way to get it right now is being part of this. Other than that, you got to wait um, a couple months. We'll be launching this at $997. You get that as well. And like I said, the 12-month millionaire uh, course, um, $997. This one's not available anywhere and probably will never be again. These two bonuses disappear at midnight for forever. And uh, that's kind of the game plan. So my question for you is this. Are you guys ready? Are you ready to take that step, take that leap of faith? Not hoping that you're not going to fall into the gap, but having us hand you down the ladder and showing you the, the way. Okay? After you do it, you guys, it's easy. But you've got to do it once. And think about this. Like, you can do it for yourself, but after you figure it out for yourself, you can do it for, your, for other people. Rachel Peterson, who's in our inner circle, like one of the coolest people I've ever met, she, um, she went from uh, really, really struggling in life to um, she had a funnel that blew up, She's made hugely successful right now. And um, she joined the inner circle. We, uh, she paid $25,000 to be in the inner circle. After the first meeting, she went back home. She launched something that made $250,000. So she's 10 extra money after the first meeting, which was awesome. Um, but then she sent me a Vox message. And this was like, like emotional for me. And she showed me a picture. And it was her teaching this stuff that she now knows to her family members. And she said, this is my family who's been on welfare there for generations. And they've struggled. She said, this is a picture of me teaching them value ladders and funnels and all sorts of stuff. And I, I'm sure she was emotional. I was emotional. Like, oh, like, how cool is that? Like, now that she's here, how many people can she help? And I told her, I said, I said, Rachel, I don't know if you understand this, but like, a lot of people, like, they get into these funks where like, especially in like families, like, like generation after generation, they're struggling, they're struggling. But then like, one person comes along and they break that chain. And then from that point forward, for the rest of time, like that, that, um, their, their posterity, their, their family, their kids, like, have a completely different trajectory because of one person who changed things. And because Rachel said, look, I'm going to change things. Like, look how it's going to affect not just her customers, but her family, and then their kids, and their kids. And people are going to look back for generations and be like, oh, Rachel was the one that broke, the, that broke it for us. And I want that to be the same thing for you. Because after you're here, you guys, it's so much easier to come back. You know when you're sitting in the airplane, you're flying around, like the little, the little bags drop down, and they're like, make sure you put your own air mask on first before you help your kids. Because then when you put in your kids thing and you die, so this is all, like, we're getting you your air mask, helping you figure this out. After you know it, you guys, it's not that hard. You can come back and you can help person after person, help other companies, help your own, help other people, help your family, help your kids, help your loved ones. Like, these tools, these skill sets you're going to learn are, are, are things you can teach and coach and help other people do as well. But we've got to get you here first. We've got to put that, that life mask on you first, then you can help other people. And this is how we do it, you guys. This is how we go from being one funnel away which I know that you guys feel that. I know, you, I know you've seen that over and over and over again. I can tell you hundreds of stories of people who struggled, 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 and one funnel was the thing that got them here. Okay? You're one funnel away. These guys are, this is your group. This is your mentors. This is your coaching. This is all the people who have done it before, reaching down and showing you the past. You come up here and hang out with us. Okay? And I want you guys to hang out. I want you here in Boise. When you were here, like it's kind of cool streaming live, right? Can you imagine if you're sitting right there? You say, Russell, I have a question. I'm like, oh yeah, just change this. Dude, your offer sucks. If you change this, it's awesome. Like, oh, crap. That fast. Like, you can't get that anywhere else besides here. And that's why I wanted to do this for you guys. So, again, the last time, the two comic club coaching package, there's two options. Number one is home study version. Come through here. Uh, Secrets Masterclass, Spy for Profit, monthly coaching calls, discussion groups, two comic club members area, $2,000 here. Or if you want to come to the FAT event as well, you get an entire online pro program, fill your funnel, and the FAT event. $14,997 plus you get, any guys who get started before the weekend's out, you'll get free access to the Expert Secrets Masterclass um, and then also free access to the 12-month millionaire coaching program, which is no longer for sale anywhere except for you get it for free when you guys get started right now. Does that sound more than fair? Cool. Then right now down below, go to twocommaclubcoaching.com. While you were doing that, I'm going to play some videos of other people who have gone through this process before you. If I haven't convinced you today that it's possible, I want some of these guys right here to tell you their stories because after you see it, and you realize that they are just like you. They don't have superpowers. They're not smarter or better looking or faster or stronger or anything. The only thing they have different is they've done it. And they ought to go through this path as well. 
But now they've done it once, it's not that hard. And they can help you. I can help you. We can help you. And it's all happening through the Two Comma Club coaching program. Because when you guys are here, together as a group, we can change the world. I honestly believe that. And that's why we're doing this. Not that we need more money. Okay? I make my money from ClickFunnels. I'm completely fine. This is about you. This is not about me. Whether you sign up for this coaching program or not, it's not going to change my life at all. I will have zero impact on how it changes the quality of my life. Not one thing will change. I'm not going to go out to dinner more often. I'm not going to buy a bigger house. Like, I'm good. This is not about me at all. This is about you. How's it going to change the quality of your life? How's it going to change your future, your legacy, everything you're trying to do and trying to accomplish? That's what this is about. Okay, so you look at yourself in the mirror and be like, God, is this, do I honestly believe I can do this? If so, then come join us. Because we're all here. We've done it. We want you to do it too. Come hang out with us and together we're going to change the world. And that's it, you guys. Thanks so much for being here. Again, go to twocommonclubcoaching.com. And for some of you guys, you'll be jumping into this tonight and start going through the modules. Some of you guys will be here at the next fat event hanging out with us. I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to meeting you, seeing you, and helping you build your mass movement. And then we can start shifting and keep on moving you through the, the process. Thanks again, you guys, so much. I appreciate you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Go to twocommonclubcoaching.com right now, and I'll see you guys soon. Click funnels, click funnels, click funnels, click funnels, click funnels, click funnels. Like, again, so cliche, but it's, it's a f-ing game changer. Funnel Hacking Live is the one event that you need to be at. Having the skill set of knowing how to like build funnels is the single most valued skill set. I think there's a difference between watching it done and actually doing it yourself. I, I would say that that's the main difference. Funnel Hackathon is super 100% hands-on. It's literally, here's what we need to do, now we're all gonna do it together. Like, there's none of that when I fly home tomorrow, because it's done. This event is most suited for people who want to accelerate their story to the market. You're really developing something. You're leaving with something very tangible. This will give you the right mentality to be able to succeed no matter what industry you you know, when you have Russell around you all the time, all of a sudden, like, things don't seem unrealistic. It's just like, I can do this. You enter his world where he is, and you can just see him in action. And the great thing that action is within your business. It's nonstop. I mean, we were at it from 9 a.m. to midnight, just learning, implementing, sharing. It's so cool that I'm going to leave with a product that's going to make me a lot of money. And here it's like a totally safe, vulnerable space where you can just be like, I suck at this stuff. What am I supposed to do here? And then you have guys who have done exactly what you want to do or have done 10 times anything you've ever thought of right there next to you saying, hey, have you thought of this? You think that would work for you? And you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. Like, I should start doing that. I learned more in that compressed period of time than I had in almost the two years of being inside of ClickFunnels. I would pay any amount of money if I could come back and do that every month or two. So if you're looking for an opportunity to work with amazing people and work under the guidance of somebody who really knows what they're doing and be able to get things done, it's just, it's unbeatable. If you hate money, then this event is not for you because it's just gonna get you more money and you're gonna make an impact in the world doing what you love most. I've been working with dentists for about 10 years and I've helped set up practices for doctors all over the place and some really cool success stories. After 10 years and seven days, I wrote this book and it became a bestseller and uh, it was very specific just for dentists in the dental niche to give them a step-by-step proven path to go find a location for their practice. But I still didn't have that kind of platform to, to grow it exponentially beyond myself and beyond my own, my own unproven efforts, kind of dabbling with systems and dabbling with marketing. I got an invitation to a webinar with this guy named Russell. There was a picture of him like this or something on a, on a picture. It said, I made $17,000 a day on a photo. So I, I, I clicked and I listened and I thought, this guy's crazy. But that sounds really interesting and it doesn't really apply to me. But it sounds like this guy from this webinar has some ideas that I could apply to my business. When I was making the decision to sign up for the Ignite program, I actually didn't even know what I was signing up for. Uh, there, there was this sort of understanding that there was there was this future result that I believed they could get me to, and I had no idea how to get there. And I remember asking Randy on the phone, how, how are we gonna get there? And he said, well, we've got all these other team members, we got these people, this one guy buys Facebook ads, this other guy does strategy, this other guy helps build pages. And I was like, ah, those all sound really good. I guess, I guess this is for me then. 
I have people who I can call now on the Ignite team who take care of Facebook ads and help me understand what to do. People who help me build pages really well. Um, in connecting with Russell directly, asking him about specific copywriting questions or specific ways to deliver presentations that I'm putting together. But they're able to see what's working and I'm able to kind of jump on that train with them and apply it to my industry so that my business can make more revenue, so I can provide really well for my family, so I can save for my future, and now so we can make a bigger impact across the world with uh, things like bringing our clients into third world countries to serve them really well. The Ignite program for me isn't just advice. We've got new contracts just since that seven month point. Those new contracts are over a million dollars in new contracted revenue, which you know, I don't say that to brag, but it, you know, it's, it's my way of kind of thinking, holy crap, this is really working. Like not only are we delivering amazing results and getting fantastic testimonials from people and high fives from our clients and big bear hugs and they're putting us on their Facebook pages as thank yous for what we're doing. You know, those kinds of things are, are awesome. And we have this metric called revenue that shows that people are responding to what we're doing and they're liking what we're doing. And I, I'm 100% sure that this new trajectory of revenue for us would not have been possible if I didn't pursue the path with the Ignite program. It's been, it's been really good. Most people are looking for a job that has meaning. And in a way, it's like, that's what I'd been looking for and seeking and, and, and ultimately found. And it was a role where I was working for this amazing entrepreneur. I got married, I was starting a family. Uh, and I had two, you know, wonderful daughters with my wife. But in that work, um, the goal that I had sought for myself and succeeded in to, f to do good work and have meaning was actually pulling me away from the thing that mattered the most, and that was my family. So I was traveling. I was um, not mentally there. I was always, you know, at work in a sense. And so I really felt it um, one moment when December of 2012 uh, it was just enough pause to have a little bit of reflection outside of these 70 100 hour weeks and I was with my family my wife and my two girls and I basically realized in my future thinking which is that which is what I do I saw that they'd be gone I basically went back after the Christmas break and I resigned from this this position that I, I felt was success um, because I knew I had to do it for my family. I was lost basically, you know, because my identity and my pursuit had been so clear and, and I didn't know where to start. Like, you know, how do I continue again? What do I do? You know, I did all these certifications and conferences. And then what was interesting is that in your journey, it's almost like reevaluating your environment, right? Like who's out there? Who can you trust? And then this this guy named Russell, right? It was a webinar. I'm like, why am I watching this? But I couldn't take my eyes off of it. And not only that, I couldn't keep my wallet in my pocket. <laughs> the way Russell spoke in this webinar, it connected me. As I got deeper, I realized, man, this is really good stuff. And he is very sincere in his values and his mission and that inspired me. So then I basically went to the events, the live events, got certification uh, and then ultimately um, again so I did something I thought I'd never do and that was Inner Circle. Two years without income is not easy. Uh, no income. And, and again it was intentional because I felt I needed that space. I knew if I got another job I would be lost again. The two years with my wife supporting me, no income, I told her, you know, remember that guy, you know, there's this program happening and it's like, it's 25K. And she's, and again, like, she worries about a buck 50. And when I said that, <laughs> I'm thinking about the support. And, uh, and I think that's, that's so awesome. And, and I think that's that's where you know when she said yes, and I was still not sure, right? It's like it's a, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. I mean, we 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 basically uh, got creative, you know, to to basically support this journey, and and for her to say yes when she worries about a cup of coffee, you know, it was huge. So first time in anything like a mastermind uh, for me, 
I prepared like a corporate presentation. And so when I stood there with my note cards, it's funny because I totally blanked. Because there was a struggle between me being who I was and doing the corporate presentation and me being who I could be to just basically let it go. And that's when I started to talk. And I, I actually feel like half of it was like just gibberish, like I was tripping over myself because I was letting feelings come out as well as well-processed thoughts at the same time. I spent most of my life in corporate and startups and some company startups. Garrett, he read me and he, he just basically challenged me to just change who I thought I was at the moment. So I had a jacket on, he said, you know, take your jacket off and you know, and then I had a folder in my hand because I was doing that corporate thing and I was thinking about bringing it. And I put the folder on the ground and he's like, do 10 push-ups. <laughs> do some push-ups real quick, seriously, you right? have, do, do like 10 push-ups <laughs> At the last push-up when I got up, it wasn't even me. It was like my future me. But I knew I had to leave the office forever. Basically, I think it, what it was is all the preparation came out after I stood up after that 10th push-up. We're having an event at Alcatraz. I'm going to teach you how to escape the office forever. I'll give you a blueprint. And my goal is to get you six figures at some point in your journey. And it was pretty magical. It really was. And, and what it really um, showed me was the potential, right? <laughs> it just kind of gets me a little bit because it was the potential of what's possible. What I know more than ever from yesterday is like it's a no-brainer now. But you wouldn't feel that until you got here, right? It's a no-brainer because it was what I needed to basically get to another level. The ability to come here, uh, make that investment, and and see then, you know, right off the bat, <laughs> within hours, <laughs> what happens. And I'm still in it for a long time, I guess. So you know what a what a deal this is, because you know what comes after that hug is, did you do it? <laughs> And I'm already thinking that, right? Like, you know, they, they gave us great ideas about the experience in a, a retreat. And I know I can just hear it and I love it, but it's like, hey, did you get it done, right? So it's that support, but also the tough love, you know, to say, now you gotta do it, man, you know? And in a way, like we've done our job, we're here to support you, what are you gonna do? It wouldn't have happened without any doubt, without that webinar, without, you know, the journey, without, Russell, Inner Circle, the people that he's brought into the room. Uh, so it was, it was quite an event. <laughs> so I want to tell you something. Um, hiring Russell Brunson was bar none one of the best decisions I've ever made in my entire life. And I want to tell you that when you work with him, he takes you on this journey that you, you, you won't even know that um, that you can go on like it's like I, I at the very beginning I had all these hopes and dreams and visions and I honestly thought that yay I'm working with the overnight success maker and like I thought whoa I'm gonna make like five hundred thousand dollars in the first month of working with him but you know what the eventuality is that sometimes in life it doesn't always work out the exact way that you want it to work out and that's certainly where it got to for me so my 2014 was one of the hardest years I've ever had in my entire life like there was cancer in the family um, people were in hospital I thought I was gonna um, I, at one stage I um, you know I thought I was gonna lose my partner like it was just wasn't a, a pleasant scenario at all and by losing my partner I mean like hospitalization like really not like from really bad health issues and uh, you know there were just times when I promise you I wanted to give up and sometimes I actually, when I, when I say that, I don't just mean give up in business. Like I, I for me, when I, like when I hired Russell, it really was like do, like it sounds really dramatic, but I, like my life's mission, it's so, it's so big. Like I really, really, really wanted to connect with someone who could get me to the next level, who could help me really get from that really stranded, grounded place, you know, sitting at my office every single day 
to a place where I'm, you know, helping like people all around the world. And that's why I chose Russell. Um, but man, it was hard. It was really, really, really hard at times to have to deal with those things that come up in your personal life all the time. Like it was not an easy scenario in 2014, but I'm really, really, really grateful that I listened to Russell. I'm really grateful that I hired him as a coach. Like he, the man has changed my life forever. Like what, you know, once you're like my mind has been blown completely and, and there's no way back. Like I, I know that anything is possible now. So I go to this Tony Robbins event like 12 months ago and I'm rocking the house. Like things are going crazy. Com the event completely changed my life because I'm a huge fan of Tony Robbins. And the third day, the last day I was there, transformation day, which is like, you're already on this crazy high from Tony Robbins. Like you walked on fire and you're like, you know, you're like, yes, yes. Uh, and I go to the water fountain and I meet this guy for like two minutes and it was just a strange passing, like nothing was serious about it. Um, and I got his name and I got his number. And after the event, when I'm, I'm driving home, I actually get a call from this guy that I'd met for two minutes and he goes, hey Mike, it's Matthew from the water fountain. I'm like, Matthew from the water fountain? And he goes, I met you Tony Robbins. I was like, oh yeah, hey, what's up man? And he was like, listen, I know you're driving back to Tampa because that's where I live. I, he's like, I know you're driving back to Tampa let me, let me get a ride with you. And I was like, uh, no. I was like, oh, okay. So I pulled into a gas station and I waited for him for like 20 minutes to meet me so I can give him a ride. And as we were driving back up to Tampa, he start, we start talking about the event and we're excited. And he's telling me about his past because I didn't know this guy. And he starts telling me about this thing that he's super into, which is called internet marketing. And I, at this time, I had no idea what internet marketing was. We started talking about building businesses and just painting this whole future and we were still on fire from Tony. So I drop him off and nothing really comes of it. But like a week later, I get a call from Matthew again and he's like, Mike, he's like, I'm doing this thing, Inner Circle Mastermind, you got to call this number, I'm going to text it to you, you got to call this number and talk to this guy, he's going to tell you all about it. But I'm doing it, I'm in and you have to do it with me. You have to promise you. I'm like, okay dude, I'll do it with you, whatever. And I call this guy and I start talking to him and he tells me about this program called the Inner Circle Mastermind. It's you team up with this guy named Russell Brunson, who's this internet marketing guru. Uh, and he's changed all these people's lives. And I'm thinking, okay, that's cool. I don't know what internet marketing is, you know? I talked about it in a car for three hours. I talked to this guy who was telling me about this program. He's like, Mike, and he sells me on. He's like, you get to do learning this, you're gonna build businesses, you're gonna drive traffic. And I'm like, this sounds really cool. You're gonna make a lot of money. And by the way, your buddy's doing it with you. And I was like, cool, fun. He's like, all right, so the program costs, he told me that the cost of the program, he said it was $25,000. And I was like, and at this time, I had just dropped out of college and I took all my money from my college fund and was gonna live off it for the year. Cause I dropped out of college and I moved to Tampa. Like I moved across the country to Tampa and I only had $28,000 in the bank. And so my plan was to get a job, to kind of figure out my life, to build it, to do, just kind of figure it out. I had no intention of spending $25,000 on a program. I'm like, all right, well, that's that sounds good. Like, I got to talk to Matthew before I make any decisions. So I hang up with this guy. I call Matthew, and I'm like, dude, this this program is $25,000. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like an inner circle mastermind? He's like, trust me, trust me. Russell knows everything about internet marketing. Like, you're gonna, don't worry. Like, I'm doing it with you. We're gonna crush together. We're gonna build business, Mike. This is the dreams we talked about with the car. So I'm like, all right, man. Like, 25. I can't. No, this doesn't go past me and you. My dad's gonna freaking hate me. He's like, don't worry, just sign over there, just, just give him the check and we'll be good. So I call this guy back, I write a check for $25,000. I'm like, all right, I'm in. I send it to him and I'm, I'm like, I'm pumped up. I'm like, oh, you know, going to Boise in a month. Cause that was the event was, and I call Matthew back. I'm like, Matthew, I'm in, I bought it. Let's do it. Like it's rock, come over and let's, let's plan out our trip. And he goes, Dude, that's so awesome. I'm not doing the program. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I'm not doing it. Like, uh, I don't have the money for it. I'm thinking like, what, dude? Like you, <laughs> I just bought this program for $25,000. You're not, you're not gonna do it? So I was sitting in my room like, oh, I gotta return this program. I'm freaking out. I only got $3,000 for a whole year. I don't know what internet marketing is. So I fly out and I'm there for a couple days. And in that process, I had learned more about internet marketing than, than I felt like 
it was like a, a waterfall of information. And I took that and over the last eight months, I mean, just to credit it, last week I made more in one check last week than I've made all last year. Doing the traditional bit building business or working a job, I made more in that week. So Matthew calls me up like three weeks ago. I'm, I'm starting to make money, I'm doing good. Matthew calls me up and he's like, Mike, dude, how are you doing? I'm like, oh, great. Uh, I've been in Russell's mastermind. Thanks, by the way. And he's like, oh, that's awesome, man. Listen, I needed some help. I'm really stuck. And I could just sense on the phone like he was just struggling, right? And what's crazy is like, cause me and him were in the car like less than a year ago talking about building businesses online. And we were both had these visions and these plans and I'm like hitting all the goals that I was talking about in the car. Like my first five figure check in a week, done. Being able to help pay my parents, you know, being able to really give back to the people I care about. And I'm doing all these things that I was telling him about and he hasn't moved at all. He's still in the exact same place. And so I might, some people might even think he's regressing, but he's in the exact same place. And what, what shocked me was like, I was like, Matthew, dude, you just should have joined the program with me. Like you're in the place that we were at a year ago. And I'm, and I'm talking about, I'm living the things that we were talking about. For the people who are, are thinking about signing up with the program or joining the mastermind or the Ignite program, and I think that if you look at my story, someone who eight months ago didn't know anything about internet marketing, anything at all, to now traveling the world, hanging out with people from all types of internet backgrounds, making a good living for myself. There's no, like, there's no reason that anyone couldn't do this if you teamed up with the right group. And that's what the mastermind did for me. It got me around people who were thinking on a different level than me. Because it's not like functionally, it's hard, right? Technically, it's not hard with the programs that we have today and with all the resources that we have. But you have to believe that you can do it. And the only way that I was able to do that was by just getting off the phone with, with Russell's guys and saying, all right, like, I believe that you can take me where I want to go. Like, I have, I have faith that this program is going to chain elevate my thinking. And that is what everyone needs to do. And that's why everyone needs this program. Everyone needs to come out to Boise and everyone needs to hang out in the mastermind. It's the greatest decision anyone could make. Hands down. So we've been married for 11 years now. 11 and a half. And <laughs> this guy is awesome, but he's like a crazy entrepreneur guy. And so he always has all these ideas and some of them are amazing and some of them are like crazy. And we've been doing real estate for about nine years now and that's, we've done really well there and we've systematized that. And he got to where he had a lot of free time and we've always worked together. And there was this problem where I'd you know, be doing things around the house and he's like following me around. And I'm like, you need to find something to do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and so he started to hear kind of about online marketing. We always knew that if we could get on online or learn how to market online and how we could kind of open up our world to other things besides just the real estate, because as we love real estate, it can also be risky. And so we kind of wanted to mitigate some of that risk and kind of go into some different areas. And so we started to hear, you know, this guy, Russell Brunson, and we hear his name everywhere we go. We're like, who is this Russell guy? And I think you went on like a binge of Checking out podcasts. And <laughs> yeah. Someone told me about one of his podcasts and as I'm coming home from Tampa and layovers and just listen to like, I think 80 podcasts. I'm, maybe I'm exaggerating, but listen to a lot of podcasts on the way home and just the thought it was amazing. But then at the same time, okay, I heard him talking about funnels and then someone else was telling me about a funnel. And so we went and hired this guy to help us create a funnel because we had been doing online marketing for about a year, over just over a year at the time, but we had some struggles and we weren't really... We thought it was going to be a lot easier than it was, right? Yeah. And our message just wasn't getting out there. We weren't uh, finding the people we wanted. So we found this guy who was going to create this funnel. And we didn't even know what a funnel was before that, right? No, we thought you just, we were like, we have this awesome real estate package. We're going to put it online. And, and people are going to like, oh, I'll we, take that. We do well. And we thought everyone else is going to want to learn how to do it. And it's like, oh, it was really kind of a letdown. Deflating, <laughs> somewhat depressing. <laughs> we almost threw in the towel like several times. We paid this guy $20,000 to create this funnel for us. And he said, a funnel takes a long time and it's really involved. And so after 90 days, I finally gave up on the guy because <laughs> we were spending $20,000 so far. It was $5,000 a month. It was just ridiculous. And he hadn't done anything. 
And we'd heard more about Russell and we knew he had this event coming up and we're like, okay, we just gotta go. We went and before that event, we knew he had his inner circle coaching program, but we're like, no, we're not, you know, we've been scammed before by other high ticket sales and stuff like that. And we're not, we're not paying for this. And after one day, what did we both do? We got his book because we've been hearing all about it. And we're like, this Russell guy, he must be yeah. amazing. We hear these people and they're having these cool stories. And we get this book and we couldn't wait because we're super impatient. And so we get the audio and we're both listening to it and I'm on the beach running and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. Like we're not doing any of this. We need all this stuff, but we know there's this inner circle group. And we're like, we don't need that. We're going to, we got okay. this, we got, we got this, this by ourselves. We got <laughs> so we're this. both like, okay, you don't say yes. I don't say yes. <laughs> we're, Robbie, we're not going to do this. And so we show up when we see Russell on the stage and we, you know, we see Liz and we see all these guys doing all these really cool things. And we're like, you know, we need, we're somewhat new to the online world. Yeah. Like some guidance. let's figure out exactly how to do it. Let's see the people who are doing it and let's join this super cool group. And we were sold. We were in. We had no doubt that he would very shortly help us. Our online business turn into a seven figure business. Mm -hmm. There's, there's no doubt. And, um, it's, it's only been six months, but that's the trajectory we're on. Yeah, so in six months, Russell's done for us in that amount of time what it took us six years in the real estate world to build. I mean, we've made over half a million dollars just in that six months. Just joining that inner circle group, being able to box Russell. You know, for a long time, we went back and forth on, we had this great coaching program. Should we do a high-end coaching program? We're like, no, we don't want to, we don't want to be that guy who yeah, sells the thing. Yeah, I not think it was a thought and, until we... <laughs> no, and then we go to this group and everybody's doing all these really neat things and then we're boxing Russell and, you know, the group he's telling us, you need to do this and you can. And so we did it. We tried it. We just threw it out there knowing it was an awesome program, but we were kind of afraid to sell it. And this was two and a half months ago. Two and a half months ago. Program. We didn't have a sales guy. We didn't do <laughs> the way we sold it perfectly. We're, we're still somewhat Scratching new, but we got 13 people to sign up and pay us $25,000. And they're now part of the super sharp group, all because of just joining in a circle and being able to be around these people. Because naturally what we do as human beings is we get around these you know, smart, successful people that inspire us. And what do we want to do? Like, I want to fit in, right? Mm -hmm. And so I lift myself and I learn and I stretch and I try to do different things. And that group has done that for us. So now we're like, holy cow, the world's our oyster. We have so many ideas. It's, it's exciting. You know, getting to know him and going to work with him. has just been like, it's been a huge blessing for our life. And now we just tell everybody about him. Like, Russell, he's like this wizard and he can change your life. And he's a genius. And he's like, oh my gosh. It's, Sometimes they think it's amazing, sometimes they're like, what? And what I love too is that, you know, we have three kids. And so it is very important that I spend time with those kids and I'm there at their important times. And I feel like this online marketing world, like we can systematize it and we can get people to help us and I can share and do what we feel like we can do, but I also have freedom to, you know, be with my kids in the morning, take them to their sports, do their homework with them and spend all that time with them. This year we know we'll do seven figures, that's our goal. Uh, and to do that in such a short period of time, uh, it's just, it's just mind blowing and the way that you can scale it and, um, yeah, it's been pretty cool. All from a guy who couldn't push play oh, on the DVD player man. on one of our first dates now to being an online techie You guy. said Ooh, you wouldn't bring that cool. up anymore. <laughs> Jeez. I was almost at the point where I was ready to say, you know, maybe I should go find a job. And that's when I said, uh, no way. There's no way. I was lost, you know. I, I was letting my business run me. I wasn't running my business. So I needed, I needed a coach, you know? Uh, and so I, 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 I found you guys via Facebook where somebody else was already using ClickFunnels. And so I, I was like, what is this ClickFunnels thing? So I, I did, some, did some investigative work and finally came to ClickFunnels and I was like, whoa, this is some powerful stuff. I got this software that could totally take my business to the next level, but I'm having trouble using it, like really getting getting my hands around it. So I'm, I'm listening to Russell's podcast, and all of a sudden he starts talking about this inner circle uh, program and this, this Ignite program. So I was like, I, I need to be involved in that. I, I, if I'm going to take my business and my life to the next level, uh, I need to be part of that. To really get that coach to, to diagnose my issues and to come back to me and say hey this is what this is this is where you're struggling and point me in the right direction I never had that as a business owner when I struggle with things or I'm stuck on a topic I go to my ignite members and I ask them for help and that there is priceless 
because here's here's other successful like-minded individuals uh, like myself and they have the motivation and drive exactly like I have so to team up with people like that on projects and stuff like that is, is extremely powerful and, and, and provides a, a tremendous amount of value you know to the to your business back when I was like six or seven years old I joined soccer I was this little chubby kid so they I guess they put me in the soccer program to, to help me manage my weight so anyway um, I, I hated the game uh, I just did it because my my parents wanted me to do it but for I don't know how we did it but we made it to the championship game that 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 season and so I, I remember running up and down the field and every time the ball would be on one side of the field I'd be on the other and and Every time I would try to get to the ball, the ball would be... So anyway, uh, it was a mess. So I'll, I'll never forget this. When I was... Uh, I, I remember being in the game and, and just... I remember all the people on the sideline. And the one guy that stood out from, from all those people were my, was my dad. And I remember him just, just screaming, Go! Go! Get the ball! Get the ball! And uh, I looked at him, and I don't know what it was, but it just made me haul ass down the down the field and get that ball, and and and, and I, I I chased the ball down, and 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 sure enough, I, I scored my first goal ever, and that was the was a point in my life at such a young age that said, no matter what you do, never give up, because when you never give up the outcome is always positive and, it, and, and, and you'll, you'll always be successful. And that was my biggest thing. I, I said before joining the program, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna get my return, but, 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 but if I don't do it, I'm just, I'm gonna be where I'm, where I'm at. So I said, don't give up, do it, do it. And so I, I did, and, 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 and I always keep my father up to date with, with my business, because he's always, he's always worried, he's my dad, so he'll always worry about me. When I told him I made my money back on the program, he, his text message, he's 75 years old and he's text messaging me and he wrote back, wow, so proud of you. And, and, and when I got that from him, it just made me, it just made me, I don't know, I, I'm speechless, I'm sorry, but it, it, it just gave me that confidence and, 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 and that reassurance that, and I always thought back to that soccer game, that you just, you never give up. Russell's positivity and his team like Christian and Brent and all those guys that they all have that same mindset never give up always follow through always move forward and to have that support is just tremendous and I'm very thankful for, for Russell and his team for helping me